All right. We're back for day three of 7 DRL 2023, uh, reviewing, testing, fooling around, having fun. Um, and we're going to start with yet another stealth roguelike. Um, so this year, this is already the, the third that I've come across. Uh, as mentioned, you know, there's tends to be some themes each year just, you know, that <clears throat> randomly happen. Uh, stealth is, as we were talking about last time, stealth is, um, yeah, pretty... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it works pretty well uh, with uh, roguelikes. Roguelikes and stealth kind of go hand in hand. Uh, it's a nice uh, <clears throat> um, combo um, for the genre. Um, so yeah, not super unexpected. There's always at least one stealth game each year, but this year we've already seen this is going to be the third. So it's nice to you know play all the ones in a group and kind of um, compare and contrast. Um, all right, let's see this one. Okay, so one step behind you. I'm going to get right into this here. It looks cool. I'm eager to try it out. It looks like it has even more layers than the other two we've played already. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Just before, I was just about to click start on the stream and some tea went down the wrong pipe. But <laughs> that's <clears throat> rather uh, not cool. All right. So, uh, one step behind you. Enter the world of tactical roguelike thievery. Take on contracts for the guild and steal as many relics as you can as you rise through the ranks. Break into the target location, evade and knock out the guards, steal the keys from captains, open up the treasure vaults, grab the objective, then flee the scene before anyone's any wiser. Uh, the more gold, the higher the rank. How far dare you risk it? Okay, so... All right, so uh, this, I guess, could be considered some sort of... Sounds like it might be some sort of built-in difficulty thing, similar to, really, what we played um, last time, a couple days ago, with um, uh, loot... What was it? What was the order of that? Lurk, leap, loot... No, leap, leap, lurk, uh, loot... One of those orders. So anyway, <laughs> leaping and, and lurking and looting and that kind of thing. Lurk, leap, loot, yeah. Um, you know, in that case, you could... Um, try a little harder to get all of the loot which might you might not be able to otherwise uh, get and you know you could skip out early if you want to because the point is to map which is a little easier because you can map things through windows right through windows and, and doors and whatnot you don't have to necessarily enter each room but uh getting the loot would require you to enter so yeah hey numeron yeah lots of stealth games uh third one i think there's at least one or two others too that um i don't know if i don't think they're on my list though but i'd seen them um anyway but yeah, three that I think uh, really look uh, definitely worth playing. So we're getting into third today here. Created in seven days using Godot 4.0. All right. Um, controls. Okay, so we got WASD, um, QEZC. So uh, apparently there's diagonals then two. Oh, arrows and keypad. All right. So again, like we were talking about last time as well, um, uh, really more and more roguelikes these days and seven DRLs immediately give you all the options, which is nice. It used to be, you know, a lot of them really just had one. I think there's a lot more awareness uh, around accessibility and just usability and people with different uh, different devices and different preferences, which is great uh, that people just include this because it's usually not too hard to include um, just right out of the box. Okay, previous selection, next selection. Um, okay, yeah, that's like in menus and stuff. A and D for that, left and right. Aim, fire, water arrow. Okay, all right, here we go. We got some... Uh, Thief uh, ideas in here. Fire water arrow. Fire sleep arrow. Right. Okay. Oh, interesting. These are separate. Uh, these are separate. So you don't actually. You're actually gonna uh, target with uh, separate keys for that. Aim and fire R and T. R sleep T. Okay. Checking that out. A cancel shot. Um. Peek through doors or pickpocket guards. All right. Because we got to take the keys off captains. Apparently. I guess you do that from behind. And they'll have FOV or whatever, we'll see. V is whistle, only works indoors. Okay, so we have the option to whistle. Your thief is saved each time you return to mission selection. Upon arrest, your thief is gone forever. And a new thief is generated back at rank zero. All right. Hints, pick your entry point carefully. Right, smashing windows is noisy, but finding an empty room can be a good start. There's always some exterior doors to find. Walk into unaware guards to knock them out. Okay, so here's some bump interaction here. Walk into unaware guards. So as long as they're not aware of you, you can knock them out. Well, I guess that might change their behavior, or we'll, we'll see what that does, but bumping for that. Uh, use water arrows to... Oh, and um, before we continue reading this, I like the idea of actually seven DRL pages um, giving a list of hints. Um, just because it really helps players, you know... Uh, you know, it's optional to read them, of course, if you want to figure it out all yourself, but ha giving, you know, what the developer thinks is kind of some uh, easier points that just allow you to really uh, understand the game much more quickly and get into the action and enjoy it. 
um, it, unless, you know, the point is to just figure everything out, um, which, for example, might have been the intent behind WTF. Um, I don't know, maybe in hinted by its name, but, you know, that was a fun game, actually. I think it started getting better and better as we figured stuff out. But it took a while to do so. I would have preferred a list of uh, of some more hints uh, um, for that game to, to be able to get into it right from the beginning. But I do think that really helps on a, a 70 RLs to have something like this. All right, so we're going to use water arrows to quench torches to create new places to hide. But guards will notice the noise, okay, so they can hear the water arrows. Uh, cornered by a guard, use your sleep arrows. Right, no sleep arrows, run. Okay, well, that's all right. So this is actually getting into really uh, some direct tactical help here um, for how to survive. Um, which, you know, those are the kind of things that you, this is sort of the thing you'd probably figure out on your own. Um, each, uh, you know, logically. Um, each mission's objective is behind a locked... All right, this one, though, is this is more tutorial style. That's important to know. Each mission's objective is locked behind a door somewhere. Steal keys by pickpocketing or knocking out captains. Okay, so yeah, the, to get out of each mission, we are going to have to basically uh, confront captains somehow. Keep an eye on your darkness icon above you. Guards won't spot you easily in the shadows. All right, we'll have to see what this means. This is a key word here. Spot you easily. Um, does that mean, you know, it's based on distance? Is there a chance? That kind of thing. A suspicious guard looks closer in the shadows than normal. Um, they might find you or your handiwork. Peek through doors to unveil a, a line on the other side. You can see more by changing your position. Okay, got an idea on that. Um, looking left and right, kind of, to get a line through the door in different directions. Get the objective, get out of there, or maybe stay and rob the place blind. All right, dev notes. Yep, it's another roguey thief game. After my previous 70 year old stealth entry, Sky Rogue was more of a puzzle game. This time I tried to tr actually get as much of a classic thief like gameplay into a proc gen roguelike -like game. Map gen is fairly simple, but gives a good array of challenges. Likely is imbalanced properly at higher ranks, and I'm entirely positive the level ge generation can break in interesting ways, but most of the time it gives pretty decent results. There's always a ton of stuff ended up on the cutting room floor, stuff that didn't make it as planned. These are kind of fun to read, lists of this, but it'll make more sense after uh, we uh, actually play. But it is interesting to read stuff like this. You know, every dev has stuff like this for a 70 year old, right? Because, you know, the scope, you've got to keep your scope in control if you want to actually finish <laughs> in a week. There's always a nice list of that kind of thing. All right, so this is actually downloadable. Um, I have this... Uh, here, let's see, it's downloaded. I'm gonna run this. This one open full screen, did it get OBS? All right, I'm gonna check how to actually run this thing. Um, oh, actually, one thing here. Let me change this. One moment. Okay, one step behind you. In the game and we have some audio here One step behind you and full screen here we go okay and so there's a nice uh, intro screen here at the beginning to give us the uh, basics these are guards these are the captains all right so you gotta remember the difference uh, there this is us your equipment right water arrows there don't get caught. I wonder how we get these replenished. We'll find out. Um, all right. And I'll gradually figure out uh, the commands and whatnot. I might not remember them all immediately. But R, T, and V are important things we can do. Oh, we can wait here is also important. I'll probably be using... Well, we'll see how the aiming works. Okay. Select a mission. Steal, steal, steal. <laughs> Um, okay, so the Grail of Blessed Do the Saintly from the Barracks of Hallowed Pawn. Okay, there's some proc gen locations and things for you. The Goblet of Ser Anzoex the Vain, Castle of Saint Kizex Lujo. Anyway, the rewards are the same for all of these. They're all steel. Hmm. These seem similar. So everything here is identical, aside from the maps currently. We don't have any other special options. Um, oh, open that again. <laughs> Less stealth, more warlord forever. Hey, Pagels, welcome. <laughs> Well, yeah, we're starting with stealing today. Maybe we'll get to some more destruction later. Not not warlord style, maybe, but I don't know. I haven't. Uh, we'll we'll see what the other games have to offer. So the difference between these three, uh, our options here, are just the maps, um, which is uh, the map gen looks interesting. I like this is your kind of uh, corridor uh, room style map gen. Uh, the maps do look kind of interesting to play. Uh, you know, this one has fewer rooms, more corridors. Over here we've got a kind of a mix, and here's another mix. I like this little roundabout here. 
Um, loops are kind of nice, right? Strategically speaking. Um, but it also, I guess, we'll have to see how easily easy it is to get in and out of... Uh, I guess you can go through windows and stuff, and we don't know how prevalent those are yet. So I'm just going to go with this uh, middle map here, I think. No, wait. How do I actually... Oh, use left, right to enter. Okay. Right. You don't do this with the mouse. Here we go. Blip, blip. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll take this middle one. Drawing tile map. Stole the objective, reach the edge of the map to complete your mission, or continue rather than place blind. All right, so it's similar to, um, to Lurk, where um, uh, you get the objective and then get to the edge of the map. All right, here's our fog of war, like a literal fog. Um, okay, so we got a little symbol above us. I imagine that means we're currently hidden in the shadows. heard a little noise in some cases and stepping on some of these all right so we'll see how big this map is and we'll also see what happens if if you reveal something in fog of war does that mean that you can see everything there permanently or is it only in your current field of view or what all right torch okay so checking on our resources okay here's a nice uh, little summary this is, makes it really easy i really like it when you know the game just gives you also the direct commands on the actions that you can do um, so R here is clearly our water arrows of which we have three we have only one sleep arrow here on T and V is whistle to attract attention all right let's step in the light here yeah okay see now we got a plus minus plus We're like a battery here <clears throat> rogue battery okay check out inside the windows here okay there's a guard he's looking to the right a ray tracing on. <laughs> we got this uh, I guess so okay this guy's got a little um, arrow next to him um uh, we'll see if that indicates movement direction or if it indicates uh where they're looking i guess probably okay so you can go left and right we'll see if they can go up and down that guy's just going left oh there, there he goes okay he's got an arrow going down now and yes yeah, so it look, does look like in the areas you reveal once you've revealed it you can see continue to see everything there which is nice um i like that approach and you know it doesn't have to be realistic Here's a captain. We found a captain. Let's see if there's more than one captain um, in each map. Wait, what was that? Oh, full light. Okay, so this is plus. Interesting. I guess there, there's a difference. Full light is even... There's there's more than two states here. We've got three states. I'm going to keep... Basically, it's optimal to, you know, look around and check in all the windows, at least as far as we know so far. And it doesn't look like there's anything really to worry about outside. But, yeah. And I guess it's like real thievery, right? It's optimal to case the place and, uh... <laughs> At least we don't have to visit multiple times, right? <laughs> but, yeah, checking outside. Oh, and another thing we'll want to learn is, can they spot and uh, mess with us through... Uh, if they see us out a window. Oh, shoot. There's a dude over there. Probably shouldn't be too close. Okay, here's a guy coming outside now. All right, there's another captain here. So we now know there can be more than one captain. Uh, what is this? Oh, that's a that's a closed door. Okay, facing down. Right, there we go. That is a door. I thought it was like a bookshelf that had got into a wall or something. No, it's a door. <laughs> Hadn't started to recognize what doors look like yet. All right, we fully uh, mapped this place just about. Yes, and the map is as advertised. Just like the little preview we saw before coming. No other surprises yet. Oh, look, at, we could see an arrow for a guard who's right there. That's kind of funny. So we know there's someone up there. And uh, we have the, uh, our goal is listed at the top for our mission. All right, so we found uh, one main door to the east. And I guess we can also, it was going through uh, windows. We can pick a window to go through. And we can try to look for an empty room. And uh, anyway, I think we're probably going to, all right, we did smash this window. What happens, I wonder. All right, there's a guard there. Open door, and I guess that's loot there. All right, so we do need to... Anyway, we need to take out a captain. Oh, an internal window here. We can't... All right. Yeah, so we can't hide in things. It's just hiding in darkness. That's our main goal here. Smashing windows. Looking for new areas to uncover. Okay, there we go. 84 gold. It's our beginning. We've got... Uh, there is the bottom left corner. we got 172 there total. Keys also... Um, 
Oh, that's right. We have to find out. I guess we need to get the key from the captain, but then we need to find out where the locked room is. I wonder if they investigate or care about locked doors. Wait, there's a question mark guy down here. Why is he question marking? Did he see something? I see another captain to the east, too. They're investigating the smashed, the smashing of the windows. They're going coming pretty far for that. Oh, that guy's coming all the way over here. Interesting. Uh oh. <laughs> all right. No, nope, now he's going back that way. Wonder if they can hear doors opening. I wonder if any devs used AI to assist in programming. Doesn't seem to be forbidden in the seventy-hour seventy-hour rules, says Pagels. Um. Uh, I know some in the roguelike dev community are actually doing that, but usually it's more, it, you know, it's less like, uh, you know, it's more for supplemental type stuff. They're not, you know, like you need this particular type of uh, function or method that, you know, it's really more or less what you could do by searching the internet, um, you know, find the same kind of thing. And uh, so that programming wise, develop uh, design wise is actually, you know, it's, it can be a source of getting ideas. People have been doing that a lot. I've seen lately. All right, smash. Let's see, does anyone go question marking because of that smash? Kind of trying to see. All right, I don't see anyone doing that. We can also probably, I guess, watch. They seem to be all on. Yeah, everybody's got. All right, they're all on patrol routes. But yeah, the other idea is to use AI to like give you, you know, basically just serve as kind of another, uh, um, basically as if you were chatting with other people about ideas and stuff, just to give you more ideas and expand on something. But programming wise, <clears throat> yeah, not uh, not to a great degree, just supporting type stuff. Certainly wouldn't be forbidden though, because really, again, it's just like searching the net. And <laughs> at this point, it's also just as likely to make you take longer than it is to speed you up if you use it wrong. <laughs> All right, so uh, captain, just gonna pick a captain. There was one in the hallway to the southeast. He's probably easier. And it seems like if you can smash windows and kind of just like retreat out and then not have to worry too much about the consequences of that. All right, so this is Captain in the hallway to the east, but I still have to find the target too. Uh, do you have a listing of the games you picked to share with us? Uh, not the full list, no, um, because it's not really finalized. All right, I, I might get caught back here if they come out here, but no, they won't go through window. Uh, I, have a, I have my list, um, which I'm picking from. Um, uh, but it, I don't have, uh, I don't know if I'll actually finish the list is part of the problem because there's too many good games this year. <laughs> My list is, uh, has over 30 games on it and it takes, it take a while to do all of those. I'm, I'm putting a lot of more time into streaming now uh, because I do want to play as many as possible, but I've got other stuff to do too. So I don't know. I'm going to break that window and see if anybody replies or responds to that. You going to check that out? No, he's not. Okay. Somebody else going to check that out? No. I'm gonna wait over here. Ooh. Waiting in the light, that's a good option. Alright, he's going away. I'm just trying to uncover. Oh, whoa. Uh oh. Alright, so he won't see us here because we're in the dark. We can go diagonally through there, that's fine. Okay, not a problem. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to share the full list. Uh, if only. It, because if I share any names, I'm gonna make sure I play those games. So I'm basically sharing the short list for what I'll be doing during a given stream uh, in one day or another the next time. But if I do announce the name of a game, then I am definitely going to play it. Like I said, Crave Space last the uh, second time and I didn't get to play it. We're going to play that today for sure. And the first day I wanted to play Boat Journey, but didn't get around to that. So that was definitely a second day game. Just calling yourself, make yourself immortal at it. I wish. So um, yeah, don't have a full list together. Plus, I'm, I move the list around to like what I'll be playing in a given day, depending. I kind of look ahead and uh, glance at the games and try to form a group that I think I can finish it around the right amount of time, just based on what it looks like. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, I'm trying. To, I don't know what we're gonna do once we get that actual key, but yeah, there's a fairly large number of guards uh, in this. Okay. He saw us. Yeah, I really should get more practice with people seeing us anyway. All right, is he gonna do a question mark? He's question marking. Oh, he saw us through the window. Now what's gonna happen? We can, oh, wait, is he? He knows where we are. Does he hear us? He's, he didn't see us over there either. All right. 
Anyway, just kind of got to watch their behavior, I guess. So it looks like probably... And I wonder, do, oh, I guess so as soon as we get, wait, I guess as soon as they get to us, if they get to us, we get arrested. And so it seems like our main worry in this game is to run into more guards uh, than one at a time. Smashy, smashy. Uh, shoot, there's really... Where is... Uh, I can't really look around the map, though, I guess. About uh, around the explored areas of the map that we've already seen. Because now I'm going to try to look for this object uh, that we're trying to find. Basically, to plan out uh, your route here, you're kind of going to want to see... Uh... Oh, never mind. I see it. It's here on the west. Okay. This here. That's the locked door. Locked door with apparently a lot of treasure inside. And yeah, that's a different door. So that's our target, which means going after another captain doesn't make a lot of sense because there's already a captain right in front of the door. Basically, we just need to take this room. Shouldn't be too hard. Let's see how... I guess they'll come out of windows after us. Just need to watch these two guys. All right, he went out up there. Hmm, broke all the windows. Whistling only works indoors is pretty interesting. Oh, okay, wait, we got this guy way down here. It's kind of interesting who responds. It doesn't seem very consistent, which is probably a good thing. But sometimes these guys apparently can respond from pretty far away. To well, I mean, I didn't notice where this guy was. He might have, might have been the guy who was, I guess he was in this hallway, that guy. I think it was the hallway or this room. One of those two. I think it was this room. And he heard this one probably. So <clears throat> that makes sense. Um, okay, so this guy now is going to come straight for us. And we'll probably just um, put him to sleep out here and steal his stuff. He didn't alert his other guy. The main thing we have to worry about is this guy down here. Wait, where is he? He's not coming this way though. He's going. Oh, wait. He's He's got a strange path going here. Yeah, he's going to come outside though. Bring it. I'm going to find out what happens. Oh, no way. Okay, I thought he was going to turn around. All right, so now it's time to hit him with a, uh, not a water dart, a sleep dart. Okay, all right, so we're not using the mouse at all. I was wondering how the aiming might work. And confirmation is, uh, what is the confirmation button? I'll probably press it again. Yeah, T. There we go. Twang. There it goes. A key. We have his key. <laughs> yeah, there's also a guy. Oh, there's their guy up there in the room. Oh, you're right. There is. Look at that. <laughs> Anyway, it's okay. We should be able to... Anyway, uh, so I guess this guy's going to stay out. I wonder what knocking them out does. We're going to find out shortly. Unaware. Oh, is that like... We stole his money. Hmm. I'm curious if this guy to our southwest here that just knocked out, is he going to like wake up or what? Doink. All right. Did we get it? And it doesn't look like it, huh? This was just a locked room, so it's the wrong locked room. Okay. <laughs> Here I go, spending my only sleep dart to make sure I get into this room, which apparently just has a lot of treasure in it. Also, if these guys don't wake up, hmm, this guy, the goblet is in another castle, apparently. Um, hmm. All right. And these guys seem to stay knocked out, in which case, hmm. I wonder what the point, I wonder why we'd really need sleep arrows if we can really knock people out like that. I guess you can't knock them out as long as they're aware, and that's the thing, of course, but... Alright, well, let's go look around for another room, I guess. Also, we can kind of see around edges like this, which make it easier. But And now we know what we're looking for, so... Shouldn't be too hard to find. And maybe they're even near captains in general. Hmm, this area is harder to get through, actually. Mm. 
Oh, wait. Well, there's something special up there with a the captain, but no. Anyway, external door. Getting chased. Which I guess is a bad thing. If there's nowhere to hide. I don't know whether I should go northeast or northwest, but going straight north is probably a bad idea. Might get caught. Um, hmm. Let's see how fast they move. Okay, yeah, I think he's moving faster than us. Caught. Okay. 832. Alright. Enter to start a new thief. Figuring out mechanics here, basically. All right, this one's steel, steel, steel. We'll go for a smaller map this time, just to see the full how it how it works out here. Okay, now we're stealing a chalice. Anyway, got a general idea of how things go. I'm gonna head over to this map and circle it again. Actually, let's let one of these guys see us through a window. All right, he's even getting a look this way. You don't have to even worry about this much. Oops, okay, I accidentally smashed a window. <laughs> here, this guy, this guy will see us. Can he see us? They don't, can't see out windows. No. We're even in plus right here. Plus light. Did not see us out a window. Hmm. Anyway, last time got a little too aggressive in the middle of everything. Looks like this could be the locked door over here on the west. It's a lock. Oh, I mean this one. Oh, this one's the locked door. All right. The glowy particles is probably the goal. Oh, glowy particles. Ah, there we go. You mean this thing up here? Yeah, there you go. Glowy particles. Just mapping away and not even paying attention to that. Hello there. Oh, that's a captain. We could actually... Here, can you see us? No. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, shoot. That counts as an arrest. God damn it. <laughs> uh, whoops. Sorry about that. I was playing too fast there. Oh, whoa. This dude's outside. He's just walking around. There's no door there, too. All right. No, actually, unfortunately. Anyway, we're looking for glowy particles now. But uh, yeah, so far overall, I'm, uh, I think the game's uh, pretty neat. It's, uh, obviously, it seems like a pretty polished job, and also not the not the developer's uh, first um, 70 RL, which always makes a difference. I think um, you know once you know what you're in for, scope appropriately, you know have also just the dev experience and design experience. Design experience, I think, can be a pretty big help. Um, when it comes to 7 DRLs, just for knowing, you know, just for scoping. Oh, shoot. And also um, for just being able to finish more and have a, be a polished, better result, of course, you know, as in most things, experience helps. And so you've got some devs who are doing it every year or have done it at least uh, several years before coming out with some really nice stuff. Alright, so, right, so finally done with that. And uh, I guess it's kind of annoying. A little bit of optimal tedium at the beginning of each uh, map like that. Alright, we found, I think, the room is to the south here. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Glowy bits. Right there. More glow in that room. Okay. Alright, here's a guy. And there's a guy. All right, so we need to find a captain and get to that room. Um, and of course, we could get loot. I don't know what else the goal is. I think it mentioned on uh, the developer thing that they hadn't managed to get to the idea of using gold in shops and whatnot. Here's a captain up here we could take down. And then, so after we take that captain down, you need to pay attention to what we can do in uh, this area here. All right, there's one guy in the room. It seems like that's, hmm, uh, yeah, not uncommon. <laughs> one guy in the treasure room. And we might need to take out some of these guards beforehand. At least the one, this one to the south, to the west of us here. 
So to do that, we would want to wait till he's as far away from the window as possible, open the window, and then run out here. But with minus, we'd be in enough dark, and he doesn't have a torch or anything. So couldn't... Right, we'll wait till he gets up north. Oh, he turns off to the west. We'll wait till he goes further south. One, two. Boom. All right, he's probably going to come back up here. All right, I, like, we're in a minus right now, which means they can't see us at all in the shadows out here. All right, he's not even going to check that out. Okay, yeah, that seems... Uh, all right, so it's not totally consistent, it seems... Like, that wasn't very far away from him. Some of them are coming from further than that when they hear glass. So I guess there's a chance involved. Anyway, the point of doing that is so that we can then use this opportunity to slip in behind him when he comes uh, south next time. Going to wait right here. We should be able... Oh, wait. Uh, does stepping on the glass make him turn towards us? That is something that... Uh, think might have been a problem last time let me see what happens no there's no glass stepping sound hmm okay we should be safe I just wondered if we can actually can I step diagonally on the glass he's not gonna turn around and arrest me immediately so this turn I should be able to get him and he didn't even move that time hmm all right All right, and it says, also they can discover your handiwork, which I guess means they'll be suspicious if they find a body, but... Oh, we haven't seen what they do in response to that yet. All right, so anyway, we've got access to a door now. So now we need a captain's key. And there happens to be a lone captain up here. Oh, the lo loading... Oh, okay, the, tool the loading tip said they'll wake them up. All right, I didn't see a loading tip. All right, cool. So yeah, if they find another guard, they'll wake them up. All right, that makes sense. So that's how they can... Uh, get back awake again. So you do need that's uh, that's even better. I mean, there's got to be a way for to wake back up. Otherwise, you could strategically just take everyone out one by one. Um, I like the wake up mechanic because that means any guards that overlap or hear you and travel to a new area can then yeah start to make things uh, more difficult in that area. And you do have to like two guys. These two guys right here, you would have to take out in succession, which might not be possible um, given what's going on. I like that idea. Okay, and then this guy, he did not hear that. Okay. His path is awkward, though. This could be an opportunity to use our arrow, but honestly, you can also just save the arrows. I wonder what kind of... How hidden are we inside here? We're not hidden at all. We could use... Um, could just... No, we can't let him come out here. We'd have to get his attention out here and then lose his attention, which I imagine we could do around the corner. I mean, as long as we're minus, I guess they can't see us. Is he going to see us over here? He still didn't even see us here. When's he going to see us? <laughs> there. All right. Here's a question mark. Okay. He didn't actually see us, though. Where are you going to go? Oh, he does a nice little random search around over there. Okay. That's something. That's not, that's that's a piece of information. Uh, deeper in the room is dark. It's a torch outside. Oh, the first couple tiles? Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, there's no torch in the room, so is it dark enough? Uh, I'm not sure about that, actually. Yeah, does it get dark enough in here? For example, if we head forward. Can we, uh, if we... If he's facing that way and we are over here, are we still considered in the dark? Yeah, the torch is definitely lighting this area. Um, not really f sure what kind of range we'll get inside. I guess we can test that in a moment once we take this guy out. I'm, I wanted to see what he does this time. Okay, see, this time he act behaved differently. Each time they've got a question mark, they'll kind of randomly search. So, using this opportunity to test how the... Oh, shoot, this time he saw us. <laughs> to see how they behave. All right, then he turns into a question mark because we're in, in stealth. And he goes back. Doink. All right, got your key. And now we can make it all the way back around down to here. Hmm, guy to the south's not doing a good job of waking up his friend. So we're technically hidden right now. Oh, also I didn't check that out. You know what? 
I'm going to go back really quick before doing this because I didn't do what I was thinking about doing here. What does the minus look like in this room? Okay, yeah, taking one step forward puts us in darkness, actually. That is good enough. We could technically hide. We could have technically snuck up right behind him in this room, probably. One thing I don't know is what if they're looking towards you um, and you have a minus? You know, How far away will they see you in that case? That's something that uh, kind of got to learn and hopefully don't have to learn the hard way. All right, so we're waiting for this guy to the north. He's going to do that. Obviously, that room is well enough lit. <laughs> With all the glittery things. Objective stolen. All right. Hey, Nisbird thing. Yes, another thieving roguelike. We started out all three days with thief roguelikes. All right, so we got this. Let, I'm just going to bail out with our 663 and uh, see what we can get or see how that what that does for us. Contract complete. Successfully stole the artifact of Holy Gainu the Mighty from the Library of Sire Anak. Reward 2,000 gold. The guild has more work. Okay... Well, is there anything different here? Okay, 4,000. So the wards are now going up. Um, they're all still steel, though. I uh, wonder if we're gonna, when and if we're going to get other types of missions. Hmm. All right. Uh, so anyway, anyway, um, looking mainly, I think, uh, for, I don't know what the difference is, but the rewards are the same. What's the difference between a smaller map and a larger map? Like within a larger map, would they have the same number of guards, but they're spread out? Or is it, um, uh, yeah, I don't know the difference, but I'm going to go for a smaller map anyway. Uh, in Thief, I think they have to basically bump you in darkness, and this seems to be very directly inspired by that. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, it does seem directly inspired, that's for sure, you know, um, but, uh, you know, we've, we've given the tools and behavior overall, so they'd have to actually bump you if you're in darkness. All right, that's interesting to think about. Oh, okay, Cat++ Plus Plus says the itch, itch page has, is on, that's on the list of um, at the bottom that we didn't fully read that the uh, different mission types did not make the cut, unfortunately. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I think that would have uh, improved it significantly, but, you know, I mean, it's already quite polished as is but we'll see uh do another mission here see what kind of uh if any kind of differences it has overall but yeah we might have seen uh the majority of the strategic possibilities and also one of the things is uh you know it's an endless game and as an endless game or at least i think it's an endless game uh, i should probably check the itch page again to confirm that but uh all right here's a door to get in i've been always taking windows but um uh, you know, if it's an endless uh, 70 RL, sometimes that can be a nice thing, because then as soon as you feel like you've probably seen most of the things, then you, you uh, don't have to keep playing if you're trying to play a lot of 70 RLs. <laughs> Personally, I like to win. Uh, I always tend to put in uh, enough time to at least see everything and or win um, a 70 RL. Um, but if it's an endless game, it's a little different. And we're gonna, in, in that case, your goal is mainly score, and it feels like that's probably uh, the intent with this one. Okay, so we have fully mapped, and uh, it wasn't, because I was talking, I wasn't really paying attention. Looks like there's some gold in the corner there. That looks, that's only, that's sort of sparkly. It's not big sparkly. It is foggy, though. All right. This is uh, this room here. I don't see anything along the edges. No, what is this thing here? That looks like very shiny. Maybe this up further north, there's a super shiny treasure and it's reflecting on the wall there. It's kind of uh, funny to see some of these things. Make guesses through little particles you can barely see. All right, so now I'll actually focus on looking at the map. And yeah, it's gonna be some of these rooms. That's some of these rooms could be tough to get into actually. Just kind of got to methodically work your way towards the uh, center of a group. All right, let's go check out this north area here. Move my cursor out of the way. Just because there's not many guards up here. Should make it easier. Got to always be looking out for where we might be able to escape to. There is a spot we can leave to. 
Yeah, you're not coming over here. There's a guard. I guess one of the main things to worry about is whether someone might notice you when they happen to be right next to you. Oh, alright, we found it. Yep, it's that room to the north. Remember they get water torches out? Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I haven't done that yet. I haven't needed to. Actually, oh, wait, oh, oh. All right, here's a slight change. I noticed we have more resources. We're in our second mission. We got an extra sleep dart and an extra water dart or arrow. Um, yeah, true. We can do that if we need to. Um, that'll help. Haven't really needed to or need, need to yet. I imagine if we were trying to get every piece of uh, loot and maximize, then we would definitely need to do that, but... Uh, well, some of these areas, like look, like this corner here, that's a lot of torches. <laughs> but something like this room, that, putting that out would help. In fact, you'd probably do that, um, this map, because we haven't... I want to, you know, you want to use all the mechanics um, to just kind of see how the things work. How, you know, trying to experience everything the roguelike has to offer. 70 RL. All right, so now I'm going to find a captain. Uh, there's, there wasn't any up there, so we're going to find some captain somewhere else who's going to give us key. That's right. We don't have to worry about any of these guys noticing us or coming out because the windows are intact, which is kind of funny. I like the other one. Oh, two captains together right here. There's some proc gen for you. <laughs> two captains. Is that both of the captains? <laughs> like the only captains on this map? Now going around checking. Yeah, I don't see any others unless they're in a hidden area. It looks like we might have two captains together. That's some uh, definitely interesting challenge um just the fact that it's quite random which i think is good um in this game uh, trying to go too heavy on the control in terms of proc gen would take a lot of work and, and balance and wouldn't really be worth it in a 70 row like this i think uh, was there one up there i didn't see him where um, what room's he in pretty sure i didn't see one Still looking around then looking again uh, did i miss one somewhere there's not one in that room i don't see a captain anywhere else northwest corner mm. Mm. anyway we'll circle around oh, there's one guy in the room as usual there's one guy in the treasure room that you always have to deal with <laughs> the room below Oh, oh, there he is. Sorry. I was, I assumed this was the only guy in the room. And so anytime I saw an arrow in this room, I was ignoring the arrow for that time. You're right. That's in a captain right there. Yeah, right next there. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I can see him now. Barely. <laughs> All right. That's, e yeah, we could do that. All right. This is actually a good test for the water as well. We can open up, uh, see what's happening up here. All right. Let's knock this guy out let's start from the eastern side oh no he can't we can't knock him out these guys are all connected see if i knock him out over here this guy's gonna notice although it'd be kind of interesting to see them wake him up let's let's maybe we'll do that in turn intentionally just to have him wake up i don't like the fact that there's so many torches over here though maybe we'll just drag him over onto this side instead let's whistle see what happens yeah i'm gonna knock him out when he's way to the left that's is the plan here um but let's test a, does it. All right, let's see if we can whistle in a, in a window. Does that count? No. Well, they're just too far away. I don't know how close you have to be for a whistle to be effective. We'll try that again in a second. I need to make sure I can have enough time to get out, though, too. Also, the guy to the west. Gotta wait for him. Yeah, these guys have their own patrol paths, set patrol paths, so gotta wait for them to line up a little better. All right, like this guy here. I'd like to whistle. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay, that was close. That actually counts as... All right, whistling close enough actually counts as, yeah, definitely getting his attention. And now he's doing a random walk around. Boom, gotcha. Hmm, no body dragging. Okay, anyway, now he's, uh, he's out of sight. And the next thing we can do, I think, is take out the torch in here and then get this guy when he walks into the room. And then go after the captain. You watch this guy, how far in he comes. All right, he goes in and looks north, and that's it. All right, that should be good.
looks north, goes that way. All right. Um, and we'll also have to see how they respond. Wait. All right, here's targeting torches. Wait, we can target the torch. Oh, through the window outside, that's nice. Uh, here's targeting, I'm gonna escape from that because I wanna target the torch right next to us, but it won't let me do that at this angle. So I'm gonna step in here. There we go, okay. Boom, twang. All right. Let's see what he does. Is he gonna do anything? He does nothing in response to that, okay. Well, I guess that means we can wait right here. Better not spot me. Nope. No spot. Bandit. Took you 38 gold. Okay, so there's only one guy left. The captain. Well, there's also the guy in the north room, which has four torches, five torches in it. <laughs> Alright, so captain here. Goes left, one, two, looks south. Alright, this guy's actually... Hmm, he's got a tough route. <laughs> we could darken the room, and I guess they don't... Uh, what I'm wondering is if he'll try to light a torch or something. Um, he, this guy didn't, because either the distance or some other reason. But I could actually use two more arrows to take this out, which I think is the more effective way to do this, because we want to use... Uh, oh, no, we have two, two uh, poison. Or sleep, not poison. Greens making me think of uh, poison. We could actually just sleep both of these guys and then get the... Get it. The other way is to sneak up on the guy in here. By using, um... Is he gonna light it? No, he's checking out stuff. He's not, he's just going back now. He's gonna do exactly what he was doing earlier. Yeah. He looks north? Oh, he looks north into the corner when he goes over there. Oh, is the one to the south the one with the glowy thing? Yeah, actually wait. I mean, the, I thought it was this one, just because there's that glowy thing there. Oh, the other one was shining against the wall, you're right. That's true. Anyway, we're gonna get a key. Yeah. This room just happens to also be locked. But yeah, the other one was shining against, uh, was even shinier. Alright, so this guy shouldn't actually even see us if I walk over in here. Yeah, okay, well, anyway, we got a key, and I can see why, yeah, if we open, like, this door here, we would be down one key, so. Anyway, uh, I could go back down south and look at that other room and compare. There, oh, yeah, oh, wait, there it is. Yeah, this one. It is definitely, wait. Oh, uh, look at that. We can see through the fog of war because of the edge of the map. Uh, we're cheating. <laughs> Uh-oh, we're cheating. <laughs> You can see, we can't, I, earlier I saw this against the, the side and it did look like um, it's more likely to be the thing, but look here, we can move east one space and because of the edge of the screen, because of the way the fog of war works, it's revealing that cell. Um, so, yeah, uh, obviously uh, this would be something you'd probably want to try and um, polish out, um, you know, with more work on the game, is to get rid of that aspect of it. Because we can cheat and see the edge of Move by moving the fog of war. Um, okay, so yeah, it's the room over there. And so now I gotta find a way into that room. Uh, which is actually a little harder. And I'm gonna go, all right, so there's a door here. Is it, maybe it's a closed door and a window and that guy. All right, we can do this. Gotta head back around the other side though. Anyway, so that was a fun little adventure figuring out how to use uh, or water arrows and whatnot. Oh, I'd go all the way around in order to get inside, but I guess it's nice knowing that they can't come out the doors. All right, I was gonna go, um, oh yeah, this way. Okay, so yeah, this is probably a closed door, so we just need this guy, that guy. We only have one water arrow left, which means I can't take out both of these torches. All right, well, where's this guy gonna go? He can't actually get outside. Is he gonna come all the way around? I'm actually curious what he's going to do. Okay, right, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's touching other guards who are also getting curious. <laughs> Everyone's getting curious. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. This is a regular guard convention out here. <laughs> and they're all going home. Nice. Okay. So now we just need to watch this guy in the room up here. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean this door is opened when it was closed a second ago. And we can't close doors. Which means they have a way to look in here now. Must have been the wind, yeah. 
<laughs> Actually, since this guy never looks into the room, I guess they might not even notice that if, even if there's someone down in the doorway. All right. Uh, and anyway, I could probably just use the remaining sleep arrows. I think there's only one. Hopefully, there's only one guy in this room, one guard in that room, not another one that just purely in the fog. If so, then the remaining two sleep arrows should be enough to finish getting the uh, goal here. Just put this guy to sleep because otherwise it might be, or could try to attract him outside. Might have enough room moves to actually get over there. Is he going to see us here? He doesn't. Oh, we're still in, out of the light. We should probably figure out where the light ends. Oh, look at that. See, we're still in the shadows here. Okay. So we can actually stop all the way back down here and he can't see us. And as soon as he turns around, head north. I wonder what their actual uh, cone of vision is, though. Like, uh, it's not purely straight, I would assume. Purely. Oh, you know the other thing I haven't done at all yet is peeking. Oh, I forgot. That's F. It's not P. It's F. We need to probably try that out. We haven't really needed it much yet. But yeah, we can let's we can peek through here and see if there's someone else in there. That's a I think a good opportunity to try it out. But like, yeah, I don't know whether this guy could see. Could he see this space, or are they really only a line? Um, my guess is it's a it's a triangle. That would make the most sense. So we'll work on that assumption. All right, here we go. F. It was originally it was uh, hidden there, and now we can peek with F. Boom! There it is. Line, peek, diagonal peek, diagonal peek. All right, now we can see there is only one in here, and not only is there only one, but it looks like we should be able to... All right, watching that guy outside, just you know, to make sure nothing goes wrong. Okay, now we can simply just watch uh, what happens in the room to the west. He goes north. There it is, glowing cup. Oh, well, what? Oh, he's All right, he saw this body. That's what happened. <laughs> Funny. All right. We technically, technically, we have enough time to run, but I'm just gonna do that. Objective stolen. Also, there's treasure chests. Four hundred and seventeen. Ooh, even more valuable. Also, we get four thousand gold just for completing the mission. So yeah, we're uh, done here. Well, there's a nice, uh... Figuring out everything. Huh. Edge is pretty far. 4,000 gold. The guild expects continued success. And, yeah, too bad it's always steel. 6,000, so I assume it's going to be getting harder. Uh, wow. This here, um... Uh, this one's relatively small. Some of the really big ones. I'm going to go for one more and see, um, what that's going to change for us. I guess, I'm assuming you'd want bigger for more rewards or whatever, but. But yeah, I can see actually, I can see this getting, this This could be really expanded. Uh, I, I, I like the uh, whole, okay, we found the objective, it's on the northwest corner. <laughs> I can totally see this being expanded with uh, even more metagame uh, options. And uh, yeah, the, the actual proof of concept thievery part works fine, I think. And, you know, obviously you can have different types of enemies and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of room here for exploration. So, yeah, I, hope, I wonder if they're going to continue uh, working on it. Uh, today's, I don't know if we're going to actually have any uh, devs today um, because I didn't announce the list in advance the day before like I normally do. Or prefer to do. I wasn't actually sure I was going to be able to stream today. So I did not announce yesterday that I was going to do that. Okay, so we found the room there. It could always be in max to extend gameplay. Hmm. All right, so we need to find the closest entry point for this. Anyway, this, I uh, guess we can check what's... We don't need a peek here. Look at that. Just gold just in the entryway. That, gonna, that got somebody's attention. Oh, that's the guy I got. Is he just going to stand there? He doesn't want to come over here. He's just standing there. <laughs> it doesn't actually work here. 
just doing that for fun. Oh, but we can't peek through this door. Peek. Nobody again. Check it out. More free gold. Uh, door guards never open doors, though, so... At least we're safe like that. Don't see any with long paths here. But the, the dev did seem to make it... Uh, oh, wow. Two locked rooms here. The dev se did seem to point out that uh, the, uh, you know, the random generation, you know, it's pretty random. And so it could, you know, be easier or much harder or even impossible technically, but rare. But it, 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 either way, it improved. Oh, I don't know about impossible. Well, no, theoretically, I guess it could be pretty impossible. Um, but unlikely. Anyway, but yeah, I like the idea of um, just the fact that, you know, you're not really sure what you're going to get. It's not too tightly controlled. Um, the two captains earlier might have been. Hmm. Yeah, two right next to each other, uh, really close. If it depends on you know how where how many keys you need. What if yeah, for example, what if you ended up using your keys on doors, using all your resources and keys to get doors that you didn't actually need to get the objective? Um, it seems fairly. You want to go for the objective first in case you run out of resources. Then the rest is just you know icing. So always go straight for your objective in case you run out. But you know now we're on our third mission. You can see our resources are resources are still rising. Um, we now have even more. Uh, which we don't technically need anything probably for just the goal we're going for here all right can peek and whoops i didn't get a key yes i'm not trying to go through the door all right there's a chest up here this looks like actually a pretty valuable room any locked room i guess is more valuable um i like it having more locked rooms and uh more value inside than forcing you to get keys from captains it's nice hey ma'am yeah first game of the day um still playing it um Playing one step behind you. Uh, one of an, yet another new uh, stealth roguelike. I, I like this one. Um, um, I mean, if I had a preference, um, I'd have to say I think this is the best one out of the three so far. Um, those, the, the first one, you know, it was their first 7 DRL. Uh, both of the last, these last two we've played are both from experienced devs and both have done stealth games before. <laughs> So, you know, definitely more experience in that regard. Um, and it, it shows also there's, you know, there's more layers of um, mechanics in these other two. And especially this one has the most. So I think this is probably the if best out of the three for comparing stealth roguelikes. And all have their, um, I guess, incomplete parts or, or areas where definitely you'd want to see more, see improvement and whatnot. But uh, like... This one still, I think, is probably uh, one of the better ones. More interesting um, to play. Two locked doors on the left? Oh, well, there's one here. That's right. There's a there, right. That's a good question because there's a room here, which is... it. Is this locked door only... You know, this is a treasure room, so the locked door is locked. But the we, as we've seen so far, these rooms are always locked, which means there might be two locked doors to the left. So it's dangerous to open this one. We don't even have a key. So this is... Uh, the difficulty is going up, uh, it seems... Um, regardless of map size. Okay, let's head down here. Peek a door. A lot of torches there. We've got two captains to the west. All right, we need to find all the captains now. And find out which captains are going to be prime targets. Oh, what's this? Uh, this guy's... Look at that. Is this, is this guy bugged? <laughs> He's still sitting there curious. I wonder if maybe he has some random point that he's trying to get to that he can't get to now. Oh, he's in a locked door. You know what? That must be what it is. Look at that. This guy may be kind of bugged. Actually, here's another guy in the room, too. We see his arrow, which that's another thing that obviously would <clears throat> end up being fixed, I imagine. We're seeing the arrow for a guard we can't see. But um, he probably wants to go investigate the sound or the glass, but he can't because the door is locked and they can't open doors. <laughs> well, they can open regular doors. They can't open locked doors. So, yeah. That seems like something that should be changed as well. A lot of little things here and there, but overall, I think on a, with a 7 DRL, it's it can be preferable in a game like this to add, you know, an extra few mechanics instead of trying to polish out all the little things like that. Cursor of the way. All right, so uh, captain locations. Where are you? There's a captain there too. There's two captains here. All right, here's another captain. We got two over there and one over here. This one to the west is. Got a friend with him. There are three captains we've noticed so far. Any more captains? 
Uh, check out what's in this room. Actually, I'm gonna smash this room and go inside. Nobody else? No one noticed? No one noticed. Okay, we can actually just steal that gold then too. There's a guy over... Is this a captain? Actually, that's the captain. Yeah, there's a captain in this room to our west. While we're at it, peek the door. Okay, nice peek. We can see a bookcase. Peek that door. <laughs> All right, so we might want to take this captain to the west of us. This is probably a good option, rather than taking the other ones to the east here. Okay. Um, open that door. There's someone else in that room, too. Ah, it's a guard. Shoot. Okay, so there is a captain and a guard in each of these other rooms, but the room to our that that room right above us right now is actually pretty dark, so it's probably not too hard to just take everyone down. Mm. One thing I guess, visually speaking, kind of kind of distinguish which of these tiles are actually lit and which ones are not by this like these torches over here. Like these look lighter. Does that mean these are actually places where we could get spotted? And also, one thing I haven't studied yet is do obstacles block their vision? Hey, Red Zaxter. Welcome to the stream. Again, we're playing one step behind you, another stealth roguelike. On our third mission here. Hmm. All right, wait, that guy? Oh, he actually leaves the room. Hmm. I have three. Again, I'd like to save our uh, sleep arrows for as long as possible. All right, we're gonna, all right, anyway, we're gonna head into this room here, but we're gonna watch their paths and try to get them at the exact right time because they have asynchronous paths. You need to get it so that the guy, they're turning around at the same time. Right, this might be our opportunity. Yep. In we go. Boom, gotcha. Okay, I'd like to imagine, yeah, okay, so we can tell from our FOV revealing here, I think, yeah, it, we, uh, he, he wouldn't be able to see us up here anyway, so we should be safe. Got key. I like the mechanics over QOL and QOL over polish when time is precious. Having a team to polish different parts at once is great, though, yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, mechanics over QOL and QOL over polish anytime. Um... But even, uh, yeah, I was going to say even QOL, some QOL can wait. That's That starts edging into, you know, do you have the extra time category as well as um, probably good for post-release fixes and uh, improvements, which uh, I don't know if this dev is. Uh, so, you know, a lot of the developers this year are saying they're going to be doing post-fix versions. Some of them haven't yet. Some already have. Um, you know, many have done. Many do it within the first week. Um, especially important, really important stuff. But then there's, I've already seen a lot of devs leaving notes that they're going to be updating it, but it's been a couple, two or three weeks now, I guess two and a half weeks, and they still haven't uh, moved, uh, but that's kind of their plan. But, you know, you can get really burned out in 70 <laughs> All right, next thing to figure out is how much... No, all right, we need to find... Next thing we need to find out is how hidden can we stay in the southeast corner of this room? Minus, 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 minus. We can get minus all the way over to here. So he wouldn't see us if he walked over here? And we can catch him while he's going back the other way. But we don't want him to be in a spot that will be spotted by anyone else. So I need him... Let me see how close he gets. His final cell is the middle one. Okay, that should be good. So I should be able to stand right here. Red Zach just says, Early versions of Vienna were complete incomprehensible and I got really bummed out and pivoted completely to UX stuff. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned, I played your game, uh, Vienna. The 7 DRL. I played a, a bunch actually already that I, I I won't be streaming. I spent more time playing them. Um, just games that I didn't think were good for uh, streaming for various reasons um, and or I was interested in playing them but not necessarily sharing them with everyone. Um, and uh, that one was pretty, it was pretty interesting. I, I think you should be proud of yourself for what you did accomplish with that. It was um, uh, a very interesting experience. Very. <laughs> Got this guy. Very unique kind of uh, roguelike. Um, Red Zaxter is a game where you're uh, a, no you're a, a noble dancing and uh, trying dancing with others and following patterns and trying to uh, get information and uh, from other nobles and leaders and use that to your advantage. 
Oh, <laughs> Spill says, we're older devs, so we went and burned out. <laughs> but we're planning to release the post-release version eventually, just taking our time. Yeah, I totally get that. The burnout is real. I get burned out just thinking about doing a 70R. <laughs> if I was still in my 20s, man, I'd still be doing a 70R every year, probably. Nowadays, yeah, just thinking about it <laughs> makes me want to... Makes me want to just stream them instead. <laughs> all right, so this guy. All right, so anyway, we're trying to get another key here. We don't. We we're assuming we need it. I mean, technically, we might not even need another key, but let's just go for it anyway. Uh, sorry, what are we gonna do in this room? Wait for that captain to turn around and see how hidden we can stay in the room. Yeah, that's the goal. All right, so he's gonna come that way. That way. That way. He's gonna turn. We're gonna go in. We're minus in here. We're in the light right here next to the torch, of course. We could put the torch out, which I think I'm going to do. Okay, here we go. And... Twang. Here we go. Oh, shoot. Wait a minute. He won't see us if I step here, right? No! No! What? You're going down. <laughs> shoot. Okay, so yeah. In the dark... Even if you're in the dark, yeah, they can see you uh, diagonally in front of them. I, I was thinking of earlier, someone in chat was mentioning, if it's like Thief, maybe they have to bump you or whatever, even if you're in the dark. Apparently it's not. If you're in the dark, they can see you diagonally in front of them. That's actually a really important piece of information. I was thinking he might, if we're technically in the dark, um, he, he would continue to walk here and then we could whack. Actually, yeah, he saw us there. He was going to just try to go forward and we could just hit him, but that didn't work. Anyway. So simply putting that out made him come down here and notice that guy and head over there. So yeah, I, I like I like the interplay of them going to other guards to wake them up. It's uh, I think overall there's some really interesting possible you know strategic possibilities here. I mean, we got the key, so I don't that actually saved us you know from going in there and having to maybe deal with more things. We have two keys now. All right, now um, I, I completely forgot how I wanted to get to the other room. I know it's on the other side, but. All right, there's the room. Uh, it's from the north that we were going in. I think it was. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Hear that? Yeah, but <laughs> just being tired. All right, so we can. We already peeked in here, and we have two spare. We can. We can take anybody out. We probably went overkill on the resource. Um, Saving here. Wait, is there no guy in this room even? There's none. Yeah, okay, check it out. Ooh, I like shiny stuff. I like shiny particles too. The graphics in this game are definitely very enticing. We stole the, uh, oh wait, I didn't actually see what we stole. Oh, also we have a name down. I didn't even look. We're, we're Ola Capo the Thug. All right, uh, priority of mistress. Mwooinip. Oh yeah, over 10k now. Yeah, the game does look nice. I like it. Uh, the, the shading and everything. Um, particle effects. Uh, we've got another... All right. Oh, yeah, so we did need two keys to get in there. Uh, that, that was a good call to grab a second key because this room was likely to be locked as well. So there's two treasure rooms together. I wonder if we could even link even more on like a bigger map. But technically, there. I wonder if there's the same number of captains as there are locked doors. But anyway, that worked out, I think, pretty well. And we can technically leave there. 6,000 gold. We got 16k. Uh, and there we go. We stole them. That's what we stole. The manuscript of Hallowed Exos of the Hero Heroic. Excellent. 8,000 gold. All right. Well, I think um, we've got a pretty good understanding of the game and the mechanics. I like it. And I'd be even interested in continuing. Uh, I, unfortunately, I guess it's not going to... I wonder if it's going to save and I could continue playing later. Um, I'd like to try some more, but that's enough, I think, for the stream. Um, good game. Yeah. Um, my favorite, um, thief, uh, associated game from this year so far, and I can totally see them doing more with this. Different, different goals. Um, you know, obviously more controlled proc gen, a little more controlled. I mean, for a 70 year old, you're not going to want to do that. Um, because you could just make things worse. And you waste a lot of time on all the testing and polishing of that so i think that what was done here was is really good and making shinies look pretty really as to the desirability for sure 
but yeah overall uh yeah the game does a really good job of all that um so yeah all right i guess i will be closing this now <laughs> rated shiny out of 10. that is the official rating does make me want to collect more shinies that's for sure um all right i'm gonna close that and uh, i press the x and it's okay there it is closing one step behind you browser and what was I going to Oh, so the other thing, now that we've finished, we can come back down and look at it here. There's always a ton of stuff ended up in cutting, cut, the cutting room floor. So different mission types, um, assassinations, capture, a steal a percent of loot. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, rather than just going for one objective, obviously we could, we were able to hyper-focus on that and, and didn't have to worry too much about our resources. Um, but there were still a lot of considerations and, and tactical considerations. There were fewer strategic ones, though, which I think would be uh, very different if we had to do other things. And what if you there were even a combination, like you have to assassinate and capture, or I mean, assassinate and steal, or do other things like that. Um, uh, yeah, I like, I like the potential there. Uh, special abilities and tools, teleport traps, disguises. Ooh, yeah, disguises would be really fun in a game like this. Uh, obviously that's a really comp this kind of stuff especially the disguises part would you know gameplay wise um is a lot harder um, requires a lot more effort to add properly so all kind of outside the realm of most 70 year olds I mean, you can add it easily the mechanic but you know is it fun is it interesting to do that's why you know 70 year old with the scope um really want to focus on a core mechanic and not expand too much on that um if you want to make the core mechanic good which is the more the most important thing if you have, otherwise you just have a jumble of mechanics that aren't necessarily fun i remember i guess we saw which, which game was it have i played that one yet yeah i saw one dev one of the devs had left a note um in the comments of their page saying they um they had actually implemented more I forget what game wasn't this one though they had actually implemented more types of enemies and more stuff but then they decided not to include it in the actual release 7 drl because they didn't have enough time to ensure that it was good gameplay um i forgot what game that was um yeah so anyway that's an example uh you want to uh limit yourself for sure because you know go outside those limits and uh, actually make the game worse um, because of the time limit and you know that's the kind of thing you can get to in a post release updates all right so moving unconscious guards Mm. that that could be op i feel <laughs> in a game like this i like the fact that we couldn't move them and i was thinking about that while we were playing i was like if we could move this guy that would that would sure would make this easier but almost too easy um the fact that you can move them um that would have to come with other kinds of drawbacks or i don't know or better i think i think if you're gonna add something like this you need more proc gen uh more controlled proc gen i mean um somewhat more and that really that would take a lot of time in a game like this to do good um controlled proc gen uh, count, accounting for all the different possibilities multiple floors whether that means z it could mean z levels or you know subterranean areas and stuff like that going up and down stairs and stuff that would be cool to have in a game like this for sure shop for buying equipment yeah giving a gold a use other than score that's a common request in any kind of game that has gold as you're collecting and also obviously we can see the interesting Possibilities behind that, especially combined with these special abilities and tools, you can, like not just tools, maybe you can train up special abilities and things or something like that with your money. Rep system, take contracts for certain houses against other houses. Wow, now you're getting really big. Yeah, so these are, <laughs> this is just starting to go way out in the realm of this is good. This game's going to take months and months. Uh, but uh, honestly, I would really look forward to seeing a lot of this stuff in a bigger game. This I'd like to see this developed. So hopefully... Um, uh, they do that all right cross between thief and hitman is a lot of features yeah oh <laughs> i'm embarrassed by our cutting room floor for lurk leap the term scope creep would be a vast understatement well i mean you know you can dream right dream big and uh it's nice to have goals like that i think like even this this here this is mega scope creep this is I, I wouldn't call this cutting room floor stuff i would call this you're imagining what you might do if you had months instead of a week right <laughs> <laughs> that is uh yeah i mean it's unrealistic to do all of this um unless you really i mean you you spend all day every day um and maybe you do you know less of a good job on in some of the areas right so but i think the the level of polish here was good for the amount of content and you kind of want to balance that 
<laughs> oh, Spill says, my co-dev James lectured me on the scope and sanity of carrying guards and multiple floors problems too. Ah, uh, yeah. So we're talking about, yeah, lurk, uh, lurk leap loop there. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, again, I, you know, we were playing that yesterday. I think it, that was actually, it, it was a lot of fun and well-designed too. Although I would think that I'd still prefer this one purely based on the amount of uh, extra systems they were able to fit in, um, which worked overall pretty well. Um, all right, so one step behind you. We're done with that. And we're, the next game on our list is called Dungeon Drawler. Uh Dungeon Drawler. Sports just said, I had a bunch of anime ideas for my 70 year old this year, and after getting the first batch implemented, I decided the game had already had enough going on. I'd be better served by polish and balance changes than dumping more content into the game. That is a smart move. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the sign of an experienced dev. <laughs> Not overreaching and uh, ruining everything, right? So Dungeon Drawler is a micro tactics turn-based roguelike. Draw your path to victory slash enemies in the way all right so yeah dungeon drawler here being drawler being draw um drawler all right uh so a bunch of it looks like these are just screenshots from the game we don't have to there's no other info about the game at all so we're just going to jump straight in here i think i had a special thing i have to scroll down twice again every game is slightly different in how you're going to stream it because they all full screen and play a little differently this one i have to come down twice here and uh don't full screen the game because that doesn't work on my computer with this and then switch to this. There we go. Got you all set up. Okay. Dungeon Drawler. Hopefully I don't get messed up here. Dungeon Drawler. Press space to start. First I'm going to click on the screen here and get uh, focus. All right. Okay, yeah. Art style on this looks cool. Um, very fuzzy graphics. I mean, intentionally, obviously, it's got a, a fuzzy aesthetic to it. So that's not it's not my streaming that's doing that. That's just the graphics. <laughs> um, level one, HP. Okay. Left click on a character to select it. Hold and drag the left mouse button to draw a path. Press space to confirm. Okay, so we've got. I assume these guys are red, they're enemies. Okay, we got two characters. This guy and this guy. Level one. Um, definitely, yeah. Cat Plus Plus says, definitely needs an option to disable this shader. Cute and fluffy pixels. And to be honest, it looks cool. I think looking at this for a while might might be, start to become not cool. <laughs> it, it, it does a number on the eyes. And some games go a little overboard on those kinds of effects. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, Tr toggle chroma aberration. Check it out. Maybe there is a toggle for it. Uh, interesting, there's a button here that you can't actually click. The button it occupies four different spaces. <laughs> All right, so anyway, any of these spaces are the work. <gasps> Look at that, it worked. Oh, this is so much better. Oh my gosh. I'm glad they put that button there and I'm glad it's very prominent and uh, <laughs> easy to do. Yeah, this here is just makes me feel like I need glasses. <laughs> Chroma Aberration, oh my gosh. It, it's a cool aesthetic, but to be honest, even without it, I like the pixel art. This looks good. We're gonna play without that aberration, for sure. Um, the pixel art looks good. Um, this, yeah, I need glasses. <laughs> yeah, get, that gets a little tiring. Okay, so it, it's neat to see for a second there. Now, I wonder if their screenshots, whoops. I wonder if their screenshots actually uh, um, took what, what, what they used for that. Pick your chrome, RGB. <laughs> RGG, BRB, or just none. All right. Okay, so we're holding, we're just dragging paths, and we have, this guy here has three HP, five steps. This guy has five HP and four steps. Okay. I'm... I... All right, I'm holding the key down. It's not following me very well. One second. Make sure I'm clicked in the window. Left click on a character to select it. Hold and drag the mouse button to draw a path. I'm dragging the mouse button. It isn't actually working very well. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, do I have to go, or is it horizontal? All right, he's got arrows on him. Do I have to go horizontal? I guess I have to go 
in a direction. It's not switching directions though. If I go south, I can't immediately switch to this way. Oh wait, no, here we go, diagonally. Okay, I'm following a path. No, I don't want to do that, I want to cancel that. Space to confirm, I want to cancel that. Right click cancel? Yeah, right click cancel, okay. Okay, so we don't go diagonally. We move, this guy moves in a straight line. Either direction, we can go, oh here, stars. Okay, so as I move each space, it's highlighting something. It's highlighting where I can go from that space. Uh, next to that. So if I click on this guy and hold the button down, it's showing us four stars here. So I'm gonna do this, 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 and I can't go north. Oh, enemies will move and attack on the same turn. Green squares represents its remaining HP. So each of these guys has one HP. But I can't, I can't attack it. All right, Samurai's path will end here. Buster cannot move here. Buster? Who's Buster? Can I end my attack on him? All right, space to, I'm going to space to confirm going through this guy. Boom, okay, okay, that works. I can, I can accept that. And, uh, wait a minute, can I move again already? Why is this guy moving again? And who's the other guy down there? I can't, oh, wait, oh, can I, can I select this guy? Oh yeah, we can select this guy. Maybe this is a test level and they're not doing anything. All right, here he goes. Buster can move four squares and deals two damage. All right, and this guy, Samurai can move five squares and deals one damage. You cannot finish a path on an enemy with more health than your attack power, unless, unless what? <laughs> All right, maybe there's something else we haven't learned yet. Okay, so we can, so you can't end your path. You have to go through them. But maybe there's this guy only. This guy can, perhaps? Maybe. Space to confirm. Boom. Okay, now it's their turn. Okay, so yeah, we can each move once, but how come this guy could move twice, it felt like? Anyway, we'll find out shortly. Boom. All right, nice graphics, nice uh, level transition, I think. Wait, what's going on? Okay, here we go. It was developing the next floor, and we've got a new type of enemy. Also, oh, use this tile to extend your path range. Ooh, we're playing like Scrabble here. Hmm, this is a cool take on planning a few moves ahead. Yeah, I like it. It's it's neat so far. You might be able to draw draw both paths and then confirm turn. Maybe. Oh, that that could be. Uh, we'll try that next. Yeah, we should figure that out. All right, there's a four four moves and two damage. Right, you can see there's steps. So the only thing that's not shown in their card up here is how much damage they can do. Um. I wonder about this. Can uh, finish your path on enemy with more health than your attack power, unless. Hmm. Anyway, we don't know about that yet. Okay, I don't know what this guy does. What does he do? Can I click on this guy? No. We don't know much about him other than that he has two health. Hmm. All we know is their remaining health HP there, two and one for each of these guys. All right, let's go. Um, this guy moves four, uh, but this guy could end on there. So let's see. Can I take? That guy out? Yeah, this guy can. So it's just the samurai who can't end on their space. And this guy would increase range. All right. Um, all right, we had one space left. He would finish there. So yeah, it looks like we can. We can execute everything at once. Oh, that's gonna be cool. I like this. All right. I don't know how far these guys move though. How far do they move? Like, um, that would be nice to know. The hover description shows the damage they do. I mean, it shows that for your your friends. It doesn't show that for the... Uh, yeah, I, I was referring to just... The reason I was mentioning that is these cards. I'm, I'm fr trying to learn what information the cards show versus information we have to get elsewhere. I mean, I want to know how much... What these guys do. They did one damage, but how much do they move? That's one thing I don't know yet. Because kind of, that'll actually decide how... Determine how we want to path through these guys. One, two, three, and take him out. One... Yeah, see, like, this guy can take him out. Anyway, we'll just use this as a learning experience anyway. And this guy can go all the way down here. And unfortunately... Wait a minute. No, he can't do that. Oh, canceling that one guy, though, cancels everybody. Then I have to redo that. It's kind of annoying. Although, there might be another way. You know, that didn't work. Hmm. I like that. Anyway, we could take both the guys in the bottom right out or take this guy out. I'm not really sure if there's an optimal idea here, but go through him and then end over here. 
click on a cancel to care that cancel that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. There we go. That's how we cancel one. I was using right click to cancel and that ends everything. And then we can continue this guy's move. Oh no, wait. If I click him again, oh yeah, click to cancel. Okay. All right. Whoa, wait. Is he facing a different direction there? That was interesting. Okay. This guy's got one step there. Oh, this canceled this guy too. Hmm. And wait a minute. Can I use those as well? Can he also use the pluses that the other guy's gonna use? Or he probably gonna step on him first. What happens in that case? That's actually a good question. What if, if he goes up here, can he use the same thing? Wait a minute, one second, sorry. I'm trying to figure out the commands here. If I, all right, that guy's got a command. Oh no, I took that out and then I click on this guy. Huh. I'm just gonna try this to see what happens. Both of them are gonna be using the same plus two. All right, it works. So if you travel two guys through the same plus two, I think they can uh, both use it just fine. Uh, which means you'd probably want to do it. Yeah, you have to do that simultaneously. Otherwise, or in the same turn, because otherwise it disappears afterwards. So right now, now we have the opportunity to use this. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough to get to our enemy there. Wait a minute, is that... Does that attack him or not? No, that's the end of his turn. Samurai cannot move here. Okay, so Samurai cannot move here is referring to, right, the fact that this guy already ends his turn there. Just warning, but yeah, overall pretty neat. I'm liking the uh, combination of uh, possibilities, tactical possibilities here. This is interesting. Okay, um, so I'm gonna cancel that one. Uh, sadly, we will not be able to get to that guy and kill him in the same turn. He didn't move very far though, did he? I can't actually undo his. Okay, he only moves one turn, one space uh, per turn, so that's why I wasn't bothering going over there to attack him. Un completely unnecessary overkill. Boom! <laughs> okay, wait a minute. All right, something new that's interesting is where your characters are positioned at the end determines what happens next time, uh, where you are. That actually does, can make a difference. It's being developed around you. Is this a roguelike or a roguish squad tactics game? Both does look fun. Um, yeah, this is definitely not a roguelike at all. Um, I'd say it's a, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a roguish um, squad based um, tactical puzzler though, but not broguelike. In fact, on the list today, we have a broguelike at the end of the, of the day, a magpie. Um, um, and I was going to get to what those are, or more description. It's a uh, broguelike is a very much more specific type of game than this. Um, okay, so we've got the, I wonder how, if these are the only two characters, or I'm guessing they are, or if we can get some different characters. Actually, we can look at the screenshots, uh, all the same. So it looks like there's two characters, it's always these two guys. It'd be interesting, obviously we could have some different characters, but maybe planned. The G is silent, is it, oh, is it bro? Is his, is his last name pronounced bro? I'm not sure actually, I've never heard it pronounced. I just know how it's spelled and I've seen it. I've never heard it uh, pronounced before, though. From, obviously, uh, the guy himself. Uh, I know he's given talks before and, other, and, other, and in various places, so I'm sure it's possible to reference how his last name is spelled. But bro-like sounds even better, perhaps. <laughs> it also, everybody confuses... We'll get, we'll get to the topic later, but yeah, everybody confuses um, roguelikes with like the game games like Brogue when it's not. It's completely different. It's different spelling. Oh, you haven't heard it before. That's how you. That's how you'd read it. I mean, mm, mm, it's it's really it's hard to tell. I, it could bro broke. I don't know. Uh, hard to tell. Anyway, um, what is it broke like? Just exactly. See, Numeron's confused too. It's unrelated to broke uh, at all. Um, it's it's uh, we'll get to it uh, later on. I'll I'll make sure we do. Uh, we have time. We'll have time today. I'm pretty sure. 
uh, and we'll talk about it then. Uh, I do want to cover it now though while we're doing a different game. But anyway, yeah, this is not a roguelike. And they're unrelated to rogue. That's the short of it. All right. Um, okay, so back, back to focusing on this game here. So we have a plus two and a plus three as well. We can extend even further. And what's this guy? Why? Oh, he's sitting on a plus two. That's why he's got blue under him. Each of these guys too. These seem to only move one space and I guess they probably hit harder. And we can probably attack more, more than one guy at a time. The samurai can only attack through enemies, which means, for example, he won't be able to grab these and then cut through all that, unfortunately. Because I guess he's going to whack into this big rock. But he, maybe he could go up and down through them. Anyway, we'll see what he can do. It's nice because we can plan it all ahead, right? He's still got four steps, so yeah. Not good, though, because he's going to end to the north. Oh, he can't. Uh, it says he's going to end here. Is he allowed to do that? Is it because he's moved many spaces or what? And notice we're missing one HP on this guy. So the HP he lost earlier, you know, we're not like healing or anything. We're on level three. Oh, okay. Red Zaxter has gone and checked a uh, name pronunciation guide for us and the G is unvoiced. Okay, so his name is actually pronounced a Michael Bro. Okay. Well, Bro. There we go. He can end there if he kills the enemy. Ah, okay. Thanks, Fertile Creek. All right, so a little tip there. He can end there. Apparently, it's letting us end there, so I guess that's the assumption, yeah, that it would... Otherwise, it wouldn't let us end there if he's not going to kill it. Uh, what was this here? Cannot finish with more health than your attack power. Oh, it was, all right, it's more than your attack power. That's what I was thinking of, about the cannot finish path on enemy with more health than your attack power. But this is the same. He can kill him, so that's not a problem. Okay, and then what's this other guy going to do? He's got four steps. Wait a minute. All right, and then this guy can actually reuse these as well. And that's going to give him... How many steps? He's got four. So he can go one, two, three, um, four. And then he's got five more steps. One, two, three. Or no. One, two, three, four. Hmm. Unfortunately, he can't get more than one of these guys. He can only get one of them. But these guys can't move more than one space, so I guess it'd be best to take him out. He's still got two steps after that, but honestly, I don't know what he's going to do with him anyway. Can he just stay there? I guess he can. Let's do this action. Boom, boom. Go, guys. Go. Oh, yeah. There we go. Nice. I like the little uh, blood spurts everywhere. That is a nice touch. This guy can go all the way there and end that guy. This guy in... Wait a minute. He's only got two steps? Wait, why does he have two steps? If you didn't use them all, you don't get them back? He normally has four steps. Right now he has two. Oh no, never mind. I had the other guy checked. <laughs> Forgot. I had to click on this guy before it shows his current steps. Wait a minute. No, that was interesting. Hmm. This guy still showed... He didn't update his number until I clicked on him. He still had the number left from last time. It seems like after the action, it should put that number back immediately. Ah, uh, yeah, Cat Plus Plus says the kept step counter is broken. Yeah, it, I mean, it fixed itself as soon as I clicked on him. It seems like it should have reset already. The samurai is shown at 10 at the start? Oh, really? All right, anyway, once you click on them... Oh, it was 10 from the previous? Yeah, okay, the step counter doesn't update until you click on them, so it probably should have updated at the end. They might have done that at the wrong time. All right, so if this guy attacks this guy... Wait, one, two, three... Oh, you can get both of them, then. Go, Buster. Boom. Okay, so now we're split up for the next map. I'm gonna get some new enemies soon, maybe. Took a little while to devote. All right, no, no new enemies yet. Okay, we've got a plus two. Whoa, what's this? This is a plus four, probably. Looks like it's a plus four, but I can't really tell because he's covered. <laughs> anyway, it's a new color and the number thing is different. So, oh, oh never mind. It says use this tile to extend your path range. So yeah, we know it's a, it's a number, and I'm assuming it's going to be a four in that case. All right. So the idea, and I wonder how developed. I mean, how um. Uh, how controlled the proc gen is for this. US and UK pronounce the name differently even though the G is silent in both. Oh, well, yeah, that's not that's not surprising. US is more like brow. UK is more like bro. Oh, so I see. So the US would be Michael Brow. Huh. Hmm. Also, you, you might want to even check multiple guides because even like in the U.S., there's not necessarily uh, not necessarily consistent considering it's a name. But normally with names, you know, you go with um, you go with the pronunciation that the person themselves uses, right? So like, with, with, if I was going to try and find out 
exactly how to pronounce that, I would go to one of the talks that uh, he's given before um, and see how they introduce him and uh, and uh, check those kinds of things. I've done that in the past when I was going to talk specifically about developers, um, roguelike developers, uh, for one one purpose or another on certain streams. Uh, I'd go look up how the developer themselves pronounces it. So, yeah. Might be plus one. Oh, that? Yeah, well, I doubt it. <laughs> I mean, it's red, right? The number looks... It looks like the top right of a... F well, that number is hard to... Could it be a five? I don't know. It would skip four then in that case. We've gotten two and three. Anyway, I can't see. We'll figure it out. I guess we could see by... You can actually test like this here. Two. Oh, look. <laughs> we have a problem with the UI on the left side of the screen. We've got some overlap there. Hey, wait, uh, nothing? No, wait a minute. It won't even let me move after that. What does that do? This is some kind of special cell? What is this? It says it extended range, but he can't move beyond that cell. Why not? I'm really wondering what this is now. Hmm. Zero? It stops you? Maybe. Maybe it's a zero. It's supposed to block you there. And that's why it's red. Red is bad. Yeah, maybe. Minus one. Yeah, it doesn't look like a... a Four. That's why I was wondering, is it a, could it have been a five? But no, there's something else on there. Anyway, whatever. We'll just figure out what it is. We Either way, we're not going to step on it because it stops us. And we'll figure out what it is shortly. All right, so this guy has four steps. One, two, three, four. Also, he can use both of these. One, one, what can he? One, one, two, um, four again. One, two, three, four. And barely makes it back, unfortunately. Doesn't make it back to this. He could have kept killing stuff otherwise. Uh, he can kill both of these. That might be the best option. And our samurai, unfortunately, actually our samurai can cut through here easily. The problem is this guy kills that. Maybe we'll just have this guy go west and take that out. One, two, three, four. Unfortunately, he can't get around this. I'd like to, him to be able to use that next turn. Top right red is a stop sign shape. Oh. Uh, if you are you referring to this thing up here, because this is just a chroma toggle. It's even changed. Look at the, it even changes shape when we make that button bigger. They're all changing shape. Don't know how they're handling that the shape things, but um, okay. So anyway, we're gonna cut through. We could just cut through those and have him kill that, and then have some time left afterwards. Oops, come back here. Whoops, because this guy can't kill anyone, so he can move further. We really need the other guy to take him out, though. Um, so anyway, this guy can do that and then come back this way. Whoops. I didn't want him to go that far back this way. This way is good enough. All right. Boom, samurai. All right, can we finally see what that is? No, oh, it looks like a minus one. It is. Okay, it's a minus one now, we can tell. It's minus one, that's what it is. Uh, shoot. These guys being next to each other is kind of annoying, actually. Uh, what do you do when they're next to each other? I, can, can I draw them apart? Like, by putting this guy intentionally over here to see if he comes over? Because if this guy moves forward to kill him, he can do that, but he can't kill that one as well. Wait, can you actually, with three moves, could he do it? I don't think so, but... Oh, the other guy's standing on a minus one. No, it'll still work. Okay, never mind. He's just going to kill both of them. And this guy's going to sit here. Now we have an option for this guy here. Can, uh, oh, also, the, he's got an extra move if we want to. This guy here could move to another location, just to get ready. Wait, what? No. Oh. This guy canceled. This guy canceled now. Wait, why is this guy canceling? Why does it keep canceling this guy? It won't let this action take place. Both of them have actions pending. Do you have to use all of their steps? I didn't... I don't think you do. They won't let me take this action. Alright, you're gonna go all the way there and end. You're gonna come over here. All the way there. You have one step left. Oh, he still has a step left. Sure, okay. Now it worked. Huh, that's weird. 
Not sure why. Earlier, I'm pretty, I left someone with extra actions, but it wouldn't let me do that this time. Anyway. Unsure. Uh, it worked before. Oh. This is, these guys are more problematic. <laughs> now comes the real challenge. Also, I need to know how far they move and what they can do. It's hard to know that immediately, but let's, uh, let's see. Let's go out and, I guess we can, yeah, basically try to take out some other guys first. Yeah, I assume they all move one, too. Just making sure. Also, do they, I guess they probably also all do one damage. You know, tactically speaking, that would make the most sense. If basically all enemies do one damage and they all move one space. But, I'm sure. Okay. Where'd my cursor go? It flew away. <laughs> It won't let me path through this guy. Hmm. It will not let me path down. I have to go west. The controls are kind of a little hard, if only because these cells are very large and you your cursor movement, you know, it's depends on as soon as your cursor goes in the next cell, it moves over, you know, like that kind of uh, grid based movement on a mouse can be really can be a little challenging when it's larger. But also, I don't know, the controls overall are uh, a little hard with the cursor down. Still having trouble with that. Okay, so we kind of want to use these plus threes to be able to run through everybody we can. Uh, and we want both of our guys to use them at the same time. I don't know how many guys are going to be able to get with this, but uh, let's see. If he goes one, two, three, you can get to that one and go this one first. Let's just see how far we can get. Because it's nice that you can plan everything in advance. All right, he's got four steps, which is not enough <laughs> to get everybody. But this could be enough, actually. No, wait, he's got two steps left. And then he goes north and kills that guy as well. Oh, yeah. All right, now part of the problem is I don't know where those are those movements, but this guy can technically use them. Yeah, okay, never mind. I forgot. He can do that. Oh, but he can't start going straight into somebody? Oh, wait, he can. He's letting me do it now. He didn't let me do that earlier. Hmm. Alright, so this should kill everybody uh, on the uh, east side. Actually, wait, did he get the other guy too? Yeah, he got that guy. Alright. Let me cancel this guy really quick. This guy, his route is going this way, this way, and I ended on that guy, right? I can't actually tell what his route is uh, over there. I can only see these parts. Uh, I'm just trying to remember exactly what he did. Because I'm talking about this. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait, he still has three steps left? Even after that? Dang. Okay, that's a lot of steps. This guy doesn't need to worry about killing that one. There we go. There we go. It won't let me execute. Why doesn't it let me execute? Sometimes it lets you execute when people have steps left, sometimes it doesn't. All right, I have to use everyone's steps apparently. Got four steps left after this. You can't step back into a previous location either. Huh. This is getting kind of annoying. If only because it seemed inconsistent, but maybe I just didn't notice before. Okay, so like right now, this one guy's got zero steps and one guy has three. Can we cancel or not? I don't know. I'm going to come bring, bring him down to at least one because I want him here. And now I'm going to try to execute. Okay, now it's working. 
Wait, what was the other guy doing? Is this above? <laughs> he's dancing and making attacking sounds, but he's not moving. Uh, oh. There's a bug. See? He, uh, it's because I tried to move him over someone who was right next to him. Like I said earlier, the game seems to not want to allow you to do that, and it prevented me from doing it earlier, but this time it allowed me to, and it, it's broken. All right, so we don't want to do that. It breaks the game. Okay, broke the game. He's making movement sounds without moving. He's just dancing. He looks like he's a guy playing a flute. <laughs> Samurai just pulled out his flute and said, I'm done. Okay, gonna have to restart. The Nance victory. <laughs> like, we won this. We totally got it. Okay, so don't make your guy go straight through the guy that you're, who's next to you. Well, that kind of sucks, because that's... Honestly, that seems really important. This counts as a win in my book. Yeah, well, we won this map. We were totally going to win this. This guy was going to die, and then the next turn, this guy was going to move here, and we're going to kill him in the next turn. Presumably. Well, actually, it, this, if this guy was headed there, we might have to wait one more turn. But either way, we're going to win that. We're in level 5. I'm going to get all the way back here to level 5 again. Because I, I do want to see what, what's further ahead. And now we've got a better grasp of mechanics. And also, know what we cannot uh, do. One of the things we can't do. Alright, so I'm going to have to reload the page. Uh, reload the page. It won't let me reload the page. It won't let me do anything in here. Wow. Okay, no, there it goes. Finally. <laughs> Loading. But, yeah, I'm going to try it a little bit more here. Uh, try one more run here. So, same two guys. Now we've got the mechanics down. Oh, my God. Let's turn that off. Chroma off. Yes. We cannot leave that enabled. No, it, it reset itself. Goodbye. All right. Now. Uh, hmm. And anyway, we could also spend this time, I guess, to learn a little bit more about, like, like this guy has one step left. We should be able to still do it. All right. Yeah. This will also go faster since we learned the mechanics and have to do less talking about the mechanics. Or guessing. Also, look at that. We had two steps left and four steps left, and it worked fine. It's interesting how long it takes for it to, to generate the uh, floors. Boom, boom, oh yeah. Yeah, it's still showing nine steps and six steps and we're waiting for the generation and the generation is here. One guy, yeah. One guy execute. Oh, the guy didn't even have to move. Hmm. I'm not gonna be able to kill the guy, other guy down here anyway. That's problematic. This guy is stronger. As long as he can get on the right number of things, it's pretty easy for him to kill a lot of stuff. He can't move back on his own path, though. I'm not sure where this is going to end. What would this do then? I tried to move him, loop him around to back on his own path, and it would—it stopped over there, I guess. Hmm. But what if I executed it? What would happen then? Ah, shoot. But I have to move east in order to pick this up. Wait, shoot, it stopped. See, sometimes it's not getting my cursor either. I've got it held and moving, but it might be some direction I'm moving in that's not allowing it to hold. So he can't, can he, he can't pass through his own path. All right. That makes sense. Unfortunately, that won't work because I could easily have gone on north and taken that guy out too. Instead, I guess we can go south. You uh, can only take one step further there though. Anyway, it should be safe for him to just stand here then. No one gets adjacent to you. And this guy down here, just head further south. Wait. It won't let me execute again. Why does it sometimes let you execute and sometimes not let you execute? I, I do not get that yet. <laughs> I'm feeling like it's just a bug, but you know, or it's just something I haven't figured out yet. 
Like here, each guy has one step left. I'd be happy to let them stay where they are. They will not stop. They will not go, I mean, whoops. Unknown, that's too bad. Um, hmm. Oops, making it a little harder. Samurai is too cool to move. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's the answer. All right, we're not gonna make him go through this guy because that'll crash. Um, probably a bug and the intentions for all steps to be used. Perhaps, yeah. Uh, I feel like all, forcing the player to use all the steps would be a good move in a game like this. Um, it adds more challenge. Because uh, if you can choose how many steps you're moving, it makes it uh, a little easy. A lot easier, in fact. Uh, forcing you uh, limits your options a bit more. Uh, in interesting ways, I think. Uh, so I well, should probably play on that assumption, I guess, that you're supposed to use everything. Hmm. And we will play with that assumption in place. Yep, there it already goes. So yeah, it might be a bug that's letting us do that. Damn, can't get there. Can't get all the way there without using up the other plus two, unfortunately. Mm, there's no real turn counter though, so I don't think it matters. Wait a minute, this guy didn't move? What? Didn't it tell him to move? Oh, he did get canceled. <laughs> Whatever, it's not gonna matter in the end. Oops. He got canceled when I clicked on the other guy or something. Whoops, okay, I moved over there. You shouldn't rather taking that guy out. This guy can take that guy out. Uh, pretty much relying on this dude to do most of the work. Um, oops. Nope, not quite enough. Doesn't really matter if we waste the time. But yeah, again, we're working on the assumption that we want to just let everyone move up to their maximum. It didn't, you see, like, right there, I tried to drag this guy for the command. It's, I think the game is a little slow as part of the issue. As a number of uh, web-based games tend to be. Not sure what this is written in, but, um, yeah, a little slow on the reactions. You can also see from the animations, they're getting actually slower over time. So, yeah, there's, it, the, the, the the game is not being as responsive. The higher we get in the levels, the very first level, after having played the fifth level last time and then going back to the first, everything was super responsive um, in terms of clicking and moving. Right now, I actually have to wait a second for it to respond. When I click on someone, I can't immediately drag. I have to wait a moment. And you can see the rain has slowed down and the entire thing's getting slower. <laughs> oh, maybe it just checks wrong and allows uh, only one to be zero. Yeah, for the movement thing, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I have to move a lot more deliberately uh, as the game is getting slower. It's kind of unfortunate. So anyway, let's get some performance issues here. Uh, so I think I would only have one step left. So yeah, well, anyway, we're back to level five. And uh, yeah, forcing the player to use all their moves does make it a little harder. Not Even though we figured out how it's probably possible to get around that. Honestly, it doesn't wouldn't hurt to let them probably get a little closer here before even attacking. And also, this is the same level five again, but there's it doesn't have the same. It has the same number of colored squares, but they don't have the same values. Last time we had a plus two, plus two, plus three, and a minus one. This time it is a three plus twos. So it's not consistent in that regard. I'm not saying that's bad or anything. I'm just making an observation for. Strategic purposes. Okay, so five cells. We kind of want to let these guys get closer purely because our 
we're made a lot more powerful or more effective by being able to use these things. And we can't use them effectively until they get closer, otherwise we're just wasting moves. <laughs> Chromium hard at work trying to invade all the RAM, playing its own strategy game of sorts. Well, to be honest, I'm using Firefox, so... Um, not Chromium. That could be part of a problem, you know? A lot of devs don't really optimize for that, and I've even noticed more than one game this year saying, you know, recommends Chrome over other things. <laughs> hey, Tomas! I just entered and I can't believe what I'm seeing. Graphics. Why not? We were playing a lot of games with graphics. Very believable. Graphics all over the place. All right, so basically I'm just gonna wait this to waste this turn and let them approach. There's no wait command, but you can just do circles, which is, I guess, kind of annoying, but it does sort of force you to reposition a little because you can't stay on the same path. All right, so our powerful guys here, I don't really care about the other guy so much. Go through that guy. Uh, shoot, see if I go here, they can attack me then. Hmm, not quite close enough yet. Uh, that's making this a little harder. Our samurai could clearly get through all this, um, but then he's going to be stuck on the other side and also use up all of our pluses. Hmm. Maybe we should wait one more turn. Yeah, get in closer. Just take some of these guys out. Move in closer. Move in as close as possible and hope we're not going to mess ourselves up here. So that no one can attack us this next turn. Let's see if we screw ourselves over by doing this. Really, with a game like this, you could probably also... This game feels, in a way, kind of like Hoplite. And that you can probably fairly accurately predict where enemies are going to move. And so you can plan a few turns ahead. Uh, unfortunately, the game is getting slower and slower. But um, you can plan a few turns ahead. And, uh, yeah, optimal play. It makes it a lot easier uh, when you know the enemy's behavior and what you'll be able to do in those turns as well. So we could really be doing that for optimal uh, play and, and do much better, I think, in the outcome. But I don't want to spend quite that long uh, planning out every turn. All right, so now we've got our strongest guy here ready to annihilate these guys right here. And then this guy is going to help out by... He's got five steps. He's going to go... He's going to step through everyone. We're going to one, two... Oh, wait. Oh, there's one there, too. Shoot. I didn't realize there was another two there. I forgot about that. Anyway, there's plenty of steps. We've got a lot of steps. Okay. That should work. Unless I forgot something. I might have forgotten something. What? Wait, all right. Oh, come on. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> oh, wait, did I just move through my guy again? Better not if I think I might have just moved through my guy again. We were standing right here, weren't we? God damn it, I did the same thing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to check that again real quick, but yeah. All right, well, um, cool game. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the beginning really quick and check uh, if that happens on the first level as well. <laughs> level five is the end. We can only dance from here on out. <laughs> Uh, some attacks having knockback would add a couple layers of strategy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's lots of interesting ways you could expand this with, uh, you know, more, obviously more different kinds of things on the ground, which honestly I think we might see more of. Although, I don't know, so far we've only seen pluses. Like, maybe there could be a plus on the ground that adds damage to. Uh, and bigger, even bigger enemies, plus damages on the ground. There might even be some of these things, we just haven't gotten to them yet. We can also look at the screenshots and see, I guess. But yeah, this, mm, I think I just screwed that up. That was my fault, probably. I just went right... I think there was a guy right there, and I forgot. We can't move through our adjacent guy. It crashes the game. Uh, all right. Forgot about that. Anyway, there's clearly several bugs in the game which are causing issues. It's too bad. Um, seems like the kind of game they're going to work on more, though. Now it's going to restart, and everything's going to get nice and fast again. Anyway, I'm restarting to test that, but I don't think I'm going to play through all that again. Hmm, or it's just going to get stuck on the loading screen this time. Oh, nope, there it is. Just took forever to load. Performance issues. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right, where's my other guy? Here he is. 
I actually just want to get him over here and test that out. Man, I do want to see more though. I kind of want to play this again. Maybe we could play it faster. Move this guy here. Oh, that's right. I didn't move, use up all my turns. But no, wait a minute. Let's reject that. This guy. Oh wait, also I check the order. Does that matter? What if the guy who moves first can move through his friend? This guy's moving second. I'm gonna make him go this way. And so this guy here is gonna try to go through his friend to the north, and then the other guy is gonna go do that. <laughs> Uh, that counts as a double win. We got a win streak here. We got them both dancing on floor one. <laughs> Dance off. <laughs> okay, so what happened here was the first guy got blocked by that guy and went into his dance session. And so he couldn't start his move. But interestingly, it did skip to the second character who started his move. And then because I sent him south, he got stuck on this guy. Um, That's funny. <laughs> all right well i'll do whatever chat wants to do if you want to do we want to go back and i'll make an even more concerted effort to try to not do that by level five getting us stuck on each other we could have taken that do you want to just fortnite <laughs> anyway do we want to move on to the next game or do we want to play this once more no uh, we can do either one uh can check out some screenshots uh look for other content here what is look, see there's another guy here i think Oh, that might be our... F that's this guy. It's the same colors as this guy. I guess that's what he looks like when he's slashing around. I like the screenshots of slashing. Let's see, is there any other enemies they're showing us in here? Or any other mechanics that we can see? Nothing so far. Uh, this level has got some chunk out of it. There's the same guy there. Don't see anything. All these screen screenshots are from level 1, 2, and 3. Hmm. Some of them are different sizes, too. <laughs> anyway, so chat is interested. We can try more. I don't think... It doesn't seem like... I mean, based on the screenshots, that's one way to know whether or not we might be up for more content. I guess not. We might have seen most of what there is to see with this one. But, yeah. We've got a dance-off going here. Yeah. Next, if you have to pick. Sure, I'm just... Anyone in the chat who wants to chime in, I'm open for whatever, so... I think we've seen most of it too, and played the first play through the beginning, and found a uh, consistent bug. <laughs> Sorry about screwing that one up that time. We, we might have been able to win otherwise. I don't know what the win uh, condition or is, or how far it goes, but yeah, gameplay-wise, I think we pretty much covered this one. So I'm going to cut out Dungeon Drawler now, and we're, the next game we're going to be moving on to is... Crave Space by lag.com. I was going to play this one on the first day and we ran out of time. Um, and I know the dev uh, lag.com is on uh, the roguelike dev uh, discord and uh, I think also the subreddit, but at least definitely see him a lot on the discord. And I know he was hoping or he was looking forward to me playing it and then I didn't end up playing because I ran out of time, but I did say I was going to play it. So I'm definitely playing it. We're going to be playing this next ASCII game, shooty game. So next here we go. We're going to go in the next one. I'm going to take uh, just a minute break here, and, uh, and then we're going to move on to this. Oh, wait. I need to actually switch my view here first. All right. We'll be back in just a moment.
All right. I'm back. And uh, moving on, we're going to be playing Crave Space, a roguelike made uh, for 70 RL 2023. Search space for your rivals and eliminate them. That's a pretty simple introduction here. All right, we're moving with uh, arrow keys, numpad, VI keys. Here it is again. People doing all the movement options. It's, um, one is primary weapon fires up. Second, two is secondary weapon, short range damaging beam. Space is a smart bomb. Drop from enemies, hopefully. So I'm assuming that means the enemies aren't doing, I guess it's an item drop and you, you don't start with any bombs and you're trying to get, you. the enemies might drop them and you can grab them. I guess that's what that means. Um, hover over things with mouse to see what they are. Okay, so this is an ASCII game where we do actually have a little bit of mouse interaction. It's nice to have that. I mean, if you don't have a look via keyboard, it's actually a little harder to implement usually. Um, and then it's nice to have be able to mouse over to get more information, you know, learn the mechanics. Uh, okay, um, let's let's check it out. Let me see my how we're gonna play this full screen. This one and use the standard browser capture. I've got standard browser capture on. Full screening. Run the game. Boom! Exploding ASCII particles. You gotta love ASCII particles. Oh yeah, ASCII, yeah, that's right. <clears throat> We're getting back to our natural state here. All right, so Crave Space. Create your pilot. We have six points to create a pilot. Body, mind, spirit, talent. I'm mousing over these though. It's not telling me what these do. I wonder what they do. <laughs> Body, mind, spirit, and talent. Hmm. Hmm, I could stare at this ASCII all day. Hmm. Going to an ASCII trance. <laughs> uh... I don't know how many colors this game uses. It seems to always be doing full brightness, though, probably, considering the text in the background. But normally with a background like this, you might want to tone that down or have them be half brightness or whatever, just so you've got, like, a foreground and a background going. But anyway, this might be just pure ASCII style, in which case you don't have that option, perhaps. Mind and spirit. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what these mean. Um, we can allocate points. What have I put? Oh, wait, i got to click on the focus here. Wait. It's not actually responding. Oh, there it goes. It's finally starting to respond. B, B, B. Oh, we can go up to body four. It doesn't allow us to put more than three points into something, perhaps. Yeah. Wait. All right. I, I just did that to see what would happen. It won't it won't let me undo points though. So I can't like undo points. Shift M. Shift M doesn't undo points. All right. I can't undo points, so I'm committed. We are of body and mind. Spirit, who cares about that? Talent, we have none. We haven't even learned how to play. So create your pilot. Zero points. Okay. Oh yeah, we're also jamming. And we have um, body I thought was health, but not sure I figured out the rest. Uh, okay, so our current HP is 36, shields are 10, stats 4411, we can test it out next time. Ace of clubs, all right, that's who we are here. Look at that, ace of clubs. <laughs> we're not just any club, we're the ace. We have a main gun, two out of two, sword, one one, whatever that is, explosion six. Maybe that has to do with our bomb which we don't have. We have a primary weapon, second, primary is main gun, 2-2. Two, two. All right, so they have this listed here. Secondary weapon is a sword. <laughs> oh, we were, Tomasi is saying we're an atheist bodybuilder scientist with as much talent as an ant. All right, sure. <laughs> okay, so we've got, um, okay, oh, check it out. Okay, we can, so we can mouse over these guys to get info. Cruzy wing. 10 HP, five shields, um, main, three main guns, and a salvo. E executor, uh, or executor. Uh, we got two out of two HP, main gun, a veto. Veto, one out of one, explosion four. Axel, and uh, okay, what's this guy? He's got a color to him. Axel, what is he? Two shots. Axel, okay, so colored guys. He's got HP 70. Colored guys have more. They're kind of like, uh, yeah, just uh, elite types. Yeah, they have the exact same loadout. They just have double shots and more HP. And so this is a, a, a shooter looking game. We can move we have arrows here left, right. Um, moving left and right. And uh, one is our primary weapon. So I'm going to fire my primary weapon. There it goes. Yeah, I like the jams too. It's good. No sound effects from firing, which is, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't need a lot of pews necessarily, but the music background is good. So we're firing, this is like playing some kind of Galaga game here. Ooh, we took that out, what is that? A smart bomb? Well, we got a smart bomb right away. 
Can I move up? I can move up. I want there's aerial arrows left and right, but we can also move up. Um, I wonder what the left and right arrows are for, or uh, maybe oh, you know, maybe the, they're not really arrows pointing to something. They're maybe to represent the side of our ship, and we don't want that piece to get hit either. Because these guys like have a, this guy has multiple pieces to his ship. Our ship might be three pieces wide. Um, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, um, it's interesting that this game has you know extra info through mouse over and everything. But it oh there it is. Look at that. We can learn about our own bullets too. <laughs> but I agree. You know you don't really want to be too cryptic uh, about a game's um, uh, stats and what they mean. There's no, you don't really want the player to have to learn about what those are. I wonder what they affect. You have to really pay a lot of attention then. Velocity 2. So our bullet here has a velocity of 2 and it's headed straight up. Uh, so we, I guess the velocity of 2 that you can see the space is going to occupy just to the north of it in the next turn. This here is Smart Bomb. It's, it's actually moving south towards us, so we kind of want to get up there and grab that. A grid would be nice. I don't know, that's a... That's maybe a contentious point in a game like this, um, especially if uh, they might be doing... This isn't full brightness. I was going to say a super faint grid might might be something worth looking into, but mm, maybe an, uh, probably an optional grid uh, in the end. But we'll see how it works out, though. This guy's a little slower. Okay, I do want this smart bomb, though. That sounds good. Fingers back on the buttons here. I'm gonna try to get up here. We can move forward as well. Can I go grab that bomb? Boom. Oh, this guy, they can kill each other, apparently. Explosion, intensity four. I like this. The explosion looks nice. Very cool, and we can see their bullets coming here. Bullet, damage one. Not too bad. What's this, a missile chasing you? Uh oh, chasing you. Like, we're being chased by a missile. A smoke puff lasts two. That looks like a missile, though. Oh, the missile there. Oh, it's, it's showing us everything that's in the space there. It happens to also have a smoke puff, whatever that really is going to do for us. Explosion 8. All right, so we don't want to get hit by these missiles. They're chasing us, though. And chasing you 1, chasing you 4. Does that mean I can run and they'll disappear and run out of fuel or something? Did I... Wait, where'd that smart bomb go to? Wasn't there a smart bomb? It's gone now? I was going up here to get the smart bomb, but... Uh... Also, what's this cleave? All right, if we fire, it, we can't move. You can only move or fire. So that's an interesting thing. Um, so we're basically, we're playing a turn-based uh, shmup here, which I think is really cool. In fact, I got really inspired um, by a turn-based shmup I saw about like 10 years ago and about maybe about five years ago or so. I actually spent some uh, several days working on my own we're trying to get the fundamental architecture together for one. Uh, a turn-based ASCII shmup, because um, uh, I saw one that was done really well a long time ago, and uh, it was pretty cool. I didn't get further than a couple days on that project, uh, three days or so. But yes, I am a fan. All right, we're gonna try to get her away from these, I guess. Wait, one damage, chasing you one. Wait, the countdown on the other one? All right, so this one's not chasing us anymore. And this one's not chasing us either. This one is chasing us, so I guess it's gonna... Okay, and you can see its velocity is diagonal-ish. So is the other one. So once they lose you, they keep going in the same direction eventually. So I'm gonna. I'm just trying to learn here what the hell these act. Okay, its velocity is kind of headed. It's got the same kind of velocity. We can see next turn is gonna be one, one space to the left. This one's headed down this way, but they're not chasing us anymore. All right, now what about this guy? Is he gonna fire missiles again? Okay, he's reloading his salvo. He's got two turns and he's gonna fire more missiles at us. Oh God. Yeah, I like the explosions going on for multiple turns, not instantaneous. It's neat. All right, so this guy's gonna fire a salvo in two more turns. This is gonna get complicated. Oh, boom. Wait, what are these doing? Are they chasing me again? No, just coming down here. Okay, ooh. These are, okay. He just fired off several missiles now, and they've got, one of them has seven turns of chasing us. A, a veto. I like that name, it's a cool name. I'm curious what it is. It's a kind of missile that chases you, it's called a veto. <laughs> Fond memories of coding something like a turn-based bullet hell and CI calculator during math class. Yes, yes, I can totally relate. 
Alright, so we gotta kinda take this guy out. He's like mini boss dude here. We need to um, try to start shooting. They, these are supposedly chasing us, but they're not coming towards us anymore. I wonder why. I don't get that. Oh yeah, time to open fire. Right, our bullets do seven damage, was it? Yeah. Alright, and we can kind of look at this. Hmm. Those missiles didn't actually chase us. They went off to the west instead. I wonder why. Hey, I'm pressing one. It's not doing anything. Why? Oh, we're reloading. Oh, our main gun. Two out of two. Ah, I can only fire two shots, then I have to reload. I also have a sword. Whoa, what is this thing doing? Is this coming towards us? No. I need to stay away from that. All right, so yeah, we fire two shots, then it reloads. I'm still reloading. So I use the opportunity to move. Fire, move. It doesn't reload until you're out, though. His missiles are going insane and off in the wrong direction. <laughs> nice. Also, I have another weapon. Sword. What do I use? Uh, okay. That's our sword. And it takes 20 turns to reload. Wow. I wonder if uh, those are related to our other stats. Like, uh, maybe. We have a lot of hit points. I don't know what these do, but yeah. And we didn't have any talent. Maybe talent makes you reload faster. Oh, look. Okay. Stab. Six damage. We can do six damage to the side of us very quickly with our, our sword. Okay. Main gun. Uh, if there's velocity, then even if tracking the missile won't be able to turn, maybe. Um, I guess. That's true. I mean, I assumed... Well, I don't know. I don't know what the missile's turning capabilities are. <laughs> oh yeah, we got him that time. Oh, he dropped something. What did he drop? Explosion. Junk. That's junk. And this here is a smart bomb. Can we get a smart bomb or is it gonna blow up? <laughs> Bullets are faster than that, so I'm gonna let them pass. Yes. Wait a minute. Hey, look at this. I got cleave and salvo. What are these? Why, what are these things? It doesn't actually list what these are, though. Space bar. Probably have to figure that out, I guess. Anyway, okay. We're gonna we get another boss type guy over here, I guess. Oh, he's already gotten really damaged from his friends, though. I like that there's friendly fire. And he's down. I like the purple explosion, too. Those are smart bomb abilities, and so there's more than one? I don't know. Okay, we got some new enemies coming in. New wave. Baying Hound is nothing. Gout o Flame Bellow. Oh man. This guy gonna come over here and flame flamer us? That's funny. And a Baying Hound. Alright, another one. Two, two of those. I'm gonna get two of each of these guys. Shield 20. Whoa. Alright, I don't. We're gonna have to test our abilities, I guess, soon, too. Oh no. Here it comes. Uh oh, what is this thing? Outcry, six damage, and it seems to be these things are just throwing out. Okay, outcry throws these things out in different directions. They're gonna kill each other, aren't they? Uh, <laughs> okay, it annihilated his friend. Ooh, is that a pilot? No. Recharge? Recharge. Recharge what? Also, here's a flamer thing. Bellow, 20 damage, chasing us 18. Oh, shoot. That is a... I thought they were going to shoot some kind of uh, close-up flamer thing, but no. Instant reload, I guess. It... Oh, I picked one up earlier? Mm. Anyway, there's a smart bomb there. I should probably use a smart bomb. It was a space bar, wasn't it? Okay, I just fired off a... The word cleave disappeared from there. Your bullet... No, what happened? I'm not sure what happened. Can you deflect it with the sword? I don't know. Oh yeah, I should also worry about that thing. It's coming for us. All right. I guess this is the problem when things overlap. We can't quite see. Like we can't see this bellow here, which is chasing us. Twenty damage. That's a lot. <laughs> also, I should probably pay attention to this one, which is also chasing us. This one here. Hmm. Okay, he died. Bang Hound is gonna die soon. I'm worried about this thing.
I can't... Can I move diagonally at all? Oh, wait. I can. Oh, shoot. I've been using arrows and moving uh, only cardinally. I can move diagonally, too. That'll help. Okay, we can we can work around that. And what are these things? Junk? No, that is that's a zero. What is zero? Junk and a zero. And unfortunately, I guess we're going to lose a smart bomb because I can't get back there fast enough. Can I grab junk? Well, it disappeared. I don't think it gave us anything. Maybe it would repair you? Unknown. Unknown. Oh, this thing's turned around eventually. I'm not quite sure how these behave. The chasing you behavior. Should go try to take this guy with our sword. Hey, dude. Come here. Yeah, I can only shoot up, so I'm going to chase you with a sword. Hmm. Turn-based shmupping. I love it. There's been a, a couple of turn-based shmups done as 7 DRLs before, too. And uh, they're cool. One of my favorites before. Uh, did a really good job of it. Uh, it. It was just called a game where you dodge projectiles. And it was fun. Alright, so I need to check this thing's velocity. It should go around us. Boom! I whacked him with our sword. <laughs> and he dropped, I guess, what is that, junk? No, yes, junk, okay. Can't grab that. Any idea how our form mind has helped us form so far? No, I think the only way to figure out the stats will be to play multiple runs with multiple pilots. Um, different With different stats and compare. Alright, you got a halo here. Uh, caustic, and acid splash. I like how there's a lot of different abilities and guys. Um, defiant shuttle launch. Huh. These things launch shuttles. And uh, caustic and a demigod. Demand on homage. Okay. Um, okay. Demigod. I like that. What's his ability do? <laughs> Time to fire at him. Reloading. Boom. Oh, I see shuttles coming. What are these things? A shuttle? A runabout. Main gun. Okay, so these guys launch little shuttles that each uh, will attack you as well. This guy over here, there's an acid splash that are just flying around. They do a fair amount of damage, apparently, but just flying around. More worried about things that can directly target me. Chase us down. Demigod as shields are down. Six. I should probably watch what happens to their shields. Can I wait? I can wait. Okay. His shield is still six. Shoot, this, this acid is coming straight for us over here now. Alright, we should be able to move out of the way, though. So one of the differences between this game and the, one of the, other, and the, the game I was referring to a second ago, um, a, uh, another shmup, which was less... It wasn't... That one you traveled in, uh, in any direction, though, and uh, explored space, rather than this is kind of like a wave shooter, top-down, um, meaning top-to-bottom. The other one was, uh, it actually showed you on the maps. Like, see, we can see this here. We can, If you hover over everything, it's showing you their velocity. That one actually showed you the direction of everything automatically by default using, like, uh, darker colors. So it was easier for you to see at a glance. You don't have to hover over everything. You can easily see at a glance where everything's going, which is much faster and safer, uh, clearly just to be able to do that because optimally you're going to want to see where everything's going if you're not 100% sure and that allows you to really plan your routes much faster uh, playing that was pretty smooth uh, you only have to slow down occasionally when things got really complex but yeah body is probably HP <laughs> HP shield ammo and reload speed maybe um, ammo hmm ammo could be increased maybe spirit I don't know I, I, we can try next time and see what the differences are Oh shoot, what is this thing? That's it's chasing pulsar? Anyway, its velocity is not headed this way. What is Oh pulsar. Whoa, what? The, oh, you know what? I just pressed spacebar. That's I just fired a missile. I just fired these two missiles. Great. <laughs> I accidentally pressed spacebar. I didn't mean to do that. I just that fired off our missiles. I meant to actually fire a gun. We fired a missile. There goes our missiles, and goodbye. Oh yeah, we took that out at least. Nice. Oh, whoa, okay, this guy's letting out what now? Oh, more pulsar? He's letting out pulsar things. Uh, oh, I guess that's his secondary ability, which he does every 20 turns. Alright. Stinger. 
And the direction on this bullet's coming straight south. Yeah, see, like, this bullet's... Hmm. Problematic. Alright, now what's this? Smite. It's coming sort of towards us. Whoa! Alright, we took a lot of damage from that. Shields down. I guess we'll find out what happens to our shields when they're down too. Okay, they're coming back. Yeah, I guess shield... Shield recovery is gonna be one of the abilities. Don't know which one, but... Oh no. Oh, look at these little freaks. <laughs> Need to get close and just whack this guy. Ready to die. Boom. Alright, wait, what? Did I just fire that diagonally? <laughs> uh, well, that sucks. I have to wait 20 turns to do that again. I'm trying to get next to this guy so I can do that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I like it when turn-based games can allow you to pay, play at a quick pace, too. And I think a lot of Roguelike fans enjoy that. That's part of why animate people don't like animations. Because once you get into that flow, um, it can f feel really exciting, but it doesn't have to be real-time. You can, you know, stop doing that any time. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Uh, this one makes that a little harder because you can't quite see... Uh, where everything's headed. I feel like you could play this game very quickly, though, once you're more aware of what everything does um, and and can sort of watch a larger area of the screen at once. You can probably play this pretty fast. Now we're stuck behind the guy. <laughs> we could wait for them to kill each other. <laughs> That's a tactic, although if we do that from above them, we don't get possible drops, which is would be unfortunate. We want to... Oh, all right. He's firing a smite. Two damage. Explosion seven. So when is it going to blow up? Only when it hits me or what? Anyway, we did recover shields, but health. Don't know how that's recovered. Whatever. This guy is, is pretty nuts. Yeah, any time now, dude. Uh, just to get under him. I have to, sometimes you want to fire your second shots purely to, purely because you want to reload. He didn't drop anything. I was hoping as a better guy he would drop something. All right. Sector complete. Hit enter to continue. All right. Known space. Oh, shoot. I can't go back? No. Okay. Anyway, I was just trying to move my cursor to see what we can select here. Um... Known space, hit enter to fight. I don't know what the stars mean. We can't actually select another location. As soon as you pick a direction, it keeps you there. It would be nice, maybe, yeah, it would let us change or look around a little bit more, but no. Okay, we've got this big bar guy coming in. Atom Smasher. It looks like he wants to smash some atoms. We've got five main guns. All right, Axel, yeah, Defiant, Executor, okay. The rest of these guys we've seen before, now he's a Falcon. Talon Swipe. Talon Swipe. Sounds like a melee attack. Veto. Wait, what's this guy? Oh, yeah, Axel again. Oh, an Axel and then an Executor. Okay, sure. Main thing we got is this Atom Smasher dude coming in. Time to uh, fire up the main guns. Whoa, okay. Unfortunately, we fired a bunch of stuff and uh, annihilated him. And he didn't He didn't drop anything good. No, some junk. Oh, I guess we can find out if junk heals us. Something tells me no. Was this an enemy? It's a wasp. A stinger, okay, sure. Lost a little bit of shield there. Reloading 1-1, one, one. okay, that didn't give us anything. Okay, so we can't like repair with junk, it seems. Uh, is that, that's a smart bomb. No, it's junk, Never mind. What's a smart bomb again? <laughs> So ideally, you want to try to kill guys while you're under them. So yeah, the more dangerous spot. Risk reward, right? All 
I guess it helps to actually start firing even before the next wave arrives. All right, we got these guys again, Gout of Flame. And uh, this is this wave looks very similar to the other one. What? What is this? I owe talk to me. Yep, you're down. Wait a minute, was that the bomb? Smart bomb, yeah, okay. Musical notes are smart bombs. I want that. <clears throat> uh, I did like having missiles. All right, now I assume if I go west, this thing isn't gonna come after me. It's chasing me, though. If I move west, it might hit me. But if I move northwest, I probably missed the bomb. I got the bomb. Ooh, I got a bellow. I got the thing they've got. <clears throat> All right, so that did work. Reloading the main gun. Still reloading main gun. All right, I think we hit him. Obviously, some more feedback might be nice too, like when you hit an enemy. I see another smart bomb. Shoot, I just got hit. Okay, that was bad. I, was playing, I started playing faster. Got hit there. Anyway, we should really probably play a little faster as we're learning. And you could probably play this game a lot faster, I think. Starting a little slow, mainly because we're reading stuff. The Dragon Wakes is the name of what this guy's armament. Double shot Ulm. Ulm Dragon Wakes. Okay, and these guys are gauntlets. Crush pattern. Okay. Dragon Wakes. What is Dragon Wakes? He makes something? A runabout. Main gun. Hmm. <laughs> hey, Elix. This game seems very much... I have the whole CP4037. CP I'm gonna use it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good use. Oh shoot, didn't use fire missile at us? No, it's good. Are we at the edge of the screen? Oh shoot, I'm at the edge of the screen. <clears throat> I can't go west further than that. I need to pay attention to that because I can't see the edge of the map, I mean. Uh, it's a little it's narrower than the edge of the screen, so we can't quite see the edge. I think, wait, he's a little, he's, no, maybe he's not one space further. All right, come on. All right, two bellow things. Too bad our main health is a little low at the moment. Getting jammed into a corner here. Might just go over there. Oh shoot, way too close to explosion. <laughs> Our bullets can't take out their bullets, we know that much. Standing too close to the enemy is dangerous, if only because they might fire something and it immediately hits you. Alright, that's gonna take him out. Oh yeah. Wait, what's that, health? Heal! I see heal! In explosion intensity double. Oh, a double. Wait, what's a double? Hmm, is that something we can get? That's, that's tempting to grab that and that. Might know, um, can I get both? I do want to know what it is, though. Okay, we just healed ourselves, and we got a double, which gave us this... Okay, two shot. Oh, two shot and five uses. I think it doubles our number of shots for five turns, probably, for five shots. We'll find out in a moment, unfortunately. Oh, no, wait, was it five turns? It's only five turns. Okay, that's not super useful. Mm-hmm. Thinking about projectile grazing mechanics to reward risk-taking with faster shield recharge or something. Maybe. Um, grazing mechanics might be helpful. Of course, if you can do it, it seems like the enemy can do a lot of the same things you can do. Sector complete. Enter to continue. Okay, so we made it here. Let's go find out what this star means. I'm gonna go north. You will face... Oh, it's a boss. You will face Seagrave. Okay. Um, where is Seagrave? Okay, I guess he comes at the end. Right, first we gotta take out a couple of the low lowlifes. Here we go.
You're dead. Oh yeah, come on. Can I take out a missile now? guys. Yeah. Similar wave from before then. Aside from messing with explosion visual symmetry, it seems like this game could probably get away with rectangular font just fine. Um, I don't know. I, I think it works as is. I like the... I think any square works... I mean, why would you want rectangular? Would you really? For gauging space and distances, square works better, and I think when you, you want to go rectangular when you have a strong need for a lot of text. Otherwise, squares, king. Alright, these bellow things are chasing me. Tried to turn around, I think. Anyway, well, one thing it's lacking is probably uh, impacts. I mean, obviously, there's a nice impact, but like impacts from bullets that don't kill. This was just junk, I believe. No, it's at E0. What is this? Or EO. Let's grab it and find out. Um, didn't do anything. All right, we also have this bellow thing, which we might actually use when we get into fighting a boss or something. Got one off right before he left. Wait, right, who's this guy? Defiant. Shuttle launch triangulate. Whoa. Oh, that's him. Seagrave. Engineer. Negotiator. Duelist. Um, okay. What are these abilities or something? And he's got, um, you got his stats. Pilot stats. One, four, three, three. He can launch a shuttle every turn or what? Huh. Uh, maybe some kind of movement tracer. Oh. Right, um, I, what I was talking about earlier, if maybe you didn't hear about that, was the one I played before, is instead of Movement Tracer, it shows you in advance what's going to happen next turn, which is what this shows right here. This is showing what's happening next turn, and if you show all that visually at once, it makes it a lot faster to play and easier to follow. I let off a bellow because he's getting close and we're getting gonna get messed up in here. I don't know if that's actually helpful, but I'm gonna let off another one. Oh, they're going down? What? Oh shoot, they always go down? Okay, I just wasted both of those then. <laughs> they're both going downward. Hmm. I didn't realize they'd go out the back. Oh shoot. Did they take out our shields? It's a blue explosion and our shields just dropped to nothing. Looks like it, probably. I want that smart bomb, but I'm also worried about this guy here is chasing us. Yeah, it looks like oh, he had to turn around. What was the ad again? Oh, it's not showing us right now. All right, and what is this doing? Yeah, see, like these crush pattern. Okay, I don't want to go down there then. I'm not using our sword much. Whoa, is that following us? No. We're killing each other over there? Yeah, good job. Oh wait, here's an at again. Oh, recharge, that's what that was. Recharge, recharge, oh wait, wait. It's probably a shield recharge, eh? A below goes below, it's it, it's bellow though, it's not below. <laughs> uh, but apparently it wants to go out the back side. I thought it might have been because I was moving south, so my next move I moved up and fired again. An another one, at least I thought I fired another one. That might have been from an enemy, huh? Anyway, I was, it might be the last direction we moved in. You come back here, dude. All right, we took out the boss. Or named guy, or whoops, nope, don't do that. The mouse is staying on the screen. Even though I moved the mouse off, the cursor by the game's recognition is still on the screen. So when that guy moved onto it, it gave info for him. 
Yep, reloading. All right, so I guess that means we can finish this sector. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Enter the fight. You will face somebody, censor somebody. I <laughs> didn't actually read it. <laughs> Oops, he's still alive. Thought we were going to kill out of the dude. Get dangerous when stuff's on top of each other. But I guess that's no different from normal shmups. Like right now, my arrows are on top of something that's right to my west, I think. That's generally when I get hit, is when stuff like that happens. Things are overlapping. Hmm, they did a good job of annihilating each other there, though. Ah, oh, shoot, here comes another one of those. They can't change their trajectory fast, so you just kind of got to circle around them, it looks like. They are not going to be turning, doing hairpin turns here. I will get you before you reload too many times. Go! Exclamation marks! He's backing up. We do have slightly different AIs. I wonder if it's based on their uh, weapon types or their type of enemy they are. I think my shields just got hit again. Having good shields is probably nice in this game. Just because sometimes you can get hit by stuff you didn't really uh, see due to overlapping. Oh, shoot, that hit me too. Hmm. Anyway, can easily just recharge our shields by uh, waiting in certain areas like this. Gotcha. Oh, I think we found our boss. Where you at, dude? Here you go. No, that's just a caustic. Never mind. Halo. Oh, Defiant. Oh, no, these are just some named guys is all. Acid Splash. Two of those pillow things. You know, push out of this corner. Oh, here comes some caustic acid and a whole lot of explosions over there. <laughs> Glad they weren't over here. More explosions coming. Reloaded. And took him down. We now have a salvo. It fires your first uh, special weapon first. Whatever is at the top of the list. So smart bombs, yeah, they're different kinds of smart bombs. I thought it was gonna be one thing that like kills a lot of stuff around you, but no. Just other weapons you can fire. Was huge. Something locked on, or no? It just hit, happens to hit that guy. This guy to our south. Oh, all right. You take out this other guy who's launching stuff. Stop launching ASCII at us, man. Almost. We got close. <laughs> he will not get in front of us. What if we drag something over near him? <laughs> like that. Get hit. Get hit. Almost. And try to convince him to move in. Alright, he died to something. <laughs> yep, we're coming for you. This guy does not want to get near us. His weapons go pretty far away. Trying to avoid us. <laughs> okay. Ah. I was going to fire the sword at him, but I couldn't get the movement right. It keeps getting on top of the last spot my cursor was on. 
All right, you're going down, right? Yes, okay. Is there the wave coming now? Here it is. Ooh. Okay, Halo. Oh, the rest of these guys are small. Demigod. Sensoria. Okay, here it is. So these are just basically named versions of the familiar builds. This one, though, also has an overload. One out of one. Four, two, four, one in their abilities. Duelist, whatever that means. 79 hit points. Okay, and 15 shield. Anyway, we'll just hope that they, the enemies can help us help us take them out. Space bats. <laughs> Need to get over here under them as soon as possible, I think. Ho oh, whoa. What is that? An overload. Seven damage, and it's moving to southeast. Overload. Yeah, very powerful. Reloading a lot of stuff. Some of those have a lot of turns. Okay. <clears throat> to fire, I can't move, which is, I think, a very interesting thing in a shmup. I mean, this is turn-based, right? So it makes a lot of sense. Um, otherwise, you're, if you're firing every time you move. I think that's probably a, a pretty big difference, in fact, between your average shmup and a turn-based shmup, is if you can, uh, you know, you have to sacrifice moving for uh, firing. <clears throat> you know, shmups actually get into that a little bit in terms of, for example, powerful weapons you have to, you have to stop to use or they slow you down in some way. Um, that's one way that uh, real-time shmups can take advantage of that as well but it's not as common. In this game, it's literally a fundamental part of the design. From the very beginning, your basic gun, you're either shooting or you're moving um, with the discrete space. So it's pretty interesting. <laughs> the greatest ally of them all is a predictable and explosive enemy. Um, yeah, maybe, all yeah, right, blowing up stuff. I assume the explosion four, right. We kind of want to blow up stuff next to him. Yeah, that would do more damage. That could help. He's down with some shields so far. Okay, right, I'm gonna, we're reloading. I may just wait here. <clears throat> um, and I, I, unfortunately, I think the bellow might go south. I'm gonna go north and try to fire one more. And see if I can make it go north. Okay, no, it always goes south. Sorry, somebody died next to him. <laughs> it does look like that always goes south. So, in fact, maybe all the bombs do. No, earlier we fired missiles on accident, and I think they went off to the side to chase things. All right, so we got one more. So I'd have to get behind him if I wanna use that. Firing main gun. Um, all right, I want to check out where some of these things are going. Yeah, this is there, so I kind of want to move west, probably. <clears throat> and this one is just a regular five damage bullet. Okay. Whoa, wait, did I just take damage when I'm moving next to that? I'm down I'm pretty low now. I'm moving next to my own F down there. I didn't actually move into it, though. What was it? I might have just hurt myself. It's a lot of acid things flying everywhere. <laughs> I need to get away from that guy. I'm going to try and fire a bellow on top of him. If he'll let me. So this thing, as long as it doesn't hit me, what if it gets next to me? Is that going to be bad? What if I hit it right now? Does it have HP? It doesn't seem to have HP, so I don't think I can hit it with a sword. All right, it's not going to fire over there, so that's good. Let's get on top of him and spacebar this guy. If I can. <laughs> there we go. We're on top of you now. We're on top of you now. Ready, and getting closer, 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 closer. Spacebar. Okay, what's that going to do? Not, is it ch it's chasing him? Yeah. It's, oh wait, it's chasing a pulsar. Wait, a pulsar are these little, wait, what is it chasing? Pulsar are like those little, oh, one of the little guys? Oh, this guy. It's chasing the wrong guy. 24 damage would be nice. What's he doing in terms, oh, his shields are back up. His HP is really low now though. All right, that's good. All right, I need some hearts. That's what I need. Wait a minute, isn't this an enemy above us? Yeah, a pulsar. I'm gonna fire our main gun. Boom, boom. Oh yeah, whacked him. Whacked him good. Unfortunately, he's not dead, but he's probably really close to dead. He's down to one HP and zero shield. Oh man, <laughs> so close. <laughs> okay, now something else took him down. Perfect, yes. Okay, now I just gotta get rid of these little stragglers. Get rid of the stragglers. You're dead.
Okay, I took out that boss. Probably rest of the explosion killed it. Oh, that's right. These are multi-turn explosions, it would seem. Maybe, so, uh, yeah, based on how close you are to the center and also the number of turns you're in it, you can take even more damage, probably. Seems like hitting something with a sword too close to you is really a bad idea. So I guess, based on the description, our goal is to take out all of the enemies, these stars, maybe. Anyway, also you could probably play it a little faster and figure out other stuff. Trust me, die in like two turns. You still have a salvo too. Oh, that's because I was putting my cursor at the top of the screen for a second there. Whoa. Maybe this is a pacifist game. He came here with his sword and shooting everybody. Okay, there's a lot of stuff in front of us. I just got whacked by an explosion. Shields down. Okay, so it still survived. Got hit by a missile. Musical note. Oh, Smart Bomb can get destroyed by other stuff, projectiles and things. That makes it a little harder to uh, actually keep them. I'm just going to hit by another explosion here. Fortunately, the shields ate that one. Guess you kind of need to pay attention to how big each of these guys explodes, which I haven't learned that yet. Yeah, we're going to kill you, dude, as soon as you get over here next to us. He will not move north. It's hard to hit something with a sword if I need to move in that direction last. It's actually very hard to hit him with a sword. He will not get in sword range. All right, now it might work. No, wait, it moves diagonally too. The sword attacks whatever direction you last moved in. So wait, I can try it diagonally. Let me try this diagonally. Here we go. I'm gonna try a sword. Did that hit him? Can't actually tell. Maybe. <laughs> All right, now I need to wait for him to get off the edge. Or he's not going to leave the edge, he's just going to stay there. He seems to be liking the corner. Okay, I have to reload again. Yeah, it'll do the sword in any direction. I'm reloading one. Boom! Alright, hit him with a sword again. I assume. At least he's getting out of the corner now. Okay, wait, nope, that wasn't him, that was his friend. I wonder how many people play this game, like, very fast. Alright, got ourselves... We got ourselves a dragon wakes! Yeah, okay, so the double. See this gray thing here? We have a temporary thing which gives us, what is it? We got uh, two sh double shots, one turn left, it gives you for five shots. We fire a second gray bullet uh, for the duration. It's only five turns, though. It's not really very useful because of the chance that you're going to get that. Dude, the chance that you're going to be able to get that when you're also in a situation where there's an enemy in front of you is going to be fairly low. Seems like it could be made a little more useful. We now have a dragon wakes. What is that going to mean? Okay, let's not get near that. There's a lot of stuff exploding. Check it out. Got another smart bomb coming in. I thought it was. What did it disappear? Oh, that's a bee. Never mind. Uh oh, getting engulfed in an explosion I wasn't paying attention to. Playing a little fast here. Uh oh, uh oh. Shields down. Shields down. Whoa, mega explosion to the north that took everybody out. <laughs> okay, see, right now, it would help if I could see all the projectile trails and where they're going, because that'll help path. Let's go that way, that way, that way. Dude, this guy, he's staying there in the same turn. He's not going to move this way. Hmm. Interesting, he's not moving, but now he's going to stay. Moving. See, like, right now, it looks like it's safe for me to move into this space right here. 
And that's it where if all these things were showing, then I could see that without mousing over everything. But right now I have to actually mouse over that. Did that something actually hit me there though? I think I might just took a couple damage. Hmm. Anyway. Interesting. Overall, uh, I'm liking it though. I think it's cool. Oh, yeah, we're gonna hit enter to continue at any time here. What if we go back to a previous sector? Um, I'll do one more and then head east because we have to come back anyway. We might be able to travel freely through sectors we've visited. You will face Bodini. Oh, <laughs> I'm all for facing Bodini. Basically, the big opening salvo. And then try not to get hit. And then let them kill each other. <laughs> okay, here's another case. I need to check exactly where these are going to decide what to do. And these are coming straight down. Everything's coming straight down. So technically, I should be able to move northeast. Let's see if anything hits me. I did. I just took seven shield damage for some reason. I'm not sure why. Uh, hmm, weird. Can't quite tell, actually. Which sort of matters. Okay, get off that. Um, they do seem to be blowing themselves out. Yeah, there is a lot of friendly fire damage. I like it, though. Um, the arrows on the side... Oh, I forgot about that. Shoot. The arrows on the side can be hit. We're wider. All right, I'm being dumb, like, for a while now. <laughs> I even talked about that earlier. Probably being the case. Oh, my God. You're right. It's the arrows on the side. We're wider. I'm glad that hasn't actually caused bigger problems than you would think it might have. <laughs> That's what keeps it. That's basically all I've been getting hit on is the arrows on the side. I need to remember that. Because I keep thinking those arrows are not ASCII parts of our ship. I keep thinking their arrows telling me I can move left and right, which doesn't make sense, but of course, because you can move up and down as well. I need to remember that. You can actually get hit there. All right, I, my entire vision just changed. <laughs> I was about to fire a salvo, but I decided to not. I think we were going to still have to face Bodini, but now I'm stuck behind this guy. Well, tech... Shoot. Shield damage. Yeah, okay. So anyway, I do know why now I'm getting hit. That is going to change a lot. Yep, you guys kill each other. These guys that launch more guys can actually, yeah, be helpful. Giving us more things to shoot and blow up so they hit yourself. So yeah, shields are really good for that. Hitting the thing, or stopping a bit of the things that will accidentally uh, hit part of you. But if you can't slip out. That's where we've taken all our damage so far. Overall, I'm surprised that the, you know, the same track hasn't gotten annoying. I actually kind of like it. You might think that uh, one that has a single track would get a little too annoying. But it's not bad. Jammy, but still subtle enough. There's a double shot here. All right, so we should have it now because it was next to us there. We also have to sell that Dragon Wake 7 years. Wait, I don't have it yet? Why not? Where'd it go? We don't have the... Sh the... Oh, that was... Wait, that was a Restore. Which I think was Shields. Yeah, that was a Recharge. I got it mixed up. Okay, this one here is actually a little more problematic. That's coming diagonal. All right, we should be able to move north. And then... I oh, know we're still going to get hit. Shoot. One damage, though. It's fine. Let's take Eat one damage. Go away, bellows. Musical notes, my favorite. We got his bellow, okay. Better to finish someone off with your bullets instead of your sword, if only because that leaves a lot of bullets still flying. So when the next wave arrives, you uh, your bullets get to keep flying into them. <laughs> like this right now. Only there's they're all at will. What are these guys doing together? 
Gauntlet. Okay. Bodini. Oh. One of them is Bodini. He's coming in with his friends. All right, let's go that way then. Let's take him out first. Uh-oh. Hmm. The Smurf bomb there. That's desirable, sort of. And this over here is a cruisy wing red. But that's the boss. Now, what's he got? Wait, where'd the boss go? Yeah, 18 hit points. He's got no shields at all. Multi-ball. What is that? Is that what this is, probably? No, I can't actually see what that is. Okay, this is probably a multi-ball. haven't seen this before. Multi-ball. Seven damage. It's not coming straight for us, though, at least. All right, I need to find out where all these other things are going. Uh, we should be able to move west still and stay okay for a little while. Well, I fired some missiles, but they went west. I guess it's because I moved west last. Probably. Alright, is he the last one left? Yeah, it's just him. He's got 13. Multi-ball. Dragon wakes. Let's fire that and find out what happens. Ooh, there goes a lot of his stuff. He can't actually get us up here, though, huh? Dragon wakes. Wait, it just fired both? I just pressed one space bar. I just fired... We launched this guy... And it also, oh, did we, or did he launch that salvo? Was we already used our salvo? I think this guy just fired missiles at him. Oh, we got an ally. Check it out. Hell yeah, is he gonna follow us? Oh, well, he's dead now. That's too bad. Dragon wakes, huh? That's kind of cool. He fired missiles for us. That's cool. And flew around. He could have probably reloaded and fired again. I like having allies, even though they'll die quickly. But if you know how to use them, I think we could probably play it pretty effectively. Yep, prepare to die. <laughs> oh, shoot, he's not dead? Has this guy got armor? That didn't kill him. Hmm. Okay, he's getting close, though. Almost got you. All right. Almost. Gonna get you in the corner and sword you to death. Or... Try not to die. It's really hard to hit this guy with a sword, actually. Can't. Wish we could get more hearts. Those are rare. All right, never mind. Now I can do it the traditional way. Okay, he's dead. He killed himself. Okay, so can we move back through freed up space? My guess is yes. The answer is yes. So we can actually go back um, and take out, for example, we'll face Splinter Tooth. Musical note. Shoot, I'm gonna get hit here. Take one damage. Gonna take one more damage. Or no, wait, if we wait, it'll come to us, right? Yes, it comes to us. We got a shuttle launch. Okay. It came to us and we're still able to dodge the bullet. Uh-oh, gotta get hit here. Oh, wait a minute, I didn't fire this. That, I don't wanna get hit by. <laughs> Guess we're going west. It's hiding behind other stuff. <laughs> These guys can be dangerous. They're big bullets. Was this guy's following in his pattern with him? I haven't seen a whole lot of guys doing that. They generally seem to split off. Circle around your thing again. Yeah, can definitely start to get some. Whoops, just ran into that. Patterns. Uh, that you can use against certain enemies, you know, not unlike other schmups. The normal kind. Then he can get into, we can get into these patterns, but <laughs> have to overcome the pattern. Alright, we're gonna slip right through here. Take some shield hit, it's fine, because our shield comes back fast. Perhaps because of our mind.
I'm kind of guessing where some of these bullets are going now. <laughs> Not bad. I think I just leave. What was that? Ooh, musical note. No completion. Salvo. Yes. Okay. So we took that guy out. Now we should be able to go. We should be able to kill everybody. I'm, that's probably the goal of this game, huh? Guess you shouldn't die. Took one shield hit there. Okay, that was a bigger shield hit because I should not have done that. That missile lock onto us. What is this thing doing? Hmm. It's firing a lot of missiles. Wait, this guy's shooting a lot of stuff out of his side. Falcon Talon Swipe. Ah, so it's not a melee attack. Yeah, he's not doing that. It says a whoa, that's a ton of damage that's coming out straight to his sides. Careful of that. He is dead. He got killed by this guy's missiles. This guy seems to be missling off to the right a lot. Or left. He's just throwing a ton of missiles out there. Don't want to get locked in the corner, so I'm not going to keep going that way. That recharged our shields there. Alright, now to technically to not take damage, I have to watch what's going on here. Moving northeast to, to keep us damage free. And I have to check again through here just to watch these patterns. Northeast again. And then we can get out of that corner. Of that boxed in area. Alright, we do need to get on the other side of this guy. <laughs> behind this guy is not going to work. <laughs> He's going to keep spitting guys out. You need to move back, man. Mm. I don't know if this is a good idea. I wonder if I should launch a shuttle. Or let them try to kill each other. Go, go! They did a good job of killing each other. I need to swing wide enough that I can get under this guy and make him go north. There we go. I didn't want to do it in a corner, but oh well. <laughs> Better than the alternative. Gonna allow myself to take a little bit of shield damage here. Because he's gonna die anyway. Reloading still. guys can be tough to take down. I could use one of my abilities and I'm just saving that because this guy isn't exactly hard. He doesn't do much damage. Especially our shields regen fast enough that it's not an issue. There he goes. Now he's going to take down his launched entourage and that'll be that. And the next wave will come in and we're going to take out the next enemy boss hopefully on the next, uh, what, next wave. Oh, come on. Love getting the big ones right away. Yes, 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 yes. Oh man, I just got my shield whacked. Shoot. Wait, here he goes. Recharge. That didn't do anything for our shield. Was that recharge? Recharge our weapons, maybe? It's not that great, it seems. Anyway, got hit by something that, yeah, that one of those did a lot more damage. A smite. A lot of damage coming in. No, those aren't really too damage. Pay a little bit more attention to what these guys are doing. Those seem to move a little slower. Sword doesn't seem to be super essential. Back up to full shields. Only got one health so far. Only even saw one. I wonder how rare those are. As in, like, 
uh, just the drops, because maybe they were destroyed if they had also dropped in other situations. Unknown. And I'm also wondering what recharge does, because it doesn't recharge your shields. Only reloading, maybe? Seems kind of unnecessary. But maybe some weapons take longer to reload, or with certain people. Oh, the sector was complete. Oh, there was... Wait, did I take out a boss there? Okay. Uh, Limhesto. There's two more starry areas, and I'm assuming if we take all those out, we win? You're supposed to... It said the goal was to take out your rivals, right? Alright, unfortunately, we got this guy coming over here to the east. You know what? I just got hit by a missile, and I'm going to take a lot of damage. Okay, I didn't take... My shields ate it. Yes. Uh, I only had east and take that damage, I guess. Oh, that didn't hurt me. Surprising. Okay, was he firing? He's firing missiles in me. Yeah, chasing us. Oh, it only missiles. This missile's only one damage. Whew. Okay, that makes me feel better. <laughs> no wonder. Um. Oh, he's launching these guys that launch missiles. The runabouts. No, that's main gun. Hmm. Dragon wakes. Hmm. Gonna get this guy. And that means that I do that. I'm gonna try to hit him. Oh shoot. Well, I was gonna go that way. Got him in the corner. I'm going to sword him. Boom! Oh, yeah. That felt good. Okay. Well, fortunately, he didn't drop a smart bomb in the corner. Got him with a sword, though. He just... He got stuck in the corner. <laughs> it's nice that there's a sword to deal with that, too. It would be hard if he got stuck there and wouldn't leave, and then I had to use a gun. That would be tough. This guy not want us to get by him. You know, I wouldn't mind being under you. Shoot, now I'm gonna get hit, aren't I? This is gonna come a lot of space. It's gonna go south. Yeah, okay. Can avoid that. Got him. Getting close. Alright, I do have a boss in this group. It's hard to tell sometimes because they don't look the same. I mean, they, they look the same, but you can't... Uh, yeah, the, the boss is not here yet. They need to have uh, one of those pop-ups for shmups, right? Boss coming, etc. Alright, I can't get over there, but they're going to kill each other probably to a, some degree. Too many guys. Friendly fire. Oh, shoot, just got hit. It's okay. Regular bullet's fine. I just want to get hit by the big stuff. Little bullets are great. The big stuff is uh, the problem. Oh, and Elvis, everyone's dead. Nice. Some of these things can... And, and the explosions. I think the... So the explosions and the bigger weapons are what you really have to worry about. Okay, do we have a boss yet? Right, here he is. There he is. Lim Hesto, Negotiator, Engineer, whatever those mean. Um, crush Patterns, Switch Blades, Double Shot. 3332 are his stats. Whatever that means. And he's got a Flame Guide. Those guys are actually tough. Shoot, I really wish they were right in front of me right now. Because I don't really care about killing these as much as I care about whacking those guys really hard. <laughs> I'm going to launch Shuttles. Um... I assume I have friendly fire too. Alright, what happens over here? Did he die already? Can't really tell. I know he's probably in the middle of all this. There's a lot of explo- <laughs> Look at all these! Explosion intensity 1, 4, 1, 2, 2, 1, <laughs> just... <laughs> Switchblade, 9 damage. Oh my god, I do not want to get hit by that. I'm headed in the other direction. These guys in front of me are mine. Okay, I see a lot of switchblades coming our way. I think he's dead. No, he's in this- he's- behind this switchblade. He's messed up, though. <laughs> yeah, I agree, sports. The friendly fire in this game is really fun, but a bit silly. A friendly fire, I think, can really work well, as long as you design around it. Um... Alright. Design for that being a thing, which I assume they took that into account in terms of, like, how many enemies you have to face, etc. Alright, and where's this going? Yeah, down and west. You really don't want to get hit by those things. This guy's pretty tough. Or at least in terms of... You, if you walk through this, you're dead. Um, I, I don't like the fact that, unfortunately, learning lost us uh, about 20 uh, HP early on. 
Otherwise, I think we'd be in even better shape. I could take intentionally, just to get over here, is run through like this bullet. I should probably do that. I'm gonna run through that bullet. I just don't wanna get next to all that other stuff. Take a little bit of damage in favor, yeah, of getting over here. Let them deal with each other. All right, there's the boss guy. And uh, this guy's almost dead. Switchblades only seem to go down, which is good. I sent off a salvo. Those are my red dots. Hopefully they don't like target me. Missile damage chasing some other dude down there. I'm gonna go right through those bullets. Use the shield. Oh, okay. Yeah, this guy got close enough to start firing off his stuff, which was what I was kind of worried about. I don't want these coming out at the same time. Time to set out another salvo, I guess. I'm gonna move one over here. Salvo. What, why do salvos always go west? You know what? I wonder if there's something wrong with that. That a bunch of missiles just went west. I moved east before I fired them, just in case, but they still went west. Maybe it has something to do with your your momentum over many, many turns, which way it goes. I'm not sure, but I've been I've wasted almost every special weapon I've gotten so far. I've, almost none of them. I think only one actually had a good effect this entire time. Yeah, requires more learning. Shoot, now we got a boss under us and this guy above us and I have no special abilities. This guy above us alone is a problem. I need to keep them separate, I guess. At least there's that much. All right, his bullets only, these kinds of bullets are basically they only do one damage, so I can technically just eat that and go through it. Just in order to get some shots off on that guy and I need to not get hit by those things coming north. Those are a lot of damage. We should be in a good position to kill this guy. Nope, he's getting away again. That boss down there is having fun. All right, I finally got this guy. Unfortunately, it took out, I had to lose all my shields for it, but he dropped a heart. And why is his explosion green? Oh, he was green, I guess. Yeah, they're doing that. Bring it, oh, the heart's coming, the heart's coming. Oh, yes, we got health. Heal. Okay, okay, now the big problem comes. I'm gonna take out this guy that's out. This is probably his location. Yeah, he's, you can see his background highlighted on here because he's a, he's a dark foreground uh, light uh, colored background guy. He's only got three hit points left. Sadly, I doubt he'd kill himself. His bullets aren't hitting himself, but that means I gotta somehow get this guy. Maybe I can get him from above with a sword hit. They have RGB explosions. They do. He, this guy is... I'm gonna try to get him with a sword from above. But I don't. I just don't want that that particular weapon. This one to hit crush pattern. So we can check his countdown. There. He's got seven turns before he does that again. All the others don't come north. So if I head south, he's gonna head west. No, he came their way. Sword, you. You are dead. Boom. Got him. Yes. And that guy was actually tougher. Okay. So this might be the last one. You will face Gruff. All right. So I wonder if there's any order in terms of how hard they are or if they're really just based on location. Um, like if we came here at the beginning, we would have faced Gruff no matter what anyway. Or is it actually gonna get harder? Because the, some of these enemies do seem to be getting harder. We are being flanked by two of these things, that's worrisome. 20 damage. Time to eat some other bullets. <laughs> I don't care about taking one damage here and there. I don't wanna take 20 damage. Also these things. Six damage. Two of these guys together is not cool. Yes! Oh, there's a smart bomb over there. Shoot. No! Wait, is there a guy left? Uh, I'm not gonna be able to get it. Oh well, too bad. Yes, I'm trying to kill you right away before you get in close. Because once this guy gets in close, it's hard to take him out. Oof. Anybody else? Oh, yes, yes. Take damage and die. We might not actually end up learning what the stats do. Well, at least not this run. I would do a quick run afterwards just to look some real quick ones to see the difference, but... Looks like maybe we, may, we might actually win. 
All right, do we have a boss? Gout, Axel, Gruff. There he is. Laser beam, 1010. Uh, I don't like the sound of that one. And I don't have hmm, other stuff. I don't have any smart bombs. Shoot, gonna get hit. Oh, boom. There goes the laser beam. Hmm. <laughs> Nine, ten, one. He has a. Is that. Oh, is that a. He has an X number of uses on that, I hope. If we can just stay near him. Whoa. No, he's just still firing it. Oh my god. This guy's gonna be hard to take out. He's got a countdown on that. Alright, now I'm worried about the Bellows guy. Shoot, ran into that. It's okay. We we'll re recharge that quickly. All right, I think he's dead. Got that guy. This guy's. These guys are pretty annoying. Firing this stuff out because these are pretty damaging. All right, I gotta watch for where everything's going now. Is, mm, what? His crush pattern is chasing me? Huh? They don't normally do that. This guy who died let out a bunch of crush pattern. Anyway, it's probably. Gonna, is that gonna disappear then? It's got turns left on it. One of them's dead. All right, just trying to get out of there. All right, the boss is still to the south. I'm gonna try and head east. Wait a minute, did he just die? The boss just died. Okay, well, don't have to worry about him then. <laughs> Mr. Laser Guy is gone. <laughs> uh, friendly Fire is, uh, I think, pretty good for... Um, Creating more interesting situations, for sure. Can be like make games less predictable, though. But then you're not only thinking about what, what you can do, you have to think about what everyone else can do, not only against you, but also against their friends. A little complicated, but overall, I, I tend to like it when it where it exists. All right, now I'm going to get this guy with a sword. Sometime today. I don't want to. Stick. I'm just gonna do it. Okay. I sorted him. Yeah, they took down his shield. He was at full, so I have to wait. <laughs> I have to guess which way he's gonna move. <laughs> it's not always moving the same way. Here we go. It's time to sword you to death. Goodbye. Wait, he didn't die? <laughs> okay. He got all of his shield back in the meantime. He's, his shields recover pretty fast. No, not really. All right, anyway, run him down lower. Next next sword shot's gonna kill him. What's his explosion? I don't wanna die to this guy. Six. Seems, seems reasonable. We should be able to eat that. Boom. You are toast. Oh, he dropped health right at the bottom. Unfortunately, I can't get it. It's gonna disappear. Sector complete. Huh. Well, we didn't win. <laughs> Uh, friendly fire can be cool, but here it's the main damage, it seems. Uh, yeah, but again, like I said, it's kind of, kind of, I think that you work that into your tactics, and the dev also works that into how they balance it. Like, the types of enemies and abilities there are. So I was assuming we were going to win there. We did not win. How do you win? Do you have to clear the map? All right, I'm going to play faster then and see what else happens, but, uh, we already faced all the fast, all those big guys, so, I don't know. If we die, we die. Might happen sooner rather than later, but yeah, playing fast and we die. Lost health for no reason. Wait, I want that. I want that. I didn't get that. But I'm not gonna finish the entire map. I already killed all the named guys. So are we supposed to look in the other places for guys that we don't know? I mean, our, our main boss is hidden somewhere and we're supposed to, because the only thing you gain from fighting anything else is, uh... Oh, we're gonna die over here? Yeah, this might kill us. Um, the only thing... Oh, it didn't kill us yet. The shields were enough, slipping out of there. Oh, these guys are tough. The only thing you gain is, um... Uh, smart bombs. That's like your only resource. There's no, uh, nothing else we're gaining at all. We're not raising levels or whatever. So I don't see any other reason for having to find the, the guy or going after the others. Or maybe the point is to just clear the map and they didn't have time to implement some other kind of 
ending. Oh, a lot of explosions. Wow, that actually slowed the game down for a second, I think. It's hard to tell. is going to run over there and sort him, but if I walk into that, I'd die immediately. Well, not immediately. These are weaker bullets, I believe. Hmm, but yeah, as any turn-based game, uh, it is advantageous to play this slower. I think one of the things that would really make it a lot faster to play, um, regardless of how fast you're playing... Oh, that's a new thing, isn't it? What is that? drain so i guess i don't want to touch that <laughs> not too hard demand homage okay sword is not long enough to hit that guy little launch dude come back here hmm. let's see how it would be kind of fun with a whole lot of shields to just run out here and let them kill each other. <laughs> trying to get one of these guys with a sword, but they, oh, look at that, they're going back and forth. But left, right, left, right, they're being pretty consistent in how they're avoiding. <laughs> the only way to get these guys is against the edge. This guy's like linked to his friend. When playing faster you can, get a better grasp of what they're doing. Boom, oh yeah, you were got sorted. Oh, he dropped health! I can't catch it, though. <laughs> That's very sad. Yeah, killing guys from above, no good. Oh, we have one health, one hit point left, about to die. Come back here. Anyway, I'm pretty confident after clearing all those other guys that we pretty much can clear the rest and would, would, have, uh, would win, so I'm not worried about dying. Did not kill him with that. Whoa, this guy fires a lot. <laughs> Can't catch this guy. Got him. Oh, these guys are happy. Also, there's health. Ooh, can I grab the health without dying? Oh my god, I'm actually grabbed the health without dying. And then lost all my shields and lost some of the health by running through those things. Those are pretty powerful and damaging. A lot of explosions. Yep, just gotta... Uh, I guess you can also tactically... Okay, we got that. We also got switchblades. Ooh. Hmm, I had switchblades before. Of course, I really haven't been able to effectively use any of the smart bombs, as mentioned earlier. Okay, I took care of you. Boom! It's fun watching the explosions. Explosions are fun. ASCII explosions, you gotta love them, right? We got an overload and a smite. Huh. The overload wasn't a smart bomb, though. It dropped as a different kind of item. And it does sound like a different thing. I'm gonna sword this guy if I can get close enough. Whoops, let that hit me. Okay, this guy would, would prefer to be hit by cannon fire. Boom. Yeah. Those are mine. You guys want to help at all? Maybe? What are they doing? Do they only attack down or what? <laughs> oh no. Well, stay away from me. Those are really dangerous. The only thing I'm afraid of is this F thingy. Or, you know, musical mode thingy. Too far away. Damn, look at that. That was cool. That's what that does. That's switch blades. Let's check out what overload does. Oh, whoa. Okay, it's spitting out a bunch of happy faces. What do these do? I should probably read it. Happy face, what do you do? Seven damage. Oh, must one of these also just nailed him, I think. Yeah. He actually has a lot of shields, but he doesn't have much health. What's smite do? 
Uh, I'm spitting out smites now. Smite, six damage, chasing undefined. No, no. We're gonna kill that undefined. <laughs> it's headed east. All right, I was just testing what all those would do. And he's dead. Uh, neither the engine trail goes out as stop tracking. Yeah. They probably fire us out through. I have no idea. Some of the, hey, the special weapons are interesting, but yeah, they seem to have some little quirks. It'd be nice to be able to mouse over them and see what they do. I mean, you can mouse over the enemies, right? Um, it would be great if you could mouse over that. All right, so I am going to... I think we pretty much figured this game out. And uh, I'm going to reload the page really quick. Unless I can quit. I can't actually quit. I'm going to reload the page and start over. One second. I'm going to try to reload the page. Let me reload the page. There we go. Run the game. And let's see what these other ones do. All spirit. I'm going to all spirit this time. Yeah. And all talent. Okay, our HP is now 24 instead of 36. Shields are the same. Main gun and sword are both the same. Reloading two for the main gun. Reloading for the main gun is the same. Um, wonder what else is different. Maybe, uh, what else could be different? We will tell in a second uh, if there's something else. We're gonna watch our shield regen, which means we should uh, allow it to drain. Here, hit my shield. There we go. Hit my shield. Hit my shield. Okay. We have four right now. Five, six. It's regening it pretty much the same rate it was before. I still don't know what these do. <laughs> Maybe anything but body is there to fool you. Or maybe they have effects on the map, like make it easier to find your enemy. Let me see how long it takes to recharge the sword. The sword. I was going to say shield at first. All right, bring it. Boom. Oh, we nailed him. It seems the sword reload is exact same time. Okay, we have a salvo now. I'm going to fire that, which goes west. <laughs> salvo goes west, always, no matter what. <laughs> What is up with that? That is so weird. Anyway, I don't see any difference. We might have green skills. Okay, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah, looking at ourselves, we have no difference at all. Except stats. The only stat difference we've seen at all is body. Which definitely raised our hit points. Hmm. Anyway, alright. Well, we're just gonna have to uh, assume that's all it does. <laughs> And that is the end of Crave Space. I liked it. Um, actually, I didn't need to close the window there. Uh, also, let's see. Close, I'll capture browser. Already in that. Okay. Um, just to get back on the page while I was talking about it. Uh, I like the... Uh, I wonder if there's any more... Uh, hover over... Yeah, we read all this. It's nothing else that I, I think we we're missing in terms of that. Um, that would have been cool to hear sound effects. That might get kind of annoying, I guess. Uh, I kind of liked it without just the music, but you know, if you see if you do it well, I guess it can work just fine and be better as well uh, if done right. So yeah, more work for a 7 DRL though, especially uh, one man here, lag.com. Lag.com I think did a very good job on this. I enjoyed it, but um, yeah, I mean, we pretty much covered all the, all the aspects while we were playing it. Uh, I guess the main thing here we weren't sure about is the... I mean, see, search, search for your rivals and eliminate them. So, we, you know, we search for all them, and I feel like it could have been an end state. Or do you really just, you're supposed to finish the whole thing, and then that counts as a win. I wonder if there is a win, a win state other than that. Or if you find some other enemies out there. But, um, yeah, overall, I liked that. It was a, a neat entry. Um, it's hard to play very fast, for sure. I think the main number one thing it could use is uh, a way to show trajectories. Um... If you don't want to show it constantly, at least make it a, a like a, a key you can hold or some kind of mouse a hover thing to just be showing them. Uh, that would be nice and would allow much faster and more effective play. So that's Crave Space. But yeah, <laughs> I love the music. Get my spirits high and my mind focused. <laughs> maybe, yeah, the, the other stats just affect the music, maybe. No, I like how... Uh, Oh, yeah, 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 I agree. Uh, as Illig says, it was surprising how much easier it was to understand what was going on when you were going fast. It's true. You're, you're, as you're looking at the screen, you can really, uh, you know, you, you see the movement. And, uh, but the, the main problem is just that since we're learning it, you know, we have to kind of, we're in, inspecting a lot of things. And then for that, you have to do the mouse over and whatnot and gradually learn what these things is. So I, like I was saying at the beginning, I think as you get 
better and better, you can play a lot faster. But you, even then, you still... Because every, one little wrong move can still really mess you up in some cases, so you really don't want to play too fast. Even though, yeah, when you're moving faster, you can do a lot. Uh, you can see it. You can just start... You can build a picture and see the, the movement of everything. It's not actually animated, but uh, your movement is fast enough that you can see them coming. So, yeah, that was uh, very interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I did like the music. Uh, that was good. All right, so we're going to switch over now to the last game of the day. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll just get into a fourth game. I know it's been a while, but we're not over time. So we'll start uh, this, especially since this is... We were talking about it earlier, so we definitely, yeah, for that reason, at least want to do the, this stream. This is a bro-like, or however it's pronounced, brow-like. Um by Michael, or it's in the style of games by Michael Brower, bro, who had, um, he kind of popularized this style because he made a lot of small games based on this and some of them were pretty popular. And he started, also participated in a few 70 RLs and one of his 70 RLs became a commercial game, the 868. Um, and yeah, he's released a lot of small games like that. Um, and they're kind of like, Basically, they're, the definition, so if you're people who were wondering about this earlier, uh, it's basically games that are on a grid of about this size. It doesn't have to be five uh, or five by five, but it's a, a pretty coarse grid tactical style game. So it's, they're more puzzle-like games than roguelikes, but they do share a lot of... Uh, there There is randomness involved, and they do share a lot of qualities with roguelikes, but they're a lot... Certainly very different com compared to most traditional roguelikes. They're really uh, a lot closer to puzzle games uh, with a little bit of randomness uh, thrown in. And they're usually, they're, there usually is no end. Um, usually. Not always, though. Some bro-likes do have an end. Um, there's a lot of them, though. There's even a jam related to it. Like the 7 DRL, but uh, it's instead the roguelike jam. Uh, and a lot of people pronounce it, actually, because it's only one letter different, I guess, think from uh, a brogue. Or not one letter difference. A lot of people see it and they're thinking of brogue. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, because once you put the like at the end, it's less clear. But yeah, people think of it as brogue-like. One letter moved, one letter, and then add one letter. And it becomes like the game brogue, the, the roguelike brogue. And so people, a lot of people, when they first see it, they're imagining, oh, it's like brogue, which is a much more traditional style uh, roguelike. They're very different games, though. Um, it happens to be, this one happens to be named after a developer. Uh, so we'll... Um, get more into the details as we start this game we're just going to start it up you are a curious magpie uh, who loves to collect shiny trinkets wasd arrow keys or swipe to move swipe is in yeah a lot of brogue likes are they also lend themselves to being uh, mobile games because they are on a very coarse grid um i uh, I, on that note yes uh, i personally don't usually like this style of game um but there's one that I played, which I normally I'll play them a few times. And that's enough. I'm not as interested, partially because a lot of them don't end. And I'm not usually as interested in games that don't end. Uh, just personal preference. Um, uh, but there is one that I was playing and do have on my phone and play occasionally and played more than any other. And it's called uh, Seven Scrolls. Is uh, I have that on my uh, phone, uh, Android. And uh, that's, I think, also a fairly popular game. And this is in the same style. It's a uh, roguelike um and to compare, actually, let me show you really quick. Since we're on the topic, um, wait a minute. What? It won't let me look at their App Store page. Okay, now it's letting me look at their App Store page. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna pull this up and show this over here. Okay. So here is here is the app store for Seven Scrolls. Um, this is I oh, wow. This has oh that's kind of sad. It has a one because someone on here gave it a rating of one. I don't wonder if I'd rate it. I should rate that and leave something. Oh, this is also what oh this also says it's for the iPad. Huh. It's uh, maybe that's because we're currently in the app store and the web that I'm browsing from is looking at the, I don't know, it's basically an iPad, whatever. But um, <clears throat> it's this it plays very fine on mobile, small small mobile phones, it's not really. Uh, it's also, here's, oh, here's some pictures from what uh, it looks like on the different things. 
But anyway, this is it. So as you can see, as I was talking about, look at this. This is also even five by five grid. It's the exact same kind of grid. And you see also some areas are blocked off, so blocked off to movement. And then you have different, you basically have enemies and items. And the idea is to basically collect items and or score or whatever and try to get to the next floor. Uh, the Seven Scrolls is really interesting. I like it. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, neat, it's a neat game, though. This one I do like to play again, also because it has an ending. Maybe that's part of what drives me, is this game does have an ending. I haven't actually beat it before. I've gotten close, but um, it's pretty tough. And sometimes you hit roadblocks that are basically get bad luck and it just kills you, <laughs> uh, which is an unfortunate side effect of having games like this, which are puzzle games that don't have quite as much leeway. Roguelikes in general, especially with a finer grid and more abilities, tend to have a little more leeway. Um, in terms of getting out of trouble. You know, Cogmind in particular has a ton of leeway. You can come back from almost any any bad thing that happens. Um, it has to be a lot of bad things happening that eventually do you in. So, um, but you know, the, the, the coarser your grid and the fewer abilities you have, the less option uh, for that, especially in a game that is somewhat random, like these uh, roguelikes. So anyway, again, this game is made by someone else. It's not made by Michael Brogue, but it's a, another one in the same vein, puzzly game. And anyway, rec recommend it if you uh, enjoy or if you'd like to find a puzzly roguelike-ish game uh, for your phone. That's a good choice. And so anyway, let's go back here and we're going to check out Magpie. Um, tend to have long tactical planning horizons compared to other roguelikes. Part of the reason why they feel puzzly. Uh, yeah, sort of. But the thing is, they're also divided into these very granular... I mean, levels are small, and so you can't necessarily, I mean, you can't plan usually too many floors ahead, for example, or whatever. It's pretty localized. Um, but the tactical planning, the local tactical, tactical planning is definitely, I guess, you could say it's a bigger horizon. Yeah, it doesn't have the uh, uh, same strategic horizons, though, in general. Anyway, let's see what this one is. So this is, every year there tend to be some of these in the 7 row as well. Um... And again, there's another jam, which is focused just around these games. So let me see what I have on my mark records here. Full screen and use a special display capture. We're going to full screen this game. Boom, full screen. Switch over to... There we go. Got the size correct for you. And I could leave it on or leave the... I'll take that off and leave the stripes. Okay. This is the game. Magpie. Wait, is there no other instructions for this game? <laughs> One second. Let me unfull screen this. I just forgot to read a game in the Broglike style. Okay, so here it is spelled for you out there. Um, Broglike style. Please take a look at the wonderful games of Michael Brogue. So here right? Here's his, you can check out his, uh, what his, he's got an HIO site as well, which has uh, our page with a lot of his games. I'm sure he's got a billion of them by now. Um, made in Pixie template available on GitHub. There is actually a Broglike template. There it is, uh, which you can see. On GitHub. Sorry, I'm actually switching back to the browser real quick here. Um, uh, that's not a page. Okay, some wait. Someone linked to the wrong thing here. No, never mind. Okay, that's not gonna work. Anyway, yeah, there's a template. Someone made one and put it on there. Uh, I think you can actually check it out from the Roguelike Dev subreddit. Uh, there's also a tutorial for how to make games like this, and so you can actually pretty quickly get one of these up and running. Uh, okay, they did make an update to address a bug. The original submission for judging. Okay, so there's no other explanation. The reason I went back here to look at this is purely because what are we looking at, right? Um, let's see. We're, so we're a magpie here. We want to collect shinies. That's a shiny. That is, okay, that is a worm, which has a health thing on it, which means something tells me it's going to, well, heal us, I guess. Wait, is a sound? audio. I don't hear any audio. You know what? I'm going to restart just in case this audio is, or let me move real quick. There's WASD to move. Okay, that move. Okay, there is audio. Never mind. Okay. Okay, this is, uh, we're just going to figure out the mechanics. I was able to get him by moving into him, but on our left side here, yeah, see here, this is a stick. Our stick on the left side is now broken. <laughs> okay. So this has like directional HP, it looks like. That's my guess, and it shows here a, kind of a symbol to represent that, I guess, where you've got, here's a magpie, attack from the right, attack from the bottom, attack from the top, and we broke our stick. How sad. Uh, wait, I can actually click on these? Why can I click on the stick? A twig. Oh, okay. It tells me info about the twig. So I guess maybe we can even collect twigs. Make our nest? Something like that? Can we click on this? No. 
Okay, we can click on just the twig. Oh, maybe we get more items. Okay, we got a coin, which, oh, our coin is now, it's still, it doesn't, it, it's joined our twig on the north. Are we, we're like making a nest. Next room. And we can't go back into the previous room, but we can go into the next room, and I assume we can go there anytime we want. But if I attack this guy, as long as we hit him first, it's okay. So yeah, tactical planning here. He's going to go here. So if I go here, he goes there. Then we can't actually attack him without getting hit. So we probably want to go this way. Yeah. And see, if I go up, he's going to go there, and then there's no way I could leave. So we would be forced to take a hit if I faced him. Yeah, There's no way to get that heart thing then. Or no, the other heart is probably his life. I was originally thinking we could eat worms for some kind of health, but that is not the case. Michael Rogue is currently working on a sequel to Cinco, pa Cinco Paus. Yeah, that's that's one of his other really popular games, uh, Cinco Paus. I've never actually played that one, though. He has a Patreon. Yeah, he does. That's true, if you want to follow his work. Um, this must be a problem, like, for the Nintendo DS. All right, so... Oh, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, I need to click back in the window for focus. So we can't actually take this guy out unless we wanted to take a hit. But I wonder what... Yeah, I guess that's not helpful in any way. So we're just going to go this way and see two guys here. So we can plan this whole thing out. We can move here. He's going to move here. You can plan them out. And then we're going to go south. He is either going to go that way or south. We don't know which one of those he'll pick. That's where the randomness comes in, I think, here probably. He's going to move here. And then if he moves south... And uh, wait, we're here, there. Then we move here and he moves south. Then we're in trouble. But I don't have a lot of other options. See, if I move here, they're coming closer. I could move up, and then he comes here, and then we attack. And then he moves closer. Wait, if I move up, he's there and there. Attack, he moves there. That's enough time to kill them both. There we go. All right. Still have no, don't have a way to get back our twig. Okay, so localized puzzles. Um... This one's a little more problematic because if I move straight east, this guy is going to be start following us at a range during which I at which I can't attack. So we might want to draw him around this way first. And again, I could plan the whole thing out and look ahead, but I'm not. Uh, all right, he's over there. I can't wait though. That's the thing. There we go. Okay, he went the way I wanted him to go, which is perfect. Oh, now we've got three. All right, so see, I can't take that guy based on the number of spaces we are from him. Can I take the guy to the south? Wow, I can't take either of these guys? Wait a minute. I, I can't actually avoid getting hit here, it seems. If I go here, he goes there, and then I can't move that way. If I go... The only way to basically wait is to kind of attack someone. So if I move south, um, and this guy moves up, I can't move out. I can't leave this corner without getting hit. That's highly unfortunate. Oh, but we have coins. Maybe those help as armor? We lost a stick. All right. Okay, yeah, I need to start looking at my other resources here. I think that might work. We might be able to use coins to block them. Just a guess, because they're on top of our sticks. Um, let's see, like right now, we probably want to get a coin on our left side so they can't get to us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, if I move here, he moves. if I move here and then move south, he goes, I move here, he goes here. I move south, he goes here. I could move north and let him hit me there. Oh, wait a minute. What? We can pick something? Why? Oh, because we got three coins on the bottom side? Maybe every time you get three coins on the bottom, you get an upgrade somehow? Anyway, plus one when damaged. What does that mean? A safety pin. Uh, the, sa the symbol for safety pin is... Oh, it looks like two attacks to the north. Okay, so we can upgrade ourselves. And one attack to the south. <laughs> safety pin. Nice. I like this. We're collecting useful junk... I like it. I like it. Or now we're buying junk with our shinies, maybe. A vial, plus one when damaged. Plus one to what? Does that mean... I'm not sure what it's plusing. Mm -hmm. I can't even tell what that is, so I guess I'll go for this one. But wait, double hits. So we maybe... The, oh, there's going to be definitely enemies that take two hits, for sure. Uh, I'll just take a safety pin. Uh, and then we're going to head north and see what happens. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, it puts it on the south side. Okay, yeah. It showed north, but that's because that was just a general direction. It's actually going to be put on the side um, that you're facing and work in that direction. So we now do two damage to the south. All right, let's find out what happens if we let this stick get hit. Okay, the stick gets hit. Coins are still there. All right, so that's not helpful. Okay, we've learned something. Hmm...
Oh, we found a mouse. Okay, we can double attack to the south, so... Uh, but we can't, yeah, if we wanted to go straight for him, that would be bad, I guess. So, it's a good thing we can do two damage, otherwise we'd have to run from him, or what? <laughs> Still not quite getting it, but I like it more and more. Yeah, I think I'm kind of more or less grasping it. I didn't understand what the vial did, though. Plus one for something. All right, let's see, I'm going to go, um, if I go here, he's going to go there, and I head north. I should be able to kill this guy. Um... Only thing I'm worried about is the mouse. Am I going to... If I move north, I want him to move under me so I can hit him from the, the top. Okay. Well, actually, I can't hit him anyway. Never mind. All right, we can get another item on our right side here. Wait, oh, so this might replace the stick. Oh, and if we get hit from the south, we maybe lose our safety pin. All right, anyway. So a key allows us to hit the person in front of us and to the right of us, which means if we... Re right now, we move to the right which means it's going to replace our stick. And so if the key goes here, it, it'll hit someone to the right and to the south of us if there's two enemies in that arrangement. Glasses allow us... Uh, how does that work? Okay, this one... I don't, wait. If you move... If we move to the right, it would hit both enemies to either side? I feel like that's what that is. Anyway, I'm going to pick that. If this looks like... It, wait, the, the hitting is here, though. Oh, they have to already be next to us? Anyway, being able to hit someone... Uh, glasses is pretty funny as that. All right, so I, I can't really test this yet. Okay. Hmm. This is going to be complicated. <laughs> I, I like the mechanics so far. This is a pretty unique take. Um, being able to collect coins on certain sides and getting abilities for those sides. All right, so this guy, unfortunately, he's three spaces away. I mean, four spaces, so we can't... Uh, attack him without taking hits we'd like lose our glasses hit for two hp so an entire rat that's what it looks like yeah it looks like if we s but what is the i assume this means yeah when we leave so for example if we're standing here and there's a rat next to us and we move away from the rat it takes two damage and we kill it i think that's what that means moving away from them all right um Okay, so the only well, there's a little loop down here we could use. Come down here. I don't know how it's going to help us, though. See, we'd have to plan it out in advance. We move here. He goes here. We move there. He's there. We're there. He's there. We're there. He's there. And then it depends on which way he goes. We'd have to get him to try and follow us and circle around. Hopefully, the, but then this rat during all that is moving. So we're here. Rat goes here. We're here. Rat goes there. We're here. Rat goes there. And we're here. By the time we get down into here, the rat is already over there. That might put us in a bind. It's problematic. Mm, but yeah, can plan it all out technically. Oh, wait, you know, I have another option. If this hit works as it does, no. If we move over, I'm trying to think if we can get this guy next to us, but we can't, not without taking a hit. All right, I guess our only option here to not take a hit is to try and move south. We could find out what happens when we get hit with a stick and a coin on it. It might. What if it only took the coin... It kind of acts as armor for that side, which would be nice. We might be forced to find out what that does in a second. So see, now if I move there, this isn't helpful at all. He's going to move there. We're just going to be surrounded by two enemies that I can't get past. I think I should move west and let him hit me. Okay, it broke the stick, but the coin is still intact. Now we can find out what happens to the rat. Boom! Glasses. Oh, yeah, we just glasses the rat. Oh, and he gave us a coin, too. Rats drop coins. So now we can take the north side and replace our broken stick with, oh, wow, more glasses or a key. Hmm. So right now, if we move to the right, we hurt, hit for two. If we, we could do this and move, uh, moving north would also do for two. Or this, which is attack north and to the side. Both of these are good. I'm just going to take this. All right, we need to replace our left side so that we can uh, not... Uh, I assume if we get hit on the left now, we die. That's my guess. Okay, unfortunately, I can't move down and hurt the rat. I can only move right and up. That's that's sad. Oh, down can hit for twice, though. Defeat with style, yeah. Okay, that did actually work out pretty well. Um, we took one damage but we replace the stick so honestly you can intentionally lose that but we do need to regain some coins 
All right, so anyway, we move there. He's going to be there, there. Are we going to get cut off by this guy down here? We can hit the rat, but we'll take one damage. I don't think we should get hit from the left side, but I really want to know what happens. My guess is we lose. We already lost the, the thing that's there, which means we'll die. And I'd rather not die. We'll, we'll prove that lit theory later. We're going to make that assumption for now. This still lasts longer. So I can't attack him until we can hit him for two. And the only way to do that is if he's below us or we can move away from him in an up, upward or rightward direction. It's going to be kind of problematic. Because we can't attack this guy. We'll try and go south, circle around. Okay, this is going to be an issue. We might just lose our glasses. Oh, or not. Or they might go that way. There was a 50% chance, I guess. This guy, if he went south, we would have lost our glasses. Uh, he didn't, though. So we should be able to just kill this guy now. Wait. Oh, that's the wrong direction. I have to go right in order to do that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I forgot. I can go up and right to kill this rat. But we can't go up and right right now. Uh, oh, anyway, we can go up right now. Now he's dead. Die. There. Wait, what? Why didn't he die? Did this guy have... Wait. Oh! Oh. Whoops. I just lost my glasses for no reason. I forgot. You can no longer bump. You this The stick ability is to bump hit. We lost that ability on the right side. Hmm. All right. So I can either work on the left here or try to upgrade my glasses. I think it makes more sense. I don't know. To upgrade the stick, it's hard to say. Um... Whoa! Uh-huh. That's what I was wondering. Okay. I was wondering about this. I don't know what floors they started on, but check out what's outside the gate now. There's a cat with four hit points. <laughs> so we've got a cat chasing us. There needs to be... There usually is some kind of time pressure in a Um In This has come later than I feel than that you see in most games. Like the other game I was showing you, Seven Scrolls, the time pressure is... More and more enemies start teleporting in. The longer you're there, more and more come in. And sometimes that can be an advantage because you can take resources from them, but eventually you can be overwhelmed. So it becomes more and more dangerous and each floor becomes risk reward scenario. So this is what's happening on this floor. We do have a, a, a kind of a time limit before a larger, more dangerous enemy comes in that prevents you from you know, abusing terrain to try to get maximum advantage in all situations. Um, so yeah, that's what the danger here. All right, cat is now here. And we're going to leave. But instead of trying to figure out the optimal way to grab that, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> um, we couldn't actually get the right side. That would have been impossible. We didn't have time. Three golden coin. I'm assuming that's going to give us three or something. No, it gives us a gold coin. Hmm. Interesting. I guess that's going to give us access to better abilities on that side, perhaps. <laughs> Nerds can't take direct hits to the face. Sticks and stones will break the glasses. Math checks out. Yeah. We're magpie. Oh, oh, oh. There's an otter down here. <laughs> um, it's interesting you can click on, well, just the, the abilities um, to remind you of what they are. That's good that there's a way to do that. But you can't click on anything else for other information or whatever. Overall, not bad. I like this. This is pretty interesting. Um, I'd play this on my phone too. Let's see. So how are we going to puzzle through this one? We can actually, uh, if his distance is off, unfortunately. Otherwise, we could directly attack him with our safety pin. Kill, our, kill the otter with a safety pin. <laughs> unfortunately, we cannot do that. So what are we going to do instead? Uh, we can't, can't directly go for him. We have to indirectly... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Move here? Yeah, I can't do that. He's going to start going north. This guy's going to go either this way or this way. We don't know. This guy, one. We can't even get this guy. Can we get any of them? We're in a bad situation overall. Position-wise, going to have to rely on abilities. Going to lose abilities. Um. Yeah, so there's no way around this at the... Um, Gonna take a hit here, which will destroy our safety pin. Hmm, that's bad. Okay, safety pin is destroyed. Wait, but we still have the ability, I guess? It's okay, the safety pin. So we keep the ability. 
you keep the ability it doesn't mean you can't use it i guess that makes sense we should have known that because like the stick ability i guess that still exists too i I don't think i've used it in that direction but you keep the ability but you do take the hit on that side and so what the game is doing is if you take the hit you're forced to expend you're forced to get rid of your tools in order to heal that side so you might have a nice tool do you keep the tool or uh do you heal yourself to protect from further attacks right now we're clearly going to attack this guy (laughs) And these guys should come around the corner. Oh no. Okay. Uh, I can't escape this now. Some of this comes down to really where they move. And this is a 50-50 chance, I think. In in most roguelikes, that's the way it works. It's 50-50 chance on where they're going to go. Like, if I move to the west, is he going to go west or is he going to go south? That's one of the things you don't know. But it can have a massive, massive impact on the outcome. Uh, which is unfortunate. <laughs> so anyway, I can go south and the worm will be here. But... If I um, then if I attack the worm, I'll get attacked from the top and then lose, and then my glasses take damage. Hmm. So one option is to go south. He'll come this way, and then we can either go. If we go west, then he has an f- option to either go north or west to block us. If he goes north, we're free for free. If he goes west, we're blocked, and that's not good. But then, if the, depending on what the otter does, if they're both in top and bottom of us, we could move to the right and kill both of them. So, let's see what happens. Whoa, what? I... what happened? I pressed... I definitely pressed S to go downward. I have no idea what that was. I pressed S to go downward. Anyway, these... that's weird. It made me attack the guy to the north. And no, I didn't press W. Hmm... 99% sure I didn't press W. <laughs> I did have my hand off the keyboard and put it back on to do that, but I found my finger on the S key when that happened. Weird. Uh, I meant to go south. So, anyway, he died, but we got our glasses broken. Branch. Oh, better than twig. And fork. Oh, check out the fork. Huh. Well, enemies, though, are having more health is kind of problematic. The only time you would want to do this is if, for example... There's an enemy next to you, which is definitely going to die. And the ones next to him, you know, you want at least damage, if not kill. But if the one next to you has got more hit points, you can't really use that one. Branch allows us to attack. Is a similar scenario. Anyway, we are going to... I really like doing being able to shoot damage by moving by guys. But um, we need to start healing our sides. So, oh, wait, this is our left side. That's what we're replacing. So this is actually a good replacement. It's pure, pure good for us here. Oh, we'll take the fork. We now have a fork. And we're leaving, apparently, before bad things happen. Okay. Fork. Nice. All right, we can't move east and take this guy out. That's not an option. We can go south. Move here. He's going to go there. We're here. He's there. We're down one again. Wait, what happens there? We move there. He moves here or there. Down again. He moves adjacent. Okay, we want to go down. That will allow us to kill this guy. Then he'll move there. Another option is moving east. And then south and east. No, that won't work. We can basically just get this guy. Then there's this guy to our north. Um, hmm. We might want to move south and try and take advantage of our right attack ability to kill this guy. Uh, The north attack won't be useful in this case. shoot I was thinking moving right but that mouse was there okay if we move south oh no all right I think we're gonna die wait wait a minute what was that okay first of all we lost that which is that's new information we you can you then lose the ability and it becomes a regular attack like the original twig now I pressed down and it made me get attacked Okay, so apparently there's a rule in this game you can't retreat from an enemy like that? They catch you? You can't directly retreat, but you can move sideways away from an enemy? Because, yeah, now I'm 100% sure I moved away and it didn't let me get away from this guy. Instead, he got to attack me and I attacked him. Do I have... Oh! All right, I hit him because of this. Oh, it's my ability. I did not realize the safety pin is hitting behind me, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking only of the double damage. I totally over saw, overlooked this, and this means you can't retreat from enemies on the top of you. 
It's not an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I just realized it's this ability. My own ability is preventing me from getting away. But if I move south once more, it's going to kill him. And then this guy is going to take out our glasses on the east side. But yeah, this ability is doing it. All right, we killed him. Okay, and at, least, at least now I know what's going on. And now I can kill this guy in one hit. And we got some more stuff. I could have made, basically, I could have tried to do that. Anyway, let's, uh, okay, so we get two hits on each side. The first one is free. The second one loses your ability. And obviously it makes us a little weaker. Okay, so the goal here, we need to hope he allows us around him. He did. Well, I can actually kill this guy in one hit. And if I do, he's going to move here. Do I take the opportunity? I took the opportunity. And if I want, I can move south and uh, repair or get, I would get a new thing here, which I don't know if that's a good thing yet. We could, if we can take this guy, I can move this way. I can move this way and take him out. Boom! Oh, yeah. All right, safety pin. We can replace it with a CD. Oh, wow. So check out this pattern. So according to this pattern, if we try to move forward, it, you can't move forward if there's an enemy in any of these, any of these locations because it will attack them, I think. And a shell. Fragile. Okay, so fragile, my assumption is if it gets hit once, it's immediately broken. Um, but it does three damage to whatever's in front of you. Mm, I do like shot. I do like three damage. The CD is kind of cool, though. Also, it seems like it could be problematic. This could work against you as much as it works for you. Mm. Anyway, it's going to replace our safety pin, which honestly I really like. But I'm going to take that. And then we're going to get a new ability, either glasses or vial. All right, now let's see if we can decipher what this means. Plus one when damaged. You attack. This has got to be a good thing. And it'll you do one damage to an enemy. Plus one what? Right, plus one damage. You attack. I don't. I still don't get what this does. I guess we could pick it and find out. But I mean, I like to like. I love glasses. I'd prefer to just pick something I know what it does. Yeah, I don't understand that. Also, okay, we now have a new indicator. I like this. It's showing we uh, will die if we get it from the north side because we lost the item there and we're now open and red. Not red anymore. We're gonna get. Ooh, two new items. We got gold in here, which gives us better upgrades. Um, plus one damage from the broken glass. I'm no, unknown. Lollipop. One damage in front of you and two damage to whatever's behind it. Staple. Wow, check that staple out. <laughs> Big old area of effect there. Lollipop. So yeah, gold is starting to give you some better. I like the fact that it's not just all silver. Uh, and there's some different tiers. Uh, shinier, shi uh, shinier coins here, nicer coins give you uh, shinier objects, right? Cool. I like the theming of the game. It's it's done very nicely. Lollipop. I kind of like this one. It's hard to tell, actually. This this arrangement's probably even more common. But again, the only it's it's you don't always want to take guys on head on. It's more dangerous because. Uh, they're going to hit you unless you kill them. So you only really want to do this against something you will kill. And it might hurt the guys off to the side who might be there. Which is, it's a fairly good coverage for extra cells. This one here is, okay, two damage that's more concentrated. All right, I'm going to take the staple just because it's interesting. Okay, so given our new ability. So, you know, as you can see in here, our abilities keep changing and we're, uh, uh, yeah, just what you're capable of keeps changing throughout and you're forced to change throughout. Uh, in fact, wow, this is reminding me a lot of Cogmind. <laughs> Not that you're 100% forced in Cogmind. There's ways to try and avoid that as you get more and more skilled. But that's the idea. Is as you're going through the game, you're taking damage and also your abilities are, are changing. Your capabilities are changing, but uh, you lose old abilities and gain what are not necessarily new abilities. But also your abilities are your health. Uh, same thing in Cogmind. In Cogmind, you've got your items. Your items are your health, your integrity. This is like Cogmind in broguelike form. <laughs> I kind of like it. Maybe that's why I like it. <laughs> it feels very dynamic. Uh, what I, I still don't like, again, I mean, that's just personal preference. I don't like the more puzzlers aspects of, of these games on super coarse grids. I prefer uh, more roguelike, finer grids. All right. So, 
roll with the punches type gameplay exactly roll with the punches and uh yeah and just and the, to, per- personally i think that's very much in the roguelike spirit is you know it's supposed to be uh, an experience of rolling with the punches not the more standard crpg aspect which some roguelikes emphasize which is you know you're building your character you're getting you know you're getting stronger and stronger with new abilities and you keep using the same abilities and you know newer abilities that build on that throughout the entire game that's more of an rpg like experience as opposed to uh uh roguelikes which are more about like adapting and and to to new and different situations right that's where the whole procedural generation idea comes in you're you're faced with um, new and different and interesting situations but some people like to go into that with you know a character that they built up and they're very familiar with that doesn't change too much um so you've got a more a static ish character who does grow but they're still more or less static ish and they're going up against different um threats it's probably you could say it's less complicated than a character that keeps changing and here we've got our magpie we we're changing a lot as we move and it's changing how we have to think about these situations um um quite a lot um so yeah it's 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 a two different uh two different uh ways of uh designing things for sure all right so to get back to this um so if i move north and this guy goes here if i move north again do i hurt him this is unfortunately this is kind of an experiment earlier if i tried to move away from someone the fact that it had a damage thing in behind me meant i didn't even move which means if i move forward here and there's someone standing here doesn't that mean i attack them if i'm wrong i'll actually just i'm just going to lose my glasses because i'll move forward and take damage but this is where this is worth testing Let's see what happens. It worked. It works. Really worked. Perfect. Okay. So that's something to remember. And I like that. Uh, that was that was the predicted result based on, you know, what happened in the past. And it actually did play out that way. I assume it's more like puzzle rather than roguelike if the player character doesn't change very much. Um, well, not really. I mean, the, it's not necessarily. I mean, because your environment... Really, roguelikes can definitely, you know, you're, as long as your environment is changing and, and you know, procedurally generated environment with kinds of challenges, that's still not necessarily puzzle-like. And, you know, by not changing character, we're not saying completely unchanging, you're still growing, gaining abilities and whatnot. Just more RPG. But, yeah, the range on the staple is pretty good. Honestly, this can stop us. In fact, like, see, right now, I want to move to the east. In fact... Oh, that's to the north side, though. And remember, it's only to the north. I like the directionality of the abilities. It, the thing is, this does really make movement that much more complicated. <laughs> What's ideal movement? All right, so right now I want to move right, which should I should be able to move right. And then he's going to move left, and I can kill him with this ability, the glasses. Yes, he died to the glasses. And if I wanted to, right now I could move right, and kill him with a shell. Just like that. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Um, okay. So next long-term plan. One, he's here. He's here. We can't attack him directly head on. His distance from us is wrong. Although, actually, wait. No, it depends on where he moved. Uh, I wonder, okay, new new question. Can this attack through walls or not? My guess is yes, but can't be sure about that. Because see, it's two spaces away. Like, for example, I'm here and I'm going to move south and the enemy's there. Does it hit the enemy or not? Do not know. Can't make a clear assumption on that one. All right, so this guy over here, if we move there, he's there, there, he's there. We can't get next to that guy either. Hmm, basically on our abilities here. Staple is pretty decent, but only attacking to the north, so it's less used to us now. But it can actually affect routing. Like, we might want to come further south specifically so that we can, like, further south in case the rat decides to come from the north-ish so we can move north and hit him, but... He... All right. One, two, one. I'm just going to maybe move one space and see what they do. That'll kind of change up the dynamics and set another turn in stone so that we can plan a little closer rather than guessing because if there's too many guesses out we don't know what they're going to do 
at, you know, if there's like five or six steps between us and the enemy and they have multiple choices along the way, what's possible is going to keep changing. So I don't think it's really worth waiting and thinking too long on, for example, that, well, that situation right there, because there's no immediate threats. So, but every turn does count. Hmm. Hmm. Move here, 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 here. Over there, he's over there. I can hit this guy for one before the mouse arrives using the fork. If I'm standing here, as he comes north, I'll hit him once. But then the rat will be next to us But right after I do that. Because if I move one here and one here, the rat is here, here. He's, one, he's got one space between us. This guy moves here. Then we attack left and hit him with a fork. And then the rat has a chance to move next to us. And then I move away from the rat. Um, in one direction or another. Depends on how he comes. We could try that attack. Really, the thing is, we don't have to attack, kill everyone. I've been purely thinking about trying to get everything, but we don't necessarily have to do that. Also, we can take a hit on either any side now and be fine. So, but we have no really efficient way of killing stuff to the east of us right now, anyway. So here, another turn is set in stone. Uh, what I was thinking of is moving south here. He's going to definitely come north. We know that much. And then we attack west with the fork. And then this guy I'll bandage to get next to us. Okay, so if I attack west now, he's going to make his move. And then we have the option to kill him. Oh, shoot. Um, that was a mistake. Whoops. I made that, made, made, I made that action way too fast. Uh, randomly, one to three damage next to you. Uh... <laughs> Shoot, I replaced my staple too. Safety pin. Safety pin, I think, is a really dangerous item because it means you can't run directly away from away from anything. I'm gonna pick the random one to three damage. Anyway. Alright, I shouldn't have done I should have I should have replaced the dice though. I was supposed to I should have replaced the fork um earlier. I was already planning on doing that. I replaced the staple, I mean, with the dice. Dice is nice, one to three. No, anyway, I shouldn't have taken that action too quickly. Overall, it played out sort of okay. All right, there's an owl with that takes three hits. Imagine dealing with that guy if we didn't have a three damage thing. Okay, so anyway, if I go here, he's there. Anyway, these enemies are always starting in a bad spot for us. <laughs> I wonder how intentional that is. He's directly below us, which is great, but I can't hit him without him hitting us first. And the shell is fragile, which means as soon as he hits it, it's going to break, which means we can't let him hit our shell. Hmm. So the only way to get him is to spend a turn on this guy, which will get him within the right number of turns from us. If we waste a turn somehow, we can hit this guy with a shell from the north. So how do we kill this guy? Move there. If we can get north of this rat and move east, he's dead. Or I can kill him with this, actually. Pins you in very unsafe situations, the safety pin. It does. <laughs> All right, so I think right now we could head... So shoot, this is bad timing. Oh, we can actually kill both of them with the shell. I can move here, kill him with the shell when he moves north, and then move... Then we'll be the right number of turns away from this guy. I think. Yeah. Done. And then I can replace our fork. with a safety pin or oh look at the straw <laughs> i think <a> straw <laughs> straw is not that shiny and then we could go grab this if we wanted to the cat's not arriving yet let's uh let's just grab that it's not gonna replace anything just yet oh man a fox and an owl and they're all on the wrong side of us we have a one to three random damage to the north with our dice which means we have a 33 percent chance to kill this guy that doesn't seem good Hmm. We can, so there's two options here. One is to move west and hope that he moves this way. Because if he does, then we can just leave and don't have to fight anything, which honestly right now seems like a good move. Because we could even take this on the way out and literally we just get plus one and don't take any hits. The other option is to roll the dice and try to kill him. And he'll damage our dice. There's a 60, there's, you know, two thirds chance he's going to damage our dice or die here instead. And which, no other rules on that, right? Just randomly one to three damage. 
Um, there's two thirds chance he'll just, he'll damage it, and then the second hit, there's a pretty good chance we'll kill him within the second hit. But if we don't, then he destroys our dice, or die, and we have to kill him on the third hit. By then, this guy is one, two, three, right next to us. Wait, one. Wait, we attack. He's here. We attack again. He's here. On the third hit, he arrives. Hmm. That puts us in a bad spot. The other option is to move west. And if we move west, this guy, if he moves west, then we're in an even worse spot <laughs> than right now. We've lost the advantage and the turn advantage of killing him before the fox gets here. Honestly, even if it takes two turns to kill him, this guy moves here and here, we still can't get away from the fox. In fact, two turns is a bad number of turns. We need to kill this guy on the first turn. <laughs> the HP allocation is puzzling when cat has one worm worth of hit points. Then a fox, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cats. Hmm. All right, so... Let's see. So either you risk it, or you risk that, or we move west and hope that he comes down. Um... It'd be either there or there. Then we can... I mean, honestly, if we move this way and he comes, doesn't come down, he goes that way, we can move back that way and have a second chance that he comes down. Because I don't think that he's going to try and stay on the same side of us. They don't normally do that in this style of game. The thing is, I don't know exactly what it's going to do. We have This is the first, literally the first run, so we don't under, understand the mechanics of how these guys are going to move in response to you. But if he does move down, then we're, oh, we're still not free to go up anyway. Because he'll be right next to us, and we just need to move over to the west. So no matter what, we're going to get hit. Ah, oh, shoot. I kind of want to roll the dice, even though I wish I didn't have to. Boom. Roll the dice. He's dead. All right, here the option is we can actually put this coin on our left side or the top side. Either one. Um, roll the dice, and he's dead. Uh... It's either, you know, you don't want to spread it out or not. I wonder if you get three, you have to get three golds on one side and you get a pick from an even better uh, group of stuff, which is kind of interesting. In other words, do I want to try and pile on the silver here? You know, you get, there's a lot of different reasons I can see, strategic reasons for wanting to put stuff on one side versus another. Okay, now our exit is blocked by owl and fox. Okay, we can move sideways to hurt him, perhaps. We can do two damage to the north as well. Oh, no, wait, what? Why does this say two? What's up with that? It was three earlier. Randomly one to three damage. This, this showed three dots earlier, I'm pretty sure. Now it only shows two dots. Why? Does it only have three uses? No. Or am I totally seeing things and it used to show two dots as well? I'm for average damage or something like that. The roll. Oh, that's it. Ma'am figured it out. It's got to be it. The roll happens on level start. Ah, oh, I thought it was. So this guy, this thing would have already done three damage. It's static. Uh, it'd be nice if it tells us that randomly one to three damage, you know, um, it rolls it rolls on you know figure out a, a short wording for that i don't know if they ever do more than one line for descriptions but um it looks like there's it's pretty dynamic so there'd be space for that randomly one to three damage um you know rolled on new map something like that whatever would work but uh yeah that's nice to know i mean or i mean the game seems to also be about figuring out some things so Hmm. So, okay, yeah, now it does two damage. So it was three earlier because it would always do three. I assumed the three was representative of the fact that it was anywhere from one to three uh, instead of actually three. So it's been determined it's going to be two. That's not bad. It's not helpful here, though. <laughs> Unfortunately, this guy, these guys are located at a wrong distance, as usual. I wonder if the game does that on purpose or not. Okay, so we need to move... What can I do here? Hmm. This is going to be painful, I think. Up here, he's going to come either down there or over there. I don't really know exactly. I don't, don't, 
basically what we want to do in this situation is optimize our movement for the abilities that we have in each direction in terms of the possibilities it'll give us like we don't if you wanted to try and draw them in here and move around do you want to be more likely to move right when they come in or more likely to move left our powerful abilities are move right ability here in terms of right and left up down we also got to kind of consider but it's less important here because they're coming from the top side anyway so uh, but it would could matter a little for example if you want to try to circle around the top side but it's not going to be helpful you can't really circle enemies in this so it's either left or right, and we do more from the left to right movement. Uh, so we don't, we're not eager to get over to the right. We could intentionally take a hit here. If I move north, I'm assuming this guy's going to come south, unfortunately. He won't line up behind this guy. He's going to go for an open route, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure. Which means... The ideal option here of moving north one, taking a hit, and then moving east to instead to, to hit that guy. Actually, wait, if that hit doesn't kill, do we move in that direction still? Does it have to kill to move? It might. I don't know. Because earlier we did move when we killed, didn't we? Or did we not? You know what? I think maybe we didn't, so it's not a good idea. Shoot, that doesn't work either. Hmm... This is tough to get out of. We could just a straight up attack north. It'll take two turns. Hmm. You don't see this working. We're about to lose from the north side, I think. The other option is to move to the right. Try to move. If I use this ability, it's going to damage him for two. This guy will come south. And then I can attack him to the north. And then we can uh, move north. Kill the fox. Okay. So now, we have to, um, what I really want is to restore our north side, which is weak. Which means I have to take all the moves to come down here. Oh, I just pressed the wrong button. Oh my god. Oh, shoot. Okay, so apparently these have smaller fonts and there's more room for longer descriptions. It looks like they're only using one line. Just going back to the idea of should they make the other one longer, but it would still require two lines. Anyway, that totally, I just totally screwed that up. The whole point of my, I was planning on going right. And I, all I did was rest my hand on the keyboard without intending to press it. But my keyboard is actually very sensitive to touch and it moved me down. <laughs> uh, ah, man, I have a pretty, uh, a very touch sensitive keyboard. That was not cool. Um, while I was talking, I had my hand off the keyboard. I need to be more careful about that. The intent there was to move around and get that from the bottom side, which there was plenty of time to do. That would repair our north side and give us something new there and leave our shell, which is really good. Now, the good thing is, I guess there's one good side to this. We just have three gold things on the south side, which means I think these are the, among the most valuable items you can get. When picked, plus one max HP or plus two points. Huh, plus one max HP, what is our HP? When you get hit from an unprotected side, maybe we have more than one hit point? Unknown, when picked, when picked plus one minute. All right, so when picked, um, plus two points. Well, I don't care about scores, so give me the growth. Oh, check it out. We now have two hearts. Okay, that's cool. Sadly, um, it's still I still wanted to get that on the north side just to protect us, but I, honestly, the HP is helpful, and now we do two damage to the south with this growth egg. <laughs> Triple gold. Three gold science, worth it. You know what? I completely agree on that note. Uh, three gold science is worth it. Um, on we go. Uh, yeah, we did learn something new there by getting three gold, so I mean, I'm happy about it in that regard. Now we've got a fox and an otter playing around here. Okay, two attack to the south. That's not fragile. If I move east, if he moves over, we can actually... So I guess it wouldn't kill him, and we would take damage from that. Hmm. At least we're in a decent spot for this, but we can't do the damage we need to do. Probably just going to attack him anyway. Okay. Yeah, we don't have to attack, but no. If I move over, it's going to be bad. We're just going to have to face him anyway. If we kill this guy, we'll have to we'll have an option to avoid him if we want to. 
so I think we're going to have to attack. Two options for that. We can actually move, try to move east. That'll attack. We can also just attack directly south. Take one damage. And another gold coin. Okay. Hmm. I kind of want to grab this coin too and before we leave, but I can't do that without getting attacked by him. We can't get both of these coins. Well, wait, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, we can't get both. We can take this and leave. Certainly not going to be doing a bunch of extra moves here. We, or we can get lucky and uh, come down here and he stays on that side of us. If I move... Hmm. We could get unlucky though and get trapped and then the cat comes in when we're trying to get out. Oh, actually, wait, I can... I can no, I can't kill him because he's his distance is wrong. All right. It's nice having these extra hearts though. Hmm. Um We could also get another we've never used the straw once. I was gonna say we can move down here and this way and then get an extra straw, but or, or change our straw into something. Honestly, I don't think that's gonna help. I think we'll just leave. Because we can't get it on our north side, which is where I really want it. free gold coin so every x floors or so there's a free gold coin it's only showing a score interestingly there's no level counter uh, i kind of wish there was to see exactly how many floors we've gone through uh no level counter though i'm gonna take uh gold coins gonna go where we could oh we know north side for sure it's not gonna be as valuable on the north side but um like on the south if we started to pile up the gold on the south even though it'll replace something that's decent we could actually get yet another plus hp type thing right but i think it would want to protect our north side and get something new cd light bulb plus two when damaged then maybe it means plus two damage uh the plus it probably means it does more double damage when you but oh oh now i get it when damaged means when it gets hit up here so your your perfect light bulb does one damage but once it gets hit on that side you do three damage. <laughs> more glass shards, yes. I like more glass shards. CD is kind of cool, but I like the idea of hitting something with a broken light bulb. <laughs> okay, so right now it does one damage, and it's going to do three damage once you get hit. <laughs> yeah, after broken more power. Well, this one made sense. Didn't the other one, the vial though, what was the vial again? Plus one, I forget, plus one on when you're hit. I, oh, that was probably... Oh, it's the same thing then. See, the light bulb to me made more sense purely because I, you know you think of broken light bulbs and using them to stab things. The vial made a little less sense there, but you know what? I think the vial is just a, a weaker light bulb. It was plus one when damaged. It meant plus one attack. Because yeah, the vials, also, vials are also glass and also very, very sharp and dangerous when they're damaged. But normally I think of, I, I'm more likely to think of a light bulb in that sen in sense, I guess, than a vial. But now it makes sense. The vial does that. That's... Uh, Interesting. The damaged is this damage here. Yeah, it's still alive and going well. I wonder uh, how well we're doing compared to other players. This is our first run still. I thought we were going to die a bunch early on because to be honest, and roguelikes I tend to die fairly early-ish while learning the mechanics, but not this one apparently. Um, it's done. I like the design. It's designed pretty well. Uh, okay. So two health. I like two health guys because they're easy to kill. One, hmm, not being able to attack directly is unfortunate, but, and I like how the fact that when you come into, you come into and out of floors in different directions, which very much changes what you're capable of doing in those floors, because, like, we haven't used our straw, but that's because we honestly have so far been doing a lot of leading levels le right, like, um, to the right or up or something, less coming from the right, uh, which we'd start to actually need this more. Uh, we haven't even used it once still. Sometimes you have a choice because you can circle around things uh, or have a, ch a chance to reposition, but not always. All right. Um, broken. Okay. Anyway, we can't. We have a bad, bad spot versus this guy. Mm, yeah, I agree. The design, it has the right amount of obfuscation where it's satisfying to figure stuff out. Yeah, uh, there's definitely too little and too much of that. And uh, you see the whole see the whole spectrum. This one's about in the middle. I like it. And it's, it's intentionally designed with that in mind, uh, the obfuscation part. So they uh, really went all in on it. And it's kind of neat like that. 
Okay, so it comes up here. We're here. We can't wait. Wait. Oh, we can wait. What? Oh, he's the right distance. We can move next to him. He's got an extra space there. So that's only, yeah, we can take him out. Oh, but I don't have anything. Oh, I can move here and kill him. If we move straight east, I can get this guy when he comes up. Then we have to deal with him as well, which is less straightforward. But then we could even circle around and just leave if we want to. We wouldn't get this and might not and might not get any drop from him. I don't think the two these guys don't necessarily drop something though, do they? Alright, let's go let's go east and get him with the egg. Oh man, he just dropped a gold? Uh we can go around and grab the gold, maybe. Uh, I'm afraid the cat'll come, but if we do, theoretically we can go around and around and around. I don't know if we have that many moves available. We're going to find out. See, right now we have the option to leave. He is greeting it. Okay, we're going to, we can replace the, okay, so these are better, I guess. Well, better in quotes. Um, sometimes they could work against you. But there's a CD, which is kind of neat. I think the problem with the CD is it's kind of interesting. You can use it, you can't, see, if you have a CD on one side, you can't use it to attack an adjacent enemy, I guess, which means you're out of luck if something gets strong that's next to you. You have to pair it with something that attacks like in another direction or you can move sideways. So you could do one damage to a three hit point enemy and then do two damage from by moving a different way. Hmm. In fact, this might allow me... No, this left side, so we won't be able to use that. And the fork. Fork, I think, is a little safer. Take a fork. And then we can also go around that way. If I go east, he'll attack. So the other option is I'm just going to try to run away this way. I really hope he doesn't move south. He heard that. All right, he went back. We we're lucky that way. That's what the cat is also here for and the pressure is that if you, it, they have a chance of choosing each direction, it seems. So you can keep moving back and forth to get the option you want. And so it's kind of risky to keep doing that. Still going. 49 score. Whatever that means for us. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, I'm curious what will actually do us in. Uh, so far, I, I want, considering the cat is for health, there's only, maybe, what if you, what if the goal is to take out a cat? No, there is no goal. That's right. That's unfortunate. I really wish there was a goal. I think it I think it specified there wasn't, right? In uh, standard roguelike tradition. So I'm wondering what happens if you do take out a cat, though. <laughs> Makes one curious. Probably nothing. I mean, it would give you like a gold drop or something, but eh, it might be something worth testing out later. If a good position presents itself. All right, so anyway, one we're here, one we're here. We have we have the jump on these guys, but this is coming left, which were is less good. No goal, only gold, right? <laughs> we have no options. Our left options are not great. We only have good uh, right and down options. Our bulb is not yet broken. Uh, couldn't use it anyway. Our left option is the weakest. Unfortunately, this friggin' fox coming here. Um, move there. Move there. Move there. Hmm. Feel like I'm gonna lose an egg here. If I move there, he's there. Move. Wanted to lock in that turn and see what they were gonna do. Guess we also have to figure out what we're gonna do about that guy later. Here's where the staple would come in handy. Staple would be really good against this, actually. We can kill all these guys with the staple <laughs> as they're approaching. Mm. Okay, so if I move left, this guy will move over, unfortunately. And yeah, that won't work very well. If I move south, eh, that's not good either. Shoot. Overall, a bad situation. Can't stay lucky forever. Oh, we could move right, and then if he moves here, we can actually move right, as long as that's not going to mess us up, and do two damage to him. That'll work. And then turn around and kill him. 
I think that works. The only thing you have to be wary of is, again, if or is the move going to stop you? Oh, it is going to stop us. If I move left, he moves here, and I try to move right, it hurts him, but we don't move because we attacked him. We'll stay there, and we'll get hit by two different guys. Our fork will be damaged, and so will our, and our egg will be destroyed. Hmm. So that's not a good move, actually. Hmm. Tough to say. What would work here? Hmm. Good luck. You try to lock in another turn and see what happens. But now it's going to be pretty obvious. Like if I move south, these guys are just going to come straight for us. Probably. He might come south. It doesn't matter. If we can go east, try to circle around this. These come closer. Don't know which. If we, we can't go south and try to. We could go south and grab that and replace the egg. Not that that's going to help us because it's a downward facing thing. Yeah, I still don't see any advantages to doing this. Hmm. It's kind of unfortunate because both of these guys are the proper range from us for us to attack them. Or to get the first hit, right? Which is really important. Hmm. Right now, a branch would actually be nice. No, actually. Oh, well, yeah, no. Not unless you always had a fork. Doesn't work. Hmm. Don't see a good option here. I mean, I'm always trying to avoid getting hit, and I'm not usually calculating that into strategies. Now that I don't see an option to get past all this without getting hit, we have to start thinking about, okay, what's the strategy for getting hit? What's the, uh, the, the lowest cost for taking these guys out? Gonna take two damage. Took two damage. And now we have the option of killing the snake and then replenishing, going south and getting a new ability. What if getting hit makes us more powerful though? Hmm. Well, if it rev if it opens up a side and then we get something else, it can, sure, right? Okay, so if I want, do I want to go south for this guy? One, he's there, five, no, wait. Uh, if I go there, he's there. Hmm. I was just curious if right now I should try to take this guy out. And actually, I think I should, maybe. Okay. We got two gold and a silver. That gets us a knife, which is three damage adjacent. Or a pawn. Ooh. Pawn. Wow. Three damage diagonal. Hmm. Interesting. And this is going to go on our bottom side. Three damage. Hmm. Really tough call. I'm always scared of getting these abilities. You could get really messed up. Um, but they can also be really powerful, right? Just not being able to what's attack, well, not being able to attack what's on a certain side from you can feels like it can be pretty dangerous. This is just so much simpler. Hmm. Simplicity or absolute obliteration. Hmm. For two different guys. Hmm. It's on the south side. I'm gonna take the safe route. Okay. Our new option here is shoot. Our, our left side is completely open. I can go south and hope he moves this way and move away from him. One of those guys should get next to us and I should be able to take him out. Yeah, I think. Oh, but it won't. Oh, no, 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 that won't work. If I move south and he moves east and this guy moves south, if I try to move east, he'll kill me. Because he'll die, but he's still on, he's on our weak side. All right, the other option is just kill this guy and then circle away from this guy who's going to be at the wrong distance from us. Shoot. If I move over here, there's a good chance he's going to block. All right, that's the wrong side. Anyway, part of the reason for coming here is to see if I could grab this. Unfortunately, I need three more coins on the left to block that side. Fortunately, we have a heart. Two hearts, in fact. Plus two, so I'm assuming we lose... Each heart is a separate hit we can block. All right, silver on the right. If I grab it, we have to do another circle and hope we can get away. I think I'm going to leave it there. Because we already had to do one circle. I don't want to do another circle. Okay. Um, one possibility here is to try to kill this guy with our knife. But if he moves to the west of us, we're going to be in big trouble. 
neither of these are in a good distance from us to attack him. Also, there's a coin here, which... Oh, yes. Knife him. Knifed. Okay. Now, what I want to do is move east and hope he moves west. <laughs> We're doing a lot of hoping here. Oh. Yes. Okay. The bad part here is I can't take out the last guy safely. Um... Can I, uh, I should be able to take this guy out now. All right, the question is, do I want to take, where do I want to take him out, basically? And I think I want to take him out here so that I can get coins on my left side. I'm going to let him hit my knife. Left side protected by either a toffee apple or a knife. <laughs> toffee apple looks pretty decent. I'm going to get another knife. <laughs> We are one dangerous magpie. <laughs> oh, and uh, we can replace our glasses here if we want to. I really kind of like the glasses, but they're also problematic. The, uh, again, the idea of mm, yeah, attacking adjacents and not moving. Hmm. All right, let's, we can't do anything here but really attack. So let's, uh, let's move to the east. Grab us. Yeah. Grab us a pencil. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> a safety pin. I... I'm not a big fan of safety pin, not being able to run directly away. I pr prefer the pencil. Oh, sadly, that's not going to help us right now. I wish this guy was behind him, but... Huh, can't have everything. Damn. Our knife, our knives are facing the wrong direction. I think this could be a problem. But I don't see... It wouldn't be good for us to move north, so... We have only have two options here. Well, we could retreat, but that leaves us even fewer op tactical options. So we're going to definitely want to attack this worm. And then be scared. Because <laughs> this is not a good position to be in. Uh, we might have to just... I'd say retreat. Our knife's going to go down, and then we can't attack. So see, if I retreat in here... Um, and they attack from the south. Yeah, there's as soon as you lose your ability on one side, well, no, you can still attack for one damage. It's just, yeah, too super suboptimal. Um, this is too many high power guys on all our sides. Move north. Owl comes down. He hits us immediately. We hit him. Oh, he hits us. We hit him and kill him. Owl hits us again on the right. All right. This might actually, we might just escape instead of fighting these guys. Oh, yeah. We're going to use our broken bulb messed you up all right this guy needs to get the hell out of the way <laughs> we could use our knife on the south and kill him then he's going to take out our pencil and then we could move south and get what if he drops if he drops anything and try to move east and get around out that way the other option is to go north but without anything blocking to the north i think there's a good chance the owl is just going to stay there so you know what i'm just going to kill that guy and then we got our, our right side is now free and we need to hope we can get away from the owl. Like that. In fact, I can kill the owl. Take his money. Kill the owl. Take his money. All right. Well, that's not a, a terrible outcome. Could have been worse. Okay, we can replace the broken bulb, which is actually pretty good. Or we can use it on our right side. This thing here. We go here. He's there. There. He's there. Go here. Take that. Hmm. Oh, we have a chance to kill this guy. The bird is armed to the beak. We are, this bird is, we are. We got <laughs> rocking around with a broken bulb and two knives. <laughs> Unfortunately, our, our right our right flank is slightly weak at the moment. So I wanted to grab this. That puts him, that allows him to get a little close to us. What we can do now is technically, if we move left and if this fox moves down, we can kill him in one hit which is perfect. It would, in fact, allow us to maybe kill both of these guys, which is awesome. But that's a big if. If he moves right, we're... Oh, wait, we can kill him if he moves right too, can't we? <laughs> He's gonna die. <laughs> we are we are armed to the teeth. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Okay, now we can grab everything. <laughs> we're a rich bird armed to the teeth, and we're gonna get our right side filled again. With a safety pin or a vial. Okay, so here it is. Here's the vial. Yeah, plus one when damaged. Safety pin. All right, we're taking vial for sure. Now that we know what it does. 
plus one when damaged. All right, that worked out. Okay, check it out. There's a cat. Okay, so the cat is not only coming in behind us. We might meet cats in front of us. That's a lot of damage. Right, unfortunately, we, do, we are armed to the teeth and do a lot of damage ourselves, but we do need to kind of be careful here. Honestly, we might be able to just escape the cat entirely by running away. We are two turns from him, which means that's enough turns to kill this guy and run. Uh, it does leave this here, and we don't have the opportunity to kill the cat. We could move south, and we'd lose the knife, but we'd kill the cat. We'd lose the knife and kill a cat with the second hit, and then have two coins on the bottom. That's what would happen over there. Over here, if we move left, we need to watch what this guy can do. One, he's there. Two, wait, what? One, he's there. Two, he's there. Three, he's there. We can run. And we're out. Could have killed the cat, but I'd rather not bother. I don't think it would really put us in an advantage here. And there's another cat. Okay. <laughs> Broken Bulb is going to take out this guy. And there's still a cat to deal with. I'm worried about this cat. <laughs> a whole cat, yeah. We need a knife made of broken glass. <laughs> Alright, we can take this coin to the north. Um, Cat, are you going to cooperate? I only have... Oh, shoot. He can either go right or up. If he comes up, we're in trouble. Oh, man. The game is looking out for us. Goodbye, cat. Okay safe we're we have three damage on three of our sides if the vial gets broken we have two damage on the right and three on all other sides that's actually pretty cool oh no but i can't move north now if i move north we lose the light bulb damn <laughs> over 60 points you get just cats all the time now yeah i mean i'm sure it's like the earlier you know it's just we've reached a new phase where we get more cats maybe are maybe the hardest i wonder uh, let's see how it progresses over time we've been at this for quite a while for a first run too Surviving a long time, figured it all out. I, I'm. It's not a bad job. I'm. I'm liking the uh, tactics here, but um, hmm. also we've gotten lucky a few times later on where it could have gone a lot, a lot further south. We haven't actually been taken down too much. Keep or keep able to keep being able to rebuild uh, what we've got here. This is very cogmind like again. Okay, so anyway, I can move north and attack this guy, which will probably kill him. We don't know, but I'm going to get something from this, and it's going to replace our bulb, which is unfortunate, because doing three damage to our top side is pretty good. Um, but unfortunately, this is the only guy we can attack. If I move west, though, the cat might move over there, or over here. Can't tell which way he'd move. It'll put other guys near us that we can't hurt as well. Hmm. I wanted to be able to do three damage to the cat, because we're almost certainly going to have to go through it, which means it's ideal if we can head west... He comes down, we head north, and the cat is around north of us. That's that's maybe asking for a lot, though. We have a chance to kill this guy right away. I don't, I'm Move here. Move here. He'll be right next to us. Okay, I moved one turn. This is actually not a great outcome. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> but it'll sort of work for now. Okay, yeah, that's a good enough outcome. Damn, if I move west, we're going to lose our knife. I really like this knife. I don't even want to move west right now anyway, because... Oh, wait a minute. I can move west and we can just leave. Well, no, we might not be able to leave because this cat could chase us. If the cat doesn't come down, if he comes west, then we're stuck and we have to face the cat anyway. So one option here is to hit the cat with the bulb. He's going to take out our bulb. Then we could kill him and let the bio get hit. And then replace the bulb with something new. I think I'm going to do that after I kill this guy, actually. <laughs> kill that guy. Then replace the bulb with a pen or a CD. Um, take the pen, go in for straightforward stuff. And then we can either replace the knife or put the gold coin on something else. Whatever we want to replace first. Pen. Hmm. Um, could replace, could put it on the right side. Going for triple gold on one side is obviously one of the more desirable things to do as well. Owls. Hello, owls. I do like my knife, though. Knife you. Knife you. <laughs> knife you. <laughs> okay. 
We have three coins we can take. Uh, I don't know if I want to take them. Well, I want to. I guess I could put them on the the pen. I don't really like the pen that much. It's okay, but I'll just put some coins on the pen. And I'm gonna leave the other one because I don't want to replace my knife. It's a perfect, pristine condition knife with 74 points, and we get the free gold coin. Hmm. We could replace our vial. Two damage on a side is pretty nice, though. Could just replace the pen. Replacing the vial is even more valuable. It would give us something even better because it'd be two gold, um, which would put us, I guess, in a higher tier of loot. Also, it's damaged. Oh, well, obviously, the point is it's damaged. It does more damage than... Oh, no way. <laughs> Double gold. All right, I'm going to do a knife again. <laughs> Pretty soon, oh man, if we could, uh, well, the problem is they get hit no matter what once you have to face off against a four health enemy. But if you have knives on all sides, you're almost unstoppable. Here's an example, we're gonna knife them all. Knife you, knife you, knife you. <laughs> okay, hey, they still dropped their coin out there. I was wondering what would happen if they tried to drop a coin on another coin. Okay, so. Hmm. We're gonna put that gold coin there. Gonna put that gold coin there. And I like the knife so much, even though it's damaged, I'm gonna keep it. We could replace it if we wanted to. I could put a silver coin on the right side. But you know what? I'm gonna replace I'm gonna keep it for gold. We're gonna do three gold on the right if we can. Shoot. We're not in the right spaces. This magpie power <laughs> fantasy is real. <laughs> Good one, ma'am. But it absolutely is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're we're going full. This is um, uh, this is warlord mode. Warlord the magpie. All right, him go up here. This guy. Hmm, I can't get next to any of these guys. Shoot. All right, all right, we're gonna be forced to take damage. Sad news. But the good thing is taking damage from any of the guys then puts us in a position to kill another one. Hmm. So yeah, we just gotta basically decide which side we want to take damage on. Um, well, I don't have a lot of options. It might just automatically be the left side. Uh, hmm. Hmm. This is gonna replace one of our knives. I was hoping to put the gold on the other side. Maybe we go around. I could do that. Go right. The only problem with going right is it might not. This guy might come south or go right. I don't know which one he'll do. Either one. This guy comes south. So one, he's there. Two, yeah. I want to be able to hit this guy. That did not do what I wanted it to do. <laughs> I wanted the whole reason I did this is I wanted to go around and grab this with our right side. The knife over there because I'm trying to go for a triple gold. Hmm. All right, that didn't quite play out how I wanted. I can't wait here. I'm gonna end up replacing my knife. Staple or pawn? All right, I'm gonna take a pawn. We now got a pawn on the left side, but I can't get this guy. Oh, ho, pawn. Uh, uh, pawn's not too bad. Okay. Uh, we could fix our knife on the bottom if we wanted to. If I'm going to fix it, though, I'm going to fix it with gold. So I'm going to go north and take the silver with the left side, pawn, and then leave. All right. I don't know. The pawn might actually... The pawn is helpful because it allows us to attack, attack, being able to attack enemies diagonally in either direction. I'm kind of liking that ability. It means uh, when we're an odd number of spaces away from an enemy, or an even number, depends on if you mean middle or including their space, it allows you to attack them. Like if we move south here, we can attack the cat by moving west, if he comes this way, which I hope he will. Of course he did, he's very cooperative like that. Then we're just gonna kill our first cat. 
Um, but the pawn can also be dangerous. If you make the wrong move. Also, it kind of sucks if we're going to be forced to use... Forced to replace a knife at some point. All right, we got a gold. Yes, all right, we got a second gold. I do like the right knife, but I will probably go for triple gold when uh, we uh, can. Could put another silver on this, but I'm liking the gold. Preferring the gold, in fact. Hmm, that's not good. <laughs> all right, I see this guy. We've got our diagonal attack on the left, which means normally if we had a no knife, I could actually get this guy on our left side, but I can't because we got a pawn instead. Hmm, this is a tougher floor. More hearts everywhere. Hearts. Don't know if we're going to be able to get gold here, but go this way, that way. No. Don't think we're going to be able to get this guy without getting hit. Going to have to lock something in here. I'm, I must admit, I'm playing this game a lot longer than I thought I would be. I thought this would easily be a quicker half an hour thing at the end, but it's pretty well designed. I need to get this on my phone. <laughs> okay. Um, another ship of deer. Uh, really hoping for the triple gold on the right, because those are clearly like big upgrades. But we're now in a troubled situation. If I move north, you might, yeah, I can't use the pawn here. Hmm, knife would have made it nice. I wouldn't even hesitate. If I had a knife, I'd move north one and try to get him to come here. Hope you would. Could move left. Don't really mind taking another silver on our pawn. But these guys have a lot of health. We get really whacked on the north side. We could technically kill him, but then our north side, the whole north side's open. <laughs> the enemy is closing in. Could move west and try to knife him to the east. That's kind of risky. It's risky, yes. Risky, risky. Basically, you only have so many spaces you can move um, before you get boxed in. So you can take that risk or, you know, take the hits instead. See, now I can try to move east. And if he moves south, we can even circle around and do fine. That did not work. Now we're probably just going to get in big trouble. I could now move south and then use the pawn, which would only hit the cat. Move east and hope he moves south, but I think that's hoping for too much. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, okay, maybe not. But what happens going forward is gonna be tough. Okay, I can hit the cat for three, take one damage. This sort of works. Okay, so we can hit the cat. Hit the cat for three. Take a damage from this. The cat will move over here. We kill the cat with a knife. That's two turns. This guy will already be here. This guy will still have full health. And then you can try to go north and get away. But honestly, I think I might be trapped. The other option is to go try to go north one space and see if this guy goes to the right, which will allow us to just run. Okay, it doesn't allow us to just run because I forgot the pawn is going to stop us <laughs> from running. <laughs> but okay we take one hit oh we're open damn it okay well we can take one more hit i lost the knife because i did leave it at low health we're gonna take a hit and lose a heart so good thing we had a heart to begin with unfortunately this might put a gold piece on our left side wait what shoot what was that oh okay that's unfair no uh... <laughs> it let me do that um i can't actually attack to the left I thought it would maybe block me, but yeah, I forgot. I can't attack the cat. 
I just took a heart damage for no reason. I wonder how you... Oh, anyway, it shows that it's empty. What else could we do here? Yeah, I screwed that up. I completely screwed that up. I forgot. We can't attack the cat. I was thinking of being able to attack directly. So this isn't a case where the pawn doesn't work. It's harder. You have to kind of really strategize a little more when you got the diagonal attacks. But yeah. Hey, lucky luck. Yeah, neat game. Uh, managed to make it pretty far, too, for a first run, it would seem. Uh, but yeah, I think we're pretty much about to die now. Uh, there's nothing else I can do. Uh, yeah, we can't, so we can't attack south. We die, and well, we technically have two hits. He's got two health. I wasted a turn. Technically, I think we, st we had ways out of this, but I did, I, I pressed the wrong button there and didn't realize that, that I couldn't do that. So I wasted a turn, uh, trying to kill this guy. I could move north and uh, hope the cat blocks him and then kill the cat. That didn't happen. <laughs> Did not happen. Um, yeah. Two damage, dead. Okay. Anyway, well, nice. Your score. Submit. Oh my god. <laughs> Some crazy scores out there. <laughs> 381. We got 86. We didn't make it to the leading board leaderboards. Did pretty good for a, a first run, I believe. But yeah, it's nice that there's leaderboards to see, I guess. Uh, I don't know. What's the point of submitting if you're not uh, on the leaderboard? But I will submit it anyway. What name do you want to use in the leaderboards? All right, I'll put my name on there. There we go. Boom. It doesn't show where we are. Oh, we, can, we can't zoom. Okay. All right, it's at 63. Oh, it shows exactly where we are and our spot um, down there. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I like that game. Um, I really didn't expect it to be playing it that long. I had picked it as a game that I thought might be shorter, specifically because it's a broke like my experience with them is I'm, you know, they're interesting to go through, but I'll tend to die a few times quickly enough and then, you know, and see most of it. And that, yeah, because there's no limit, I'm not really interested in playing these usually too much. In fact, I was saying I would like to play this on my phone, but I'd probably only play it a few more times just to see what other tactical options there are. But I don't really like going for high score. I like going for an actual goal. Um, that goal not being just how high, how far can you get. Uh, like So like I was saying, the Seven Scrolls actually has an end of certain number of floors you have to get through. And uh, each one changes, uh, adds one new enemy and changes fairly significantly. So that is the end of magpie you've arrived just in time to say goodbye screaming rooster <laughs> i am hungry because it's now after 1 p.m and i haven't had lunch <laughs> but uh yeah the games today were great um i liked all of them and uh yeah they were just uh it's, it's a good uh good collection look forward to uh writing a, a bit about those and uh, taking some screenshots and sharing that around and uh yeah i'm not sure when the next stream is going to be i mean technically it's supposed to be on tuesday we've got a five day holiday coming up here starting tomorrow which is kind of problematic um for streaming if only just because my son's home or whatever i'll do i'll i guess i'd try to do at least one one day my regular day next week uh early in the week and you know the holiday would end by the later in, in, in the week but i don't know how much time i'll have it depends on what else i'm doing but yeah, because it's a holiday, things are a little different. Kind of ended up being a holiday, a big one, right in the middle of my 7 year streaming. So we've done three so far. At least I managed to squeeze in today uh, before that starts. And we'll see next time, 11, 12 p.m. for me. Yeah, it's uh, after 1 p.m. for me. Oh, I need some lunch. Um, getting tired, too, after all this strategizing through these four games. Good games, though. Um one Step Behind You, Dungeon Drawler, Crave Space, Magpie. All, all good, all cool. I think um, Dungeon Drawler and it didn't get to see... I mean, I'm sure we experienced most of it, but we didn't get to see quite... Uh, uh, we didn't get to the end, specifically because there's some bugs in it. But uh, And it, the performance definitely needs a little bit of work. But, you know, 7 DRL. Uh, for a 7 DRL, it's awesome. Uh, all these games have been good. So, glad to have tried them. And uh, I will... Uh, be doing this again, um, uh, I'm sure several more times, but the next time, sometime next week, uh, and as usual, we'll announce in advance on the uh, uh, Discord and a list of uh, games I'll be playing once I've got a day or know what I'm doing. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. Thank you for doing these streams. Too many rogue likes to play them all now. I know. Uh, in my case, it's uh, honestly, I really I have a lot of other stuff to do, but there's so many good games I want to try them. 
And it's less time than I probably would have spent if I made a 7 DRL, which overall is just a massive time sink, especially for me since I do a lot of planning beforehand and design work, um, which, you know, sort of doesn't count. And then also just during the week would be every day, um, you know, from waking up till you go to sleep. Uh, trying to just do as much as you can in a week and it's really tiring. So anyway, streaming them. Also good for the community and, you know, helping out devs and giving feedback because I know a lot of devs uh, check out my videos. So that's nice to see feedback from. It's nice to see feedback about my feedback, too. And it feels good when, you know, the devs say they like that I pointed this out or, you know, we're glad that I, I streamed it for various reasons. So that's good. It keeps me going, too. And uh, so anyway, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks, everyone, for showing up. This video, if you wanted to catch more of it, will also be up on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, with some little summaries as well, which I put in the descriptions. Um, so yeah, until next time, uh, enjoy some 70 RLs.